What's up, people lovers? What happens between 14 UTC and 18 UTC? Doubt Barry. Uh, we will cast the games. <laughs> what? They, they can take one and a half, two hours? Nili, I just want to say thank you so much for the contribution. Nail to scene, man. Thank you. Trooper, Peter Borne, and Mr. Rosa. Okay, let's do some work for the overlay here. Because this is not pretty. So do I want multiple ones here? I think I do, right? Um, let's actually duplicate this. Let's start from top to bottom, shall we? Because that's kind of the order of how it works. Because we go for Sith bands. Then we go for the maps. And then we go for the Siths. So this could be renamed game one. Okay, okay, I screwed up. Uh, random. 
a random Background is loud. Okay, okay. Now it should be better. Mm. Mm. Now then let's add another text. more on the gray side maybe <clears throat> and we get rid of this and have Copy Paste Copy Paste Is it getting better or worse? Does it make sense? Winchester 5, Tibetan, what?
Hmm. Microsoft Himalaya Regular. Just this font as well. And regenerated bands. Does that make more sense? Okay, bitte stütze Baton. Okay, solved quite a bit here, didn't we? Maybe those a tiny bit smaller. So I can move game one a bit higher and I have a bit of an overlap, uh, less of an overlap with the NAC thingy. Tewton, sick. Are the names flipped? It's Winchester Jibatong. Uh, yeah, you, you see. Jibatong picked Winchester, uh, picked Arena. Feels wrong. Yeah. Okay. Tewton's first. That's so weird, right? And now the order also makes sense, right? Random jet. Bands, then we go for maps, then we go for Sif picks. I still don't like how game one is put in there. Uh, maybe that needs to be a bit bigger. Maybe a bit more outline. Hmm. Hmm. I suggest removing the black outline around the letters. Really? Typically that's that's makes it way better to read. Look at that difference. No outline. White outline. Oh no. Gradient is not what I wanted. And with outline. Another font. Um, I can go lower on the outline. A different font would work for me as well, yeah. One matches than I see. Yeah, but game one is not pretty there. Maybe I don't know yet. Maybe have a shadow. Jumps quite quickly. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, the background is so busy. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So I'm trying to change some stuff. Um. Inner shadow? No, inner shadow is not what we want. We want outer shadow. It's a bit behind it. Let's take it like that for now. Hmm. Yeah, the shadow could have a different color. Uh, filter, color. We can go more into the yellow direction. into the golden direction. Hmm. Player names more to the side. Technically I could put them here, right? Uh, I want Vinci's name right aligned and Joe Tong's name left aligned. Yeah. Free space down the middle, maps to show logo. Uh, what? I can move this a bit further down. We've picked maps, names to the side. Hmm. Like I could also like just do game one here, right? Game one between the players. Well, I could, I have an idea. I have an idea, but we will take care of that after the set, okay? Oh no, they didn't start yet. Okay, okay, then I will implement it now.
What about that? Med bands are not essential. Hmm, yeah. Could go like this as well. Hmm, but I think I would like to follow the draft often. So I think I want to keep it in there. This looks good. Looks a bit empty in the center. I want this a bit bigger. This a bit bigger. This a bit further to the side. Yeah. Hmm. Game one map could be a bit bigger. Oh yeah, yeah, we could increase that obviously. Game one a bit more to the bottom. I think it should be a bit more left. Are Jordan spent? Yes. Oh boy, this will be painful now though. Trying to edit anything. <laughs> because I will have to go into every different file now. This looks so messy. <laughs> okay, one another map picture. Okay. I think we can get rid of that shadow thingy. Doesn't look good. Hmm. Is the drafting format going to be the same for the event? You probably mean for the main event, right? Unless there's heavy negative feedback, yes. Looks great now, but pain to edit every time. Well, let's see about that. How painful it's going to be. Uh, game started? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Just someone asked me a question that I felt had some urgency. Uh, we are 90 seconds in. <sighs> the stream is now officially a professional production. Is it? Is it? I think we don't need like the NSC5 logo twice, right? Casting. Jibba tong. Jibba tong. Mm. Okie dokie. Let me see if I can still close some stuff here. And I see watch party, we can open that again later. Um, 
then welcome welcome let's jump into the action here winchester in the red trunks with jibbertong in the blue mongols for winchester here on acropolis we are starting on an elevated area can't wall on the stony area and need to expand towards the middle to get more control of all the wood here on the map uh, Winchester obviously qualified for NAC4, so a big favorite here. But ratings aren't too far off from each other. 2.6k against 2.4k. So Jibatong certainly on those maps. Someone that can deliver. Hmm. Hype for this tournament. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Have the score on the main page. Remove logo and score on the right. Have the score on the main page. Ah... Well, what am I putting top right then? I oh, maybe to never gets too professional polished. I prefer that it keeps its current vibe where there's room for memes and jokes. Well, at least NSC5 will have a lot of room for memes and jokes for sure. Interesting stable placement. Typically people would have gone for here or here as a stable placement. Maybe here's something I could see, but this one feels wrong. Hmm. What kind of a player is Jibbertong? Arabia only. Like, very clearly. Um, I played a tournament in China against him, actually. <laughs> where we had Arabia, Decentering, and Ghost Lake. Arabia was the start opener, and then we had our home maps Decentering, and he picked Golden, uh, Ghost Lake. And he'd never heard of Decentering before, for example. Although it was a map that was played in like three of the major tournaments before and it was a four minute game. <laughs> so yeah, we, we we like he didn't even play after seeing the map. He's a registered fortress player? Yeah, there has been a, a very, very famous set of Jibatong versus me that actually made me pretty popular in the Chinese scene. Or increased my fame in the Chinese scene. Where I played a uh, in uh, what was it like $65,000 tournament at that time like the biggest Microsoft sponsored league after like 16 years of absence something like that and we played a best of three against each other and the third map after being score 1-1 one, one, was Regicide Fortress and I picked Goth against his Mayans should have won but he completely outplayed me and we got a king snipe in at the very end, uh, shortly before I would have been dead. And yeah, it was a pretty good meme moment. And from there on, Lux on his stream called me the king of fortress. That was that was a crazy moment. Hmm. I hope you make the semi-finalist and finalist play on a couple of maps that have been played least during the tournament. Absolutely hor horrible idea. I, I absolutely hate this idea. Like, basically, we have map bands and picks for people to not be forced into playing horrible maps. And it's 21 maps, and we have not tested each and every one of them extensively. So, if people agreed this is the worst map, then forcing them in one of the most important matches of the tournament, the semifinals and finals, to play the worst map... Uh, I think it's 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 exactly the opposite of what I would want to do. Yeah, it gives you a bit of variety, but it might give the worst maps. Yeah. Considering banning most played as you go? Not really, no. If it's most played, it's most played for a reason. If it becomes repetitive, I should have should have done a better job. I, I don't mind it though. Uh, to have most bands. It it's not planned as of now. Yeah, maybe something to think of. Yeah, I was really surprised by the warlord's approach there. Putting the least played map, which kind of implies it's the worst map, into the final. Gets the kill, Jibatong. One one, KD. Lost a villager over here at the same time. Now two spearmen. Not a lot of hits and some uphill hits. But a third spearman arriving. And therefore Winchester has to disengage. 
Scout lost over here. Uh, quite ugly for both of them right now. Why would you want to force players into maps when they choose what to prepare, ignore? Yeah, yeah. I, I see the reasoning though, if we have like 21 maps and then getting rid of one. But it basically would result into completely new draft every single match day that we would need to prepare. That's obviously only 50 minutes of work, but players, for example, might go to bed knowing, okay, I have the first set tomorrow or think they might have the first set tomorrow and not even knowing that their home map might not be available next day. Hmm. Where can I find the qualifier match schedule? Uh, Liquipedia, exclamation mark, wiki. Or on the NSC5 Discord, exclamation mark, NSC5. Or just go quickly back in the VOD and then you see the schedule of the day is over here. Yeah, just be prepared for all 21 maps flawlessly. Easy choice, easy choice. Both on the way to Castle Age. Winchester still slightly ahead in the income. And we see Jibatong running away. Have you thought about doing the draft a day early? Uh, how could we do a day early? We don't know the matchups a day earlier. Like, a Swiss system, you only know the matchup after the fifth game is played. Hmm. Surprise member isn't covering this right now. Okay, hello, surprised. Hmm. Another villager killed. Nope, even numbers here. Villager KD 4 2, both pretty active. It is tough to wall on this map. And we see now the town center here by Winchester. Step Lancers, not impossible. And indeed, they are coming out now. But Burwas obviously won't too, too sad. Just committing on two camels quite heavily. Spearman, how many hits are we getting from this one? Only two scouts fighting, actually. Hill advantage here as well. That means we have to have a different engagement happening here at the same time. Scouts are investing themselves to trying to find some villager kills. But lots of villager HP lost here, as we can see. But that could have been two dead villages if th the damage would have been spread a bit more evenly. Or not evenly. Um, exactly on one will. But obviously tough to do. Any cast are covering Fire Classic Pro right now? That one got rescheduled. Not going to happen right now. Fire is sick. Um, yeah. Otherwise, that might have been the set I'd even prefer to cover. Knights? Yes, knights. Hope Fire is able to play tomorrow. Yeah, obviously Fire has a long history of being a pretty bad scheduler. Oh, so... I already instructed my, my admin to be... Making sure that the tournament is not delayed by him. Cavalry's mm. pushing the step lenses away now. Those were quite some kills. Idle TC, not that high. But the second TC already producing quite a bit. Now we're going for the third TC here. And ooh, Camel a bit on its own. Hmm. Movie days, Brazilians always showing up at least 40 minutes late. Hmm. Honey, theoretical with 100% win rate. What would be the fastest way to qualify to an S tier tournament? W -w -w what's your question? What would be the fastest way to qualify for an S tier tournament? Well, just play this one and get four. Set wins. I, 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 I'm a bit confused by that question. Maybe try to rephrase it and I, I can give you maybe a better answer than I could give you right now. Oh, let's take a look. Conversion. Wow, Jibatong even accepts to be converted. 
jumps for it. Could be a double conversion even. Wow, the neither knight got converted. At some point, I believe that two conversions would happen. Wow, this was absolute maximum distance in conversions. And step lands are converted on the other side. Ooh, that was maximum unlucky for Winchester. Obviously, that's going to happen in the next patch. Maximum conversion time will get reduced by one second. And Knights just happily jumping for it. In there, killing a monk and yoinking. This actually should be a counter mechanic of the defense here for Winchester. Okay, okay, okay. Well, Mr. Yo apparently shared the... Conversion hack here with Jibbertong. Gets another monk kill, but at least one conversion now. Phew. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Should just hide in the town center? You mean when he was over here? Hmm. China privilege, apparently. Hmm. Well, NC5 he played on the latest patch. Would be happy to see Hindustanis again. They flew close to Franks and got nerfed out. Let's see what patch will be out. We're obviously in good contact with the developers. Remember that NSC4 was played with the balance of one patch ago and the pathing of two patches ago. So we, we have ways of trying to please the players and viewers as good as possible. Conversion now. I don't think the camel wants to commit. Yeah, and gets the kill and then deletes itself. Okay, 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 nice. Hmm. Can we do the pathing of a year ago? <laughs> Let's see about that. Uh, one single step lancer. Rate not that impressive. Seven village elite for Winchester. Third town center now. Do you have any information what the changes in hunt's gonna be? I'm part of the balancing discord, yeah. So before everything goes public, uh, I can have a look over it. What unit comps should Vinch go for, especially since the game seems to be going late castle in? That's a really good question. I thought about it as well. Typically, you want to go something that is cavalry archer based or cavalry based as Mongols. But Berbers have really good answers to that. In the sense that camels are good against the step lances and hussars. And camel archers ooh, are good against Mangudai. That could still be broken. Needs to pull more villagers there. Oh, step lances not in time. But needs to continue with the repair directly after this. But it's burning on lots of ends. Nice move. As you can see, the HP is increasing. So he's repairing. Monk stopped the conversion there. Oh, this is messy now. This is really messy for Jibatong. You think Han should get step lances? No strong feeling. I, I've seen it suggested quite often, but honestly, no strong feeling. I think walling Stonewall here could make a lot of sense. And now he traps all this. But Step Lancers, they love this spot. They don't mind this at all. Okay, double conversion. I think he lo should delete those Palisades a bit more. Like, this is not pretty for him against Step Lancers to fight in this tight area. Hmm. As a new player with 100% win rate, what would be the fastest way to get into ST Tournament Qualifier? Ah, the ST Tournament Qualifier. Uh, well, it depends on the qualifier format. Right here, like you need to have some achievements in the past. For NAC4, we invited the top 8 from the ladder as well. That couldn't qualify in a different way. So typically just dominate the ladder. And then you will get good seeding and get into the tournaments. Where can I see the seeding? In the Discord. But 100% win rate. You should know that that will be impossible to keep up, my friends. At least it's very likely that you won't keep it up. Hmm. It is a game with some variance. So even if you are the best player... Keeping up 100% will be tough. Okay, that's quite a nice raid. But second armor is still not in. Hmm. Village account even. I'm starting to like the chances for Jibbertong more and more. Winchester goes for the fourth TC. Uh, no 
not too far away from imping this. Some more step lenses, some more camels. Nearly, what was wrong with previous pathing and they want to repair it and made worse? Um, I heard a developer talk about it and I didn't fully understand it. I th apparently they fixed something that was bothering them now completely and something got way better but they broke something at the same time so uh, i i i don't fully understand it no i'm a bit surprised though how poorly pro players are adjusting to it though it kind of is known what you what what the big problem with pathing is right now and unit behavior and I still see people not adjusting to it at all. Oh god, Jibatong, he's just a man that takes conversions into his face. Well, if you convert like this, I can understand it. Did he just eat one conversion against three monks? Oh, that's so good for him again. Wait at the top, though, unanswered. Like, Jibatong is a monk killer. Jesus Christ. Three converts? No, 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 it was one conversion only, right? Pretty sure. Hmm... Complaining is easier than adjusting. Yeah, and I also see... Oh, wow. Big fight over here in the center as well. Not the biggest upgrade so far on the cavalry of Winchester. And I also think, like, if you completely change your behavior of how you move with your units right now, and then the next patch is, like, the patch before, then you kind of have to unlearn it just for one single situation. That was a lot of kills here by Winchester. Nice raids. And it was 82 versus 82 villagers. And now Winchester's roughly 15 ahead. That's an ambitious castle that I don't like too much. Like, Jibatong could just play the normal stable game, right? Just defend. The longer the game goes, the better it should be for him. Hmm. Hmm. That's surprising to me. Oh, and the counter castle, and the villagers are not prepared. They're not protected. I mean, look at that. Think castle of Winchester is going to go up for sure. The one of Jibatong likely as well, simply because camels don't have the proper damage output. Yeah, it feels like both castles are going up. To send enough villagers. Did you get a raid in somewhere at the same time? Military count is relatively low. Lots of army chilling next to it here. And now Winchester is adding the pet arts. Look at that, Winchester. Lots of villagers in the queue. Pet arts now on this side as well, but actually wanted to go for some more camel archers here instead. And another raid. This is an unprotected area. More stables by Winch. Okay. This is still interesting. That's a nice night raid. Now there's a market. I thought it could have been a siege workshop. Let's maybe take a look at work efficiency going down for both players quite heavily though. I don't think we should be adding any more knights at this point if we're Jibatong. Hmm. Yeah, I would have preferred a more defensive cast as well. And yeah, here we see the siege workshop by Winchester. Love it. Maybe both castles go down. Oh, what a nice trap. What a nice trap with that house. And look at that. Hmm, <laughs> that's so sweet. And Winchester can just take it down. Now the Mangodai can shoot. Not really sure what those camels are thinking. Why they don't want to continue the engagement. That was such a sweet trap. And this one is getting cleared up at the same time. Right through the center with a monk. No idea what's happening there. And yeah, with the camels going back. Jivatong actually is winning this fight here at the bottom. And is continuing with the raid. That's interesting. Bought a ticket? Nice! See you at the meetup! Guys, if you feel like, wow, I love Age of Empires and I love spending some time watching Age of Empires, we will have a meetup and a watch party of the semifinals and finals in Berlin during the NEC main event. And you will get a better view of villagers dying than Winchester is right now because those are his own villagers. Exclamation mark meetup if you want to join us at it. Game is paused right now. Thinking, okay, Nili is doing a sellout. Let's give him the time. Uh, we already sold 225 tickets or something in the ballpark. 
And Saturday and Sunday evening, all the players and casters are joining the meetup. And yeah, it seems to be really laggy. One more petard. 86 HP. Needs to get his own petard out. Uh oh, this is tight. This is tight. One more petard and the castle falls. 60, 50 HP. Needs to get that petard out. Otherwise, this will lose his castle. And yeah, the castle of Winchester will live. Oh, that was three seconds of difference, I believe. Three seconds of difference. If he gets a petard, he gets the kill of the castle. And Jibatong is on the way to Imperial Age. How did that happen? How was he quicker all of a sudden? Wasn't Vinci said 700 food, 900 gold? When Jibatong was at 100, 100? Berber's really solid against those Mongols, apparently. But still, a castle is needed. That's why we see the stone upgrade, some more eco upgrades here for Jibatong as well. And where is he going for the castle? Here would make some sense. Here would make some sense. Maybe here to trap the castle. Jibatong had one and a half K gold. He bought food. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. 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 Goes for gate, but no follow up. So <laughs> <laughs> looks a bit like a maze, but squeezes through. Okay, now full mango production. But once we get heavy camel or cavalier and the last armor upgrade, Winchester might be in trouble here. Economy, reasonable, not the greatest amount of gold, but that's because he pulled a lot of villagers away. And those mango are now microing into all the other knights. Maybe going into the castle and some healing could be really good. Look at those. Half the HP right now. Maybe some market use. Yeah, sold some wood. Is getting himself a trap. More camels. The last armor is being clicked. And those still have lots of HP. So you think, okay, army value could be pretty close. But right now I think Jibatong would lose that fight quite significantly. Vinch seems dead. Well, let's see about that. He will have one castle. It will be tough for him to get to a second castle, though. Hmm. Oh, why are we taking the fight before the upgrade? No! Jibatong! That's such a mistake. Look at that. The upgrade's 50 seconds and 15 seconds away. Oh. Why? If he has the last armor upgrade, he can win this fight quite easily. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, now he gets heavy. Uh, now he gets heavy camel. And heavy camel? The stats don't change that crazy. From 6 to 7 attack. But the extra attack against other camels, I think, jumps from 4 to 7. Look at that. Uh, Mameluk, ship. Camel to 9 attack. While the other camel has 5 attack. So you get 5 more damage against other camels. From camel to heavy camel. That's why heavy camel is such a big upgrade in camel v camel fights. Ooh, let's take a look here. Some repair. And camels don't do a lot of damage against traps. If Jibatong can continue repairing here, that could be some dead traps. Uh, some dead camels. This is tight. Can he get enough villagers around it? Trap goes down. But the other one will survive. That was still relatively costly, I believe. This is getting chased down. Who are we thinking is winning this game? Need Mangodai to get rid of the traps? Well, Mangodai are pretty fragile. Jumping that deep under the castle. And Winchester is out of stone. Where was his other stone spot? Oh, Stonewalled quite a bit here. And only has one single castle with the lead mango die. Could go for another stone at the side there. That's quite surprising to me. Hmm. 20 lead mango die. Winchester wins. Let's see about that. If he loses this castle, I think the game is over. Two castles? Oh yeah, one at the top, one here. That makes way more sense then. Now this is the spot where Mangodai could snipe the traps. 
Chiwetong, does he want to take the fight? I think even patrolling into the cam uh, into the Mangodai could be an option with some of the camels. Takes the fight, three traps here. Oh, this is tight, but this could be really good for Jibatong. If he clears this up, if he gets the castle down, I think he wins the game. But now the Mangodai survive. More camels need to arrive. Okay, some are there. So I don't think the Mangodai can dive. If they dive, I don't think they can kill all three traps. Let's take a look, Jibatong. He needs to get there in time. No repair on the traps. One trap down, second trap down. Third trap is getting sniped as well. Mangodai count kind of reset down to eight. And the castle fell. Oh, this is big for Jibatong. So now one single castle for Mangodai production. Berber, such a good counter to Mongols here. And Winchester, he's still leading the population. Better economy, but now the camels. What's the answer to them? Winchester goes to camels himself. Yeah, camel v camel. Obviously, pretty even, but you're lacking the last armor upgrade. Which is fine because the opponent doesn't have the last attack upgrade. But the ones of Berber are simply 20% cheaper. And that's such a big, big thing. And all the map control. Look at that. Extra gold, extra stone. Scouts for some more Jibatong here. Relic count, though. Something I didn't mention at all. Five for Winchester behind all this aggression. That is sick. Didn't mention that at all. And that's a good game. This is a really good game. Now cam archers are being mixed in as well. And another fight that Vinch can't take. Still 29 on gold. That's a good engagement for Vinch. Something that Jibatong doesn't need to take. 16 on gold for him. Now takes another fight. The castle is helping out a bit. Goes away with some of the camels. Trying to deal with those raids. Meanwhile takes the fight under his own castle. Just takes out some houses, but not the most important thing. Surprisingly, going for a lot of the camel archers here. I think just full camel would do the job as well. Should know that he has the map control. Another castle there. And yeah, expanding to the stone. <laughs> and instantly runs into some scouts. That soon will be li three light cav even. And then we'll even find some military kills. Camels dealing with this. And that's a crucial gold. Together with this gold. Seems like Tibatong did not scout this one though. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't know about it. And let's say Winchester is now scouting them for the stone. Hmm. And this is a wolf, not a stone. Or did you confuse left and right? Hmm. Winchester... Tibatong needs plus four because now Vinci's camels are much better. Are they? Shouldn't it be the same? I'm confused. If you're missing the last attack versus missing the last defense, shouldn't it be exactly the same? In camel v camel fight? More HP? No, they both have 140 HP. There's pierce damage too. Yeah, but barely, right? And Jibatong is ahead. Like, I I'm really confused by this. Ah, one gives one melee, and the other plus two attack. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Brain, f brain bug by me. Then I agree. 150 builds, isn't that too much? They're trading off armies so much that I think at this point it's fine. I think 140 might be a bit be better, but I don't think this is a crazy overboom. Right now. Relics will win the game for Winchester. Not impossible. Raids are really solid as well, but Tom can afford it. Camel numbers, camel archer numbers, not that high. What a good game to start of the day. Hmm. They raid each other with such efficiency. How can Winchester afford another castle? That is sick. Oh, that's because of this stone. Yeah, okay, okay. I don't like this engagement for Winch. This will be the end of all his camels. He's going full Hussar and Mangodai now. Won't mind this too much. But Jibatong could just go full Hasa and Camel Archer himself now. Tex into lead Camel Archer. I wouldn't mind to see Magrabi Kennel. That castle went down. 
And all of a sudden, the Burma player is down to two castles. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Chibatong maybe with the better Sif in this scenario. Winchester seems to have the better answers to the questions that Chibatong is raising. How many kills does that castle have? Okay, contributing 28 kills so far. So lots of upgrades missing here when it comes to armor. Last attack missing on the cavalry for Jibatong, as mentioned multiple times now. And this will be tricky. Jibatong, can he combine his armies now? Won't be that easy. And has to deal with this military count not that high. Do you think the guys from Capture Age can also add the icons for the unique tags? We will have that for the weekend. Felt like the the most needed addition in the overlay. Oh, so many kills. So many kills by Vinch. Absolutely crazy how actively he's raiding. Chibatong, pretty dead. Does not look too good for him, right? One damage against the trap there. Dives a bit deeper. Double click the camels over here. It's not pretty. Does a lot of damage against the mango dice though. But doesn't really get into the numbers. Hop 130. Look at his eco. Absolute disaster for him now. Oh man, oh man. How many does he have on food? 35 still. But look at this. Barely any villagers around. Those camel archers. Not having enough armor upgrades. Still missing two of them. Meaning the Mangodai are doing dealing quite some reasonable damage as well. And now three traps against this castle. And Jibatong had a really good situation going for himself. But it just feels like Finchester broke him. With all the raids, with all the control. And Tibatong went on to Camel Arches a bit early when he could have gone full Camel. And now didn't get to the Camel Archer numbers that he wanted. Winchester takes the 1-0 lead. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What a good game. What a good game. And maybe nice mind games by Jibatong. Getting the Sif matchup that he wanted. But typically Berber is really strong on this map anyways. We've seen them quite a bit. So I'm a bit surprised that Mongols were picked. Winchester giving some love to the Step Lancers. Not overly convincing for Winchester. Well, I think it is a tough Sif matchup. Right? It obviously wasn't like, okay, he smashed the opponent around. But we also have to think his opponent is a 2.5k as well. What is happening here? Okay, I was in a weird... Mm. Mm. I said Mongols are better in this... matchup by the way okay well viper's wrong from time to time as well that's fine we're not all perfect hmm mm, where's the scores file One zero, okay. So game one is done now. Uh, civilization wise, ah, it is okay. It is okay. How I have to, I have to go through it. Mongols and I just have to do a lot of clicking work, but so be it. Ethiopians random there. Oh la la. <laughs> 
Is is that Burbas? Uh, yeah. Hmm. So we have Berbers instead of Ethiopians. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Looking forward to NAC. Thank you for everything you have done for AOE. Thanks for all the best for the future. Thank you. What's Winchester's go to arena shift? Probably Pult, from what I can see here. Red Bengalis band, Armenians band, Cumans band, Malay band. And he was facing Teutons and Britons. So, interesting. Contributor have gone for Janitor. Not great against Camels, no. Way too many Camels out on the field. <sighs> Doubt has the tough qualifier bracket. Yeah, 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 yeah. Agreed. All discussed in my bracket prediction video on YouTube. Let's go into game two here on Arena. Chibatong with Tutens, his first pick, and Winchester with Poles, his late pick, but probably the best one that he had left on for Arena. Okay. Tutens should be favorite here. Uh, don't know. Poles don't want to go monks anyways. Oh wow, Vinch even well that's a a build up with monks. So Bobby a light calf monk build up by Winchester. And look at that, he even took a detour. Be a bit later. Oh, that was a very sweet, very sweet lure. Really good timing. Hmm. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Hmm. So likely light calf monk opening by Winchester. The question is, what is Jibatong going for? Hmm. Forward will win the long run. Well, let's see about that. Cute Namo going to waste. Well, you need one more hit, right? Took two hits on the scout here. For the Obuch. If we actually go for Obuch, let's see. Yeah, Obuch Abeles sounds like a really good army comp for sure. Could still push to Madir. Is that Will trapped? Yeah, yeah, but she will bury herself out. That is the goal. Like, she's just super efficient there. I haven't seen randomly banned Civ in this tournament yet, but I think it's genius. I like it. More variety is always better. That's that's the goal, right? That is the main upside. For viewers, it's really good. For players, obviously, it is a bit tougher. Uh, to Like, you have a, a tiny chance that... Oh, not a tiny chance. 12 out of 45 chance that your strategy that you might have prepared might not be in there. That's a weird lumber camp. I don't like it. Why aren't we building it on the other side? Why aren't we building it in a bit deeper? Maybe here and then the TC there? Hmm. That's a bit surprising to me. Don't even need Paladin. Halb Siege does the job as well. Well, but Teuton Boom should be slower than Pole Boom, right? And you should have a castle in your face here. And then it's Bombard Cannon versus Bombard Cannon. It's not like you can boom till SO if you're Teutons. I think this will be lots of pressure in Jibatong's face early castle, a uh, early imperial age. Hmm. Granulations, another upgrade that will take a lot of time. Don't think that like the moment you see granulations for the opponent, you just queue traps as well. I I think this will be tricky for Jibatong. Like Poles, they have nice early timings, and Teuton eco bonus. Not that big. Hello, Caster, who's winning? The score gives an indication. Whoever is leading is typically winning. That's what I'm trying to explain my grandma whenever she's asking. 
And then she stops by and like, oh, Chimatong is winning. Go Chimatong. And I said, Grandma, it's six minutes into the game on Arena. You should know better. And then she's sorry and cries a bit. But, well, she has to learn the hard way. Would player nearly like the draft system? Um, no. <laughs> no. Wouldn't take no for a Juatong fan? Yeah, yeah, she is, she is, she is. What did you do your grandma? Hey, she only plays against the AI. Is there any map that you don't like, but you're still really good on it? Mm, probably Michi. <laughs> I think it's a horrible map for competitive gameplay, but I'm probably not bad at it. Hmm. Act okay, now actual story about my grandma. My grandma is the one that bought me Age of Empires 2 for Christmas 1999, right? Or like I bought it, kind of, my mother bought it, and then she gave the 80 Deutsch Deutschmark for it. And... Then every time she'd stop by, she saw me playing it. And I played it. One year, two years, three years. And 80 Deutschmark, yeah, yeah, it was. And the Congress was 50 Deutschmark. I'm pretty sure about the prices. And she was so happy, like every single time, like, wow, you're still playing this. Um, nice, nice, you're playing this game. And I played it, as you know, um, that's 40 euros. Yeah. yeah, well, if we ignore inflation, that's 40 euros, yeah. And I was playing it every time for years. And one day she stopped by and after like, I, I clearly played Age of Empires for like 5,000 hours or more before that, right? And then she stops by and I'm playing Counter-Strike. And she goes there and it's like, hmm. so, um, I, I see you have a new game now. Yeah, and trying to like passively, <laughs> aggressively like, uh, well, I wasn't passive aggressively, like I was a bit sad, a bit like, okay, it, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, fe I felt a bit shamed, yeah. And next time I made sure that I had Age of Empires in the second tab and tapped in when, when she came in to say, say hello. Typical grandma mental games, yeah. And then she made me eat more soup. Okay, so it is a Monk Rush by Jibatong here. I'm really surprised by this. While well, we see the Monk Lightcap opening kind of as expected. A bit surprised that Winchester did not boom with stone though. That is a, big of a, a bit of a surprise to me. And Siege Workshop together with this. Armor upgrade comes in quite handy against the scouts. Hmm. She beat nearly back to Age of Empires. That's a funny comment. Oh, village is a bit exposed. Where are the spearmen going? Luckily we have Loom here. Scout could die. No, still full HP. Nothing, nothing happening here. Hmm. She didn't buy you another game for Christmas next year? Well, two years later she bought me Age of Conquerors, basically. Like uh, the Conquerors first expansion. For what I believe is 50 Deutschmark. Uh, do we want another house here? Uh, I don't think she bought AOE 3, no. That was way later. I think maybe Age of Empires 4 didn't come out. Age of Empires 3 didn't come out for Christmas, right? I don't know. I think it didn't come out Christmas. Maybe someone can confirm that. Hmm. A granny with great taste? No, no, she had no taste. Like We just told her what to do. Oh, Spearman now. How many hits are we getting in? Oh, that was a <laughs> drive-by shooting. Holy moly. That was that was chill. Uh, the ram a bit confused. Hey, just jumping into it. Scout, bring Mike it away. Yeah. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Hmm. A rest collector is not affected by the market, no. You can confirm it again if you look at it. But you see how Jibatong heavily used the market and he's heavily behind in resources as well. Mm. 
Grandma has no taste. Well, she's a grandma. Don't be too hard on her. How should we? She know. What's good in 2000 or oh, in 1999? No hard feelings. Hmm. Interesting house. Okay, no ram. Oh, monk a bit out of position. Oh, this will be another snipe, I believe. Okay, gets this. Not doesn't get the kill, but that scout could get the light calf kill. Yeah, yeah, can chase it down. That's that's a good move by Jibatong. But uh, we see quite some idle TC from both players. Well, the double TC play from Vinge. Oh, that scout should not have gone in there. Wants to snipe the scout though. Can maybe get in there and then move away. Oh, another hit. <laughs> that was a nice play. And now the Mangonel goes for the gate. I don't fully know why. He can go through anyways. And the scout dies. Monk count, not that high. Relic count collected at zero right now. Hmm. Go, could go for houses. Oh, that's a nice Mangonel. Loom delayed till now. Which is the slight it's advantage. Mangonel trade the, has to be crucial here. And it will be the dead Mangonel. Oh, that's so good for Vinch. So good for Vinch. No losses at all. Gets ground attack into those. And that's so big. That's so big. Now the raid in the back as well. Pikeman completely out of position. Conversion still not really started. He didn't even try to really get a conversion yet. No sanctity either. And the second monastery simply was really late. I think he needed higher numbers there. Yeah, this looks really good for Winchester. And builds the castle. Protecting his gold. Protecting the entrance. Third TC now as well. Really solid, solid play. This is this is a masterclass for Winchester. How he kept the monk numbers low. Sniped the siege. Now we see some upgrades. Hmm... 80 Deutschmark in 1998 is 65 euros today for those interested. Okay. Uh, with the calculation of inflation. What are Jibatong's best maps? I would have said Arabia. Hmm. Hmm. Classic zero monk upgrade play. Yeah. <laughs> Gets one relic at least. And Vinch can even plug this hole now. Ah, this is solid. Hmm. Yeah, there, w there were no euros in 1998. I think euro got. When did it get introduced? 2000 or 2001? Did it think it got introduced after Lord of the Rings one came out? Between Lord of the Rings one and two. So 2002. So Lord of the Rings one came out in 2001. Is that correct? Oh, there will be another dead monk here. Although now we need another hit. Lord of the Rings 1, 2001. Okay, okay, okay. That was my first Euro purchase. Lord of the Rings film tickets. Okay. So you didn't see it when it came out. Empires was a fun game. Yep. Was. The nuclear weapon was kind of mind blowing when the game came out. We pogged a lot uh, seeing it in the internet cafes. Hmm. How big is that signed mouse pad? Do you have the design yet? Well, the design is this logo here. It will be a black mouse pad and the size. I would have gone for the, like the 15 euro Amazon version. Uh, Amazon mousepad gaming. Uh, so something like. What is the size? Hmm. 
34 times 28 centimeters. Something in that ballpark. Looks bad for Jibatong. Mm, well, he is on the way to Imperial Age. Can build a forward castle. Hmm. Yeah, Winchester's flag is not a bug. That was the flag that I went for to decrease controversies controversies um, at NAC4 should get fixed by the weekend as well into the Russian flag flag back at it people forgot <laughs> it's kind of funny right how, how the war is still happening but people care so much less now hmm. Hmm. round of 48 means 48 players in there right now we're playing down to the final six and the winners of that round of six are going to qualify and then we do the whole thing again next weekend oh and again more mong snipes did we have a single conversion this game not a single conversion Chibatong had like 12 monks this game and won't get a conversion here either Zero conversions. Jesus Christ. Now he has to build a way worse castle than he wanted to. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hmm. Hmm. I change it to white. Um, go to my video NAC Afterthoughts. I discuss it there at length. And give you all my thoughts. Why it's a white flag. That's not like... it. It's... Too complex to easily discuss it with one and a half thousand people in Twitch chat. Yeah. Here's students harder to convert. He has students. Oh, yoinking those relics now. Gets one. Winchester will get more relic gold at the end of the game. Nah, not really. I think the game will end quicker than that. Mm. Three murder holds came in clutch. Aye, aye, aye. Should Israel have a white flag too? Should the US have a white flag too? Should China have the white flag too? As I said, let's w watch the YouTube video and then I, I will t you know the answer. Let's not be that person. Yeah. So, guys, let it go. Yeah, I'm really surprised by the map choice here by Jibatong. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, now the stable switch. Interesting. Goes for more light calf. Hmm. Probably doesn't know how good Winchester is in arena, but he is not good on arena himself. So like, I'm, I'm just shocked by this. Another monk maybe going down. Maybe this one survives for a change. Looks like it. Wow. Conversion count by now. One for Jibatong. Choo choo. Okay. We're rolling now. Hmm. Block printing. Gets the second relic again. Rest collected signs the GG. Yeah. Like, rest collected is not that important if you have a massive positional and army advantage. But that's not the case either. Hmm. 12 minute ITC time for Winchester. You saw that one correctly. And he's adding up the siege tower. Hmm. <laughs> for a really nice move. And now Jibatong needs to finish the game within the next two minutes. And that will be really, really tough. Obuk raid with the siege tower. Look at that. While the push is not really happening at the front. Lightcap are diving here. And Jibatong not even reacting to this. Let's go. Winchester here. What a stylish. Nice play. Ooh. The dive here. Nice. Quick walls against this. But now work efficiency will be absolutely horrible for Jibatong. I think he will go down to like 20 working villagers. Something like that. Well, we see the Lightcap diving in quite deep again. Sniping so many more monks. 
Maybe committing against those traps. If he commits to one, that would be good enough to get the second one. Maybe with the traps help as well. And he might even get the second. Yep, he gets the second trap. And that completely stops the push by Jibatong. While this is all getting slaughtered at home. Even at Saram. And yeah, this push is now completely out of steam. Oh man, work efficiency at 11%. I don't remember seeing such a low number. Maybe ever. 10.7? That's sick. That's really sick. Over twice the eco? Actually, it's not over twice the eco, right? It's more than seven times, more than eight times the eco. Working in the last minute. You have to compare those numbers here at the bottom. Six and a half times. And now we are getting back to 25 percent work efficiency but yeah that's obviously not the castle that he wants to go for it's getting pushed away at home completely and get some more Ubu though g to the g vince takes the second game home map of jibatong i'm really surprised that this happened that <laughs> we see arena as the home map of jibatong I think this is not really playing to his strengths and it's not playing to Winchester's weakness either. So, uh, really surprising to me. Great play by Winchester. How actively he was moving his light caps at all times. How he added one TC. I did the TC a lot because he knew he needed to produce a lot of army. So, I will think this is absolutely fine. Reasonable imp timing. Denied the relics quite a bit. And what a nice play. Defensive castle in time. Love it. And economy, obviously. Pulled plus the economy, uh, like the villager difference. Just pretty crazy. And we have a 2-0 lead. Is that Nomad, Nomad style map in the map pool? No. You see all the maps on screen that are in the map pool. Although they're potentially small for you. And pulled one. Oh, we have Arena now played. And do we already know the next map? It will be... Drumroll... Outcrop. Stuartong going for a second home map there. Gojara, a good option. I believe. Oh wow, did I overlook Sif? Oh yeah, Britons. Okay, 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 okay. Where's my sugar water? Here it is. Brood War looks like an interesting map. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's the crazy, might be the craziest one we have. How many times in your next career will you refer someone to Wikipedia on accident? It's not an accident, so zero percent, zero times, zero times. Glad that so many people are tuning in here and enjoying your time. Obviously, Age of Empires tournaments are heavily funded by Microsoft. I'm getting $100,000 from Microsoft to run this tournament. But the ideal Age of Empires or the ideal NAC5 would cost me $240,000. We already made a lot of cuts and there are a lot of people that are heavily, heavily supporting this event. And I created basically a file to give you an overview of the thank yous that I want to send you. And it's NSC5 support. So this is me basically saying, wow, crazy for your support. I think we got like 35,000 or no, even more, more than 35,000 um, for NSC4 and NSC5. I'm hoping for reasonable numbers as well there. Right now I'm short still like 40,000. Um, what all did you cut? Um, price pool for example, right? We, uh, we cut down from 100k to 50k, so for 55k. So overall now the overall cost are 195,000. Um, yeah. And so if you feel like supporting I'm, I'm trying to thank you in the best way that I can. Um, if you feel like it. There.
And yeah, obviously 0% of that ends in my own pockets. I lost money in all the five offline events I did before this. Will Chinese visa be in time if they qualify? They have to care about this themselves. Yo has a visa. Uh, I will help them as much as possible. We send out a letter of invitation. Uh, Vivi, for example, did not even have a passport before NAC 2 or NAC 3. NAC 3 probably. So that's why he couldn't even get a visa. Is it possible to take Forest Nothing as a map? We, we would look into options. I think Forest Nothing, obviously not the first one to ask. Um, I, I would say yes. Yeah, I, I'd like to get it a modified Forest Nothing. Maybe something like, if we did Forest Nothing like a 15 villager start, or 20 villager start. Hmm. Or like we, we, we would try to find something that it still would give us a bit of a feel that it's not a pure meme tournament, but a competition. But I, I, I tried to work with you as much as I could. Yeah. Yeah. What is the most expensive thing about NAC? Um, price pool, production, hotel, flights are the four big factors. Yeah. Caster salary is a reasonable thing. Um, yeah. Obviously, I have four really big names uh, as casters there, and they will take 11 days out of their b very busy schedule. Um, think they have to be fairly compensated. You you guys are getting paid? Well, the castles are. I, as I said, like, I won't make any money off this event. Extremely busy schedule? Well, maybe not you, Dave. Yeah. Also, while we have downtime, we can talk about that there is a meetup happening. If you want to watch the NAC 5 semifinals and finals, and maybe on the Saturday evening, have a beer with Dave or have a Coke with Hera or have a pizza with Doubt. Come to Berlin. Two days, we have a whole venue for 450 people, exclamation mark, meetup. I think by now we sold like 240 tickets. Can we have fitness with Jordan? Yeah, you can do push-ups in front of him and he will enjoy it. Yeah. Ticket sale started yesterday and I'm I'm really excited for it. I'd like to do coke with Terra. Funny. Jimato, a Britain. Byzantines on the other side for Winchester could have ran into Gojaras here or Britons, I believe. So Byzantines feels like a very reasonable pick against both of them. Can we pet Viper's dog? I'm not sure if Yus is going to be there. Hmm. Can we pet Viper? If he allows it. Archer range by Jibatong. Both players. Well, relatively passive play. Kind of early blacksmith here. A bit of a surprise to me. So that will be some spear skirm aggression. But Jibatong shouldn't be punished too easily. This is an easy wall off. This is an easy wall off. And then Vinch. I would be surprised if he finds too much damage. Hmm. Does the ticket revenue go towards the 400, 240k target? Uh, ticket revenue is, is... I'm not making profit on that either. Like the location roughly costs 10,000 euros. Uh, pizza flat rate costs a lot. Like all, all the food drinks. Um, I'm raking even if we have like 350 people coming. And I might make a small profit uh, if there are more people. But that will obviously just go into the refunding of the tournament. Like, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. 
yeah obviously players like food catering uh, it is like 25 meals twice a day i think that is like 9000 euros or something in that ballpark so yeah if you still know a cook that wants to cook in berlin we would go for that uh there are confirmed sponsors yeah but um nothing official yet uh, the meetup is full to uh, two full days yes 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 hmm. can they not eat chicken and rice well they can one day but they're vegetarians they're vegans and they want some diversity right why did you stay with this tournament at your home why did you stay with this tournament at your home like do it a small scale not this ex extra large event in berlin thanks for the answer it's not that much more expensive like there's so many costs that are still the same cost of salary flights are the same um i had a cook in my apartment as well production was the same like we had extra cameras we had extra lights i just felt like i delivered the better show if i upgrade and people really really loved nse4 so why going back i think that's not really how overlay guy and i really perceived nacs we both felt like while well, we had a great show how can we push it to the next level how can we make it even better and i think that really showed hmm. okay. and i think if i hosted nac again to the nac one again today it would not get the excitement out of the people. It would be nice, and we would ma get like 15,000 very happy hardcore nerds, but we wouldn't reach 50,000 people that see, wow, Age of Empires is a super exciting RTS, and I maybe want to start playing again. I think if we kept NAC1, it's more likely that we stagnated. Hmm. NSC1 was funny. Yes, yes, yes. It was great. It was a great start. And I think we delivered an incredible product for what we put in there. No. I started watching every 2 because of NSC1. That's interesting. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Both with similar car stage timings. Which is slightly ahead. Does some damage to the house, but that's it. Hmm. Stable with this as well. Do you prefer cats or dogs? Dogs. I think anyone who prefers cats is a lunatic. My only regret is that few top-notch players will miss out this big thing in AO2. I was hoping there will be room for four more players, but I know that is rough. Yeah, that's absolutely impossible. We already upgraded to 10 from my initial 8 because I felt like too many were missed out. But more than 10 is absolutely crazy. We would need a completely different format then and it would lose the charm of the tournament. How do mid-level 15 agents get into tournament environment? sign up for a tournament and play thanks for your question oh i'm just not cleaning this one up they are going for the attack fully walled winchester though scout wants to see are there villagers moving out sees none of them at the left side so could maybe think that there are some at the bottom feels like an attack through the center is more likely though yeah just go to liquipedia there are probably like 30 mid-tier Age of Empires tournaments running right now that you could play. Lots of them in private discords, but at least 15 of them are on Liquipedia. Hmm. Add a house and trap his army. How do you trap skirms though? Then you need a siege workshop yourself. Would take quite some time, but yeah. He's thinking about the siege workshop at the front. That is fortunate for Winchester that this was not scouted. But now some aggression here. And this is tough to rewall. Hmm. Hmm. 
Also read up on Reddit a bit. Uh, Reddit also promotes some smaller tournaments. What is your favorite website? <laughs> Contrary to uh, the most people's belief, probably Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Wikipedia, my man. <laughs> okay, this is going to be ugly to play for both players, actually. Siege Workshop, kind of important. Oh, that's a good first shot. Oh, such a good shot. Villager needs to repair. Gets a shot into the skirms as well. And Mangonel goes down. That's good for Jibatong. He can now move in. 4 HP on that Mangonel. Gets the repair. And that next Mangonel obviously takes quite some time. Meanwhile, this one is stopped for now. House is behind. Ooh, this is intense. Expansion here. Gold and stone. Two camels. They are not adding too much against seven crossbows. If all those crossbows survive, though. Skirms. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Vinch is slipping. And that will be that will be some dead builds. Quite some dead builds. Can maybe kill the skirm. Oh, that's a big mangler shot though. And that will be some dead builds, but reasonable defense still by Winchester. That mangler, that was key. If that trade goes in the other direction, I think the game might be over. I think this will be close to impossible. But like a mangler and crossbows are roaming around here. That's pretty sick. TC did not go up, and now finally the mangonel for the clear up. A scorpion earlier could have been an option as well. And yeah, those crossbows will be annoying, but we'll get cleared up. And look at that. Winchester gets out there without hitting a chit. Uh, out eating a hit. Hmm. You get unlimited beer for ticket price? That's correct. You're good at reading. Hmm. Besides Ganji. Ganji is not a DM player. So, uh... Ganji is not coming from DM. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, he is a Monk player, not a DM player. Yeah. I mean, Ganji won the last DM tourney? Really? Thought it was freaking Andy. At least he won Deathmatch World Cup. But still. Yeah. I, 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 I. Viper won Deathmatch World Cup as well before. And he's also not a Deathmatch player. I won deathmatch tournaments and also a, an RM player, mainly. Oh, that's a good hit. Oh, that's a good hit. Jesus Christ. Now you have to be really scared of that mangonel. But the camel can maybe even deal with the mangonel now. Uh-oh. Is he watching? Is he watching? Good hit. Hmm. Okay. Completely even game. 70 pop to 69 pop. Map control. I don't even know who has the advantage here. Now oh, the second siege workshop at home. Hmm. Yeah, neither player was watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw it. And they didn't. That has to be dead will. Maybe two. No, 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 no. This has to be a scorpion, actually, not a mangonel. Scorpion just gets out so much quicker, is cheaper, and does more guaranteed damage against low HP units, especially. Like, a scorpion clears this, more likely than a mangonel will clear it. I missed deathmatch. Um, there's a deathmatch tournament running right now. I got into the quarterfinals, lost to Andy there. I also will have a deathmatch 3-3 show match in my goodbye week. Mandato. Together with Tato, Viper, Shine, and me against the Emmers. I keep getting lag spikes and I have no really good PC. Any tips? Uh, what server are you playing on? Maybe that's the problem. So shine, indeed. Oh, 
Mangonold. Let's take a look. Really important trade here. Dodged. Armor for the skirms only now. Oh, this is good. Micro by Vinch. Yay. Tibatong again. Not really watching what's happening here. TC might even survive. Lots of repair. Another siege workshop. Gets the damage done. No villagers around for Jibatong to repair. Hmm. Hmm. Nice micro. Nice micro by Jibatong. And can now pressure the town center even more. 11 skirms in the queue. Macro not really there for Winchester. Needs a third range or... Maybe miscued a bit. Now lots of repair here. Hmm. Goes for double mangonel production from the front. Does not use the siege workshop in the back. Still chilling with the mangonel here. Crossbow production on the slow side. Does he play one archer range this whole game? Looks like it. Okay, that's a bit of a surprise to me. Don't say goodbye, say so long. Okay, then it's my so long week. That was a good hit. Dodge, nice one. Chibatong really on point here. Really on point. What server are they playing at? Southeast Asia. Okay. Oh, but those crossbows are dead. Mangonel tried to dodge a bit. Shot in abs into absolute no man's land. Gets a kill though. Not too bad. And maybe one now, but Winchester was watching. Another Mangonel arrives, though. Only produced out of the one at the front. Could have gone for some more in the back. Now a stable could add quite a bit. Maybe a villager around for some repair coming in. <laughs> Vinch splits there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Will, will he arrive in time? 13 HP, 8 HP, a shot, 1 HP, and dice. He did a longer hammer there. Hmm... And now a knight being added. Behind this, macro. Similar for both of them. Winchester with more idle TC time, but had the town center way earlier, obviously. And is now adding some knights himself. Will have enough stone to click um, the c castle hotkey. <laughs> Stable way late. Well, the economy was very disrupted here, right? He only has 19 farmers, 3 town centers, so he can't really even afford the first knights. Hmm. Defensive castle here. Not sure about the positioning, but I, I mean not sure. Not in the sense like, oh, this is bad. I actually don't know where I would have placed the castle myself. What happened to AV4? Better than ever. Highest player numbers since the game came out. And having active S tier tournament scene. I have a talk show called WTF Happened, where I always talk what happened in the last month. And I just gave updates there on viewer numbers and player numbers of AOE4. It's a really good product right now. Had a great expansion. People really love enjoying it again. Ooh, ooh. Dives for the mangonel. Can you get the kill against the crossbow? Uh, against the knights? Quite some losses here. And yeah, that resets both armies. Both had 100 villagers and so minimal army count. Sick. Vince tries to take gold for next game. Why not? Why not? Still no ballistics. Eco upgrades. Four against only two on Jibatong's side. Hmm. For the ST players on AOE4. Well, there's a great website called Liquipedia. You can look it up. I think Marine Lord and BCQ are considered to be the top two, for sure. Hmm. Okay, Vinch bought himself up to Imp. Some more skirms now, and add some more archer ranges. Hmm. Not producing too much. Farm count is a bit underwhelming by Vinch. 26 here, yeah, and he thinks the same, adds 9 more farms. That feels very natural to me. And expands towards the top. 
Is that what you want to do if you're a Byzantine player? No. But is that something you want to face if you're a Britain player? Also no. So I don't mind it too much. And especially with having all the stone. He will pressure this area quite nicely. It's not the MTC. As you can see also, always the golden shadow is showing you in the overlay which TC we are imping. Which TC we are using for a technology. Ah, oh, this is close. 18 villagers against 10 villagers. Only 9 building right now, but 2 knights around, some skirmishes around. Oh, this is close. I think both castles will go up. Mm, 23 villagers even. Now even HP. Yeah, yeah, this will, both castles will go up. Hmm. Now the ram, and we kind of had this already, right? The castle the castle spot. But now way more HP, obviously, for the Byzantine player. 6200 against 4.8k. No patterns being added here. Goes for some skirmishes now, Jibatong. Okay. Has the center control, so can pressure quite a bit through this area if he wants to. And he does. Yeah, how many... Petards do you even need? It's 8 for 4.8k, now it's 62. Oh god, it's 8, 9. Like 11? 11 petards instead of 8? Not unlikely. Stable's being added. Is Finch going? Oh, he goes Paladin Skirm, maybe. Wow. Something we don't see too often. And that's a good answer to the Skirm switch of Jibbaton. Vinch now 10 pop ahead. Cavalier? Yeah, I know it's Cavalier for now. But his economy is good and he's not producing anything. So I wouldn't be surprised if he thinks about Paladin. Hmm. It's not unreasonable. On this map, mobility is so important. Yeah, he's not queuing up anything. This might be direct Paladin play. And he, yeah, he's showing two of the Cavaliers now. Yeah, he's banking rest. Maybe queues up some skirms. Paladin is great on this map. Hmm. And yeah, Paladin being clicked. And this castle will go down. Does not have a lot of protection over in this area. And Cavaliers are just shrekking Chibatong now. Okay, D will be way worse. And yeah, Jibatong realizes, okay, okay, this is impossible for me. I don't have the mobility. Finch sister, congrats, you are moving to the round of 24. In a really, really tough bracket. The toughest of brackets that we have in the first qualifier. Finch sister will have a colossal task ahead of himself. But keeps his dreams alive. And with a clean 3-0-4 now. Uh, quite solid, quite solid. Obviously pretty messy game there. Tough to really uh, fault someone for some of the mistakes. It is just like you're moving in here, there, over here. Then you're trying to regroup stuff there. You have double siege workshop. How do you really produce? How do you prioritize? When to add the stable? How to keep the TCs running? Uh, pretty, pretty wild. But certainly an entertaining game. And now we have, I think, Two hours to fill, right? Hmm. How many qualifier seats are there? I have a great video explaining the whole format and all my predictions on my YouTube. Exclamation mark. Or not. Uh, just on my YouTube. And also exclamation mark. Vicky will give you all the info like that. We have six seats. Three in this qualifier. Three in the next qualifier next week. Okay, let's take a look at the meetup. How many tickets do we still have left? Uh, 70 tickets left. Yeah. Round of 34 should be similar to round of 8 for each group, right? What? There is no round of eight.
Winchester the Jibbertong. They are moving into Magugo Uzi. The winner of that one. And then the winner of Sito Slam. So Winchester could have a crazy bracket like Jibbertong, Magugo, Sito. And then face the winner of this bracket, which could be doubt, could be MBL, could be hard. Technically fire and classic as well. Hmm. Round of 24 and round of 12 are both happening on Saturday. The round of 6 on Sunday. Was there any thought on inviting Taddle directly? Yes, but no. He was invited last time. This time inviting top 4 of NAC4 made a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Okay, up next will be Doubt vs. Beery in 2 hours. Doubt vs. Vinch then. Could be, could be a thing. Sito will have a say with that though. Um, now the question is, are we, uh, who is a favorite to win NC5? What possibility would you place on your pick? Probability. Think Hera? Forty percent. We join us in Berghain. If you ask, you are not getting in, so no. Mm. Has the average viewer increased for all AU2 streamers since Viper and T90 came back? I don't know. Mm. Can you please stream Winchester game? Just finished 3 0. 3 0, my friend. You are a minute late. Uh, now, the question is do we want to stream some of the other games? Um, something that happened yesterday. Kingston Dragon Star, for example. That could be interesting. Portuguese Italians. Nikov we covered. Miha we covered. Kapoch we covered. No, Nikov we didn't cover. Mm. Sebastian we covered. The lesser I don't think was exciting. Valas we covered. MBL Hart we covered. Sito I don't think was exciting. Anyone knows who won the cartography? Only we had a chance to see completed tournaments and then click on cartographers and then we see the results. What about Classic Pro? What about him? How are them MBL facing off? Yeah, feels horrible, feels horrible. I think we will cast the Rex of Dragonstar versus Kingston. Um... I think that was entertaining, and in two hours we will have doubt um, for us live. Isn't Classic Pro match going? Ah, he rescheduled with fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fire was sick. Uh, okay. Okay, let me see how bad this is going to be in the draft now. Mm. Map. If I need to change all maps or if they are automatically changed. Nice. All maps are changing. That is good. That is good news. And if I change these shifts... All of them are refreshing as well. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Mm, and player names. This is... No, this is Dragonstar? Oh, wow. Uh, I wanted it the other way around. Ah, oh, yeah, no, this is... Yeah. Dragonstar. And... Kingston. Oh, I did not do it too well with this one. This ideally would change as well. Um. Hmm. 
The sad thing is that I want more players to qualify than the spots like Doubt, Tattoo, Slam, Jordan, Villas, MBL, Cito. That's getting tight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, this is nice. Now I just need to organize the wrecks for myself. I think this was a good set from yesterday. What's the plan now until the next game? Dragonstar versus Kingston Rex from yesterday. Uh, the opener was the outcrop. Okay, hmm. we just got another mouse pad. Sweet. And we will edit this live into uh, Rex. Right? This feels reasonable. Uh, didn't you stream that chat yesterday? Uh, I streamed the last map, but that's it. So we, we can learn a bit about this, uh, interact a bit with the chat. And... Casting Kingston to get, give us flag. Yeah. My tickets for NAC are here. Nice. See you there. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. Okie dokie. Uh, Drankstar a bit late with his house. Saracens, quite active scouting here. Gets a good first hit off. Interesting civilization matchup. Like I, I didn't expect Saracens a lot here. You don't have a lot of stone, a lot of gold. You have to expand. But camels are crazy now. Hmm. Is this live? Well, if only we knew if it's live or Rex. Hmm, if only there was information about that on the screen. Hmm. If only. Are you casting Tado and when? Um, not sure. If so, then tomorrow. Because that's when he's playing. And if he has a deep run, Sunday guaranteed. I don't think I will cover his Saturday matches. I don't think... I think we will have more interesting matches on Saturday to cover. Hmm. Lots of walls here by Dragonstar. And yeah, uh, you can ask a lot of questions now. Uh, we can be very interactive here. Um, yeah. About the tournament, about other stuff. If you feel like it about Age of Empires. Hmm. It's going to take a long time to understand all your overlays. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening, right? Bottom right, all the numbers at the top. I also have a YouTube video explaining all the numbers in the overlay. Do players like Brood War? I have mixed feedback on it. Thoughts on AOM retold? Uh, no, no strong feelings yet about it. Hmm. I heard that a lot of people are excited about it. Have we seen Outcrop in many prior events? Well, Red Bull events had it. NAC4 had it as well, I would think. I don't remember. Uh, we had it in Cartographers. 
Not sure if we had it in Warlords. Maybe. Hmm. Pretty stacked tournament if a potential Tato vs. Dogao set is one of the less interesting ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The thing is, though, Tato Dogao, like, it feels like Tato really has the number of Dogao. Like, he has completely owned him the last matches they had. Hmm. Uh, TTL had it as well? Okay. Do you think Whelm is an important metric and should be shown? Work efficiency last minute? You mean this stat that I'm sh trying to show as much as possible? Yes. I think it's not important at the start, but once basically idle time becomes irrelevant. So I think the moment we transition to Castle Age, work efficiency last minute should be the go-to stat. Yeah. Any big hotfixes from your side? Draft map rules already planned for the second qualifier? Um, nothing that I can talk about publicly. Kingston, already Feudal Age, squeezes himself through here. Not pushing a lot of deer early on, only one. More cows getting sent over. He's getting those. Did he intercept some of those cows? Looks a bit like it. One more coming. There have been conversation with some of the pros complaining that there are too many maps in the tournament. Why did you have such a large map pool? Uh, because of feedback from players that... Um, we had too few. And viewer feedback as well. Too few feed, uh, maps in NSC4. And I think this feedback is actually not representing the player base. I think it is... Like, did you hear it from anyone else except the GL podcast? I, I didn't. And I think for them the feedback is like it because they care so much and a smaller map pool would give them a higher chance to qualify. So this is like a, a selfish thought in the sense that, wow, it is tougher for me now, but they don't see the bigger picture of... Wow, this is actually good for the tournament. Um, yeah. I, I'm truly convinced of that. And Doubt even said he doesn't like the draft format and the map pool is really bad for him in the qualification because now it adds a lot of work and a lot of like variance to it. But for the main event, he thinks it, it is... A great choice. The thing is, a qualification should have the same settings in the qualifier and the main event, though. So, or at least pretty close to it. So, I think the thought was them whining, not them. Like, they, they are sad about this, but I don't think they would actually actively advise me against doing it. That's what I believe. Hmm. The main event possibly have the upcoming patch. I expect many patches between now and the main event. Or well, not many patches, but let's see if we use them. Yeah. Also funny that we did not have that discussion for Warlords, where we had the same amount of maps, and we did not have that discussion for Cartographers, where we had the same amount of maps. What I read from that is that people now care more <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure if that's the correct assumption, though. Hmm. Dragonstar did not sell the stone, although he has the market. Not a lot of villagers on food here. CS so players are a bit sad as it's more difficult for them to qualify, but overall players enjoy more map variety. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 too bad um, that I wasn't there for that discussion. Hmm. Well, Carter and Wallet had the map group system. Yeah, but the critique wasn't map group system. The critique was the amount of maps. What is the map group system changing? I think with like the 25 matches in five days in the main events with stage we need to force variety 
otherwise became becomes like very repetitive and to ensure that we need to have changes and there will be changes in maps and changes in shifts obviously changes in casters otherwise we have to look at the same thing 25 times but people are actually some of some people i know already booked holidays to watch more nac sets so I, I want to cater to them as well and want to give them the best show Uh, yeah, my, my thoughts on it. So you can tell me if I'm going wrong somewhere. I have wrong assumptions about stuff. They don't go on about for long, though. Just a few lines in a big discussion. Basically, Nelia said it's not a lot of work for them to prep. It's a lot of work for them. Yeah, 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 yeah it is. I don't understand that. I, as a player, would not like those settings, but... <laughs> We are getting those big tournaments because we are putting an entertaining show. And we have to have to think about that. Like casters or like tournament organizers always want a thing, players always want a thing, and we need to find a balance there. I think the only thing that I could have done is maybe release the map pool pack a bit earlier. But honestly, like with how... Oh, wow, nice night, sa night save here. But with how back-to-back -back tournaments were, like I even struggled to find people actually trying to test the maps. And I would have even paid them, right? But I think I got message from three people that wanted to test the maps. And one of them even said, yeah, I don't want to play... The maps i can look at them and give you feedback and i think that didn't even happen <laughs> okay kings now clicked up dragon star six villages behind so i would think relatively even scenario here oh this is spotted though this could maybe be an edit ca and well second town center I like the admin sieve bands as an idea that it's determined it forces a variety in adaption. Yeah, it's an ad admin sieve bands, but random sieve bands, yeah. Since the map pool is so large, which I don't, I like, don't get me wrong. Can you have some of the draws at the same time that pick from the map pool to force a huge variety between different sets? No, no. This would feel really unfair then. Hmm. Have yourself play tested all the maps? I have generated all the maps multiple times. Obviously, we, we have like 15 maps that have like all the map, like there's not a single map or maybe Brood War. But I think at least 19 of the 21 maps have been used in tournaments before. I think the settings are great, except 9 Vilsa start maybe. I don't like that Tourney are heading into 9 will start direct while the standard gameplay is still 3 on 3 will starts. Another thing with balancing. Ooh, pretty. No, yeah, fitting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Girlfriend just uh, came by. Outfit check. She's looking good tonight. <laughs> okay, she didn't like that I said that. Um, I think Nine Minutes to Start is the future of esports. And. I think it, it's way better than three villages to start. I personally think that ladder games above 2k could maybe have the option. Do you want to have nine villages to start? I think that could add a lot. I think it's just better. I don't think that three villages start should be changed for casuals though. I think nine villages to start should never ever become the standard on the ladder. What about splitting the difference and doing six will starts? Why? Why, 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 why? Six has no advantage. Six will just has no advantage over nine. Hmm. Should be a pre-game vote, just like random sieve. Yeah, but I, as I said, only if both are above 2k or something like that. Hmm. Hmm. Continues with the aggression here. Six will shot would literally be like 30 seconds in like saved. 
Yeah, math doesn't check out, but I know what you want to say, yeah. Six will advantage is more scouting. Oh, that li sounds like a T90 quote from two years ago. You know that we start with bigger exploration in this tournament, right? Why not 12? Because there's a difference in build orders where the 10th villager is going. Like nine villagers, the highest amount you can go for to not change any build orders. Might as well just play Empire Wars if we want to speed up the meta. As you know, I'm a big fan of Empire Wars. The big problem with Empire Wars is obviously scouting. And the big problem is that it loses a bit of identity of Age of Empires. And that's the problem with Empire Wars. I think most of the other things are absolutely great. And I think it's a good choice to have Red Bull tournaments with Empire Wars. Was Constructor considered for the map pool? No. Scouting initial for the Nineville Star 2. Okay, you must have had this stream muted for the last minute. On nine villager start, we have more exploration at the start than in a three villager start. We can look at it. For example, you always see your two boars at the start of the game. So there is no difference in scouting. In the nine, two, but it's three villager start. You have extra exploration around it. So, uh, as I said, like this is something that T90 always said, that scouting was impacted, but that is something of the past, because we addressed that issue quite some time ago. Should Empire Wars start in Dark Age? You can set it in Dark Age. I think for tournament it doesn't make sense. Hmm. Daniel has mentioned his tournaments will always be three villagers start. Would be a horrible, horrible thing if that's true. I think that shows a lot of stubbornness if that's, that is his truth. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he said it like two years ago when he didn't see the greater picture. Um, yeah. But uh, I think it, yeah, would, two weeks ago? Yeah, that's, that's sad. Like, I, I think that might just be like a promise for now. And like him thinking for the next two, three tournaments. But making an always promise for something that is controversially discussed would feel very one-dimensional. And it's totally fine if he says, like, I prefer three villagers and Hidden Cup in the next two TTL seasons will have three, uh, three villagers start. And I totally understand that. But saying I always will do three villagers sounds shocking. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, knights now going for the raid here. Kind of interesting how many knights he was building, although he is Saracens. One at 45 HP on those bad boys now. Pretty sick, pretty sick. Hmm. Do you plan on having that team game you did at NC4 was fun? No, not going to happen again. Work efficiency enabled now. Do you think Drush will ever be relevant again? Uh, we've seen players win with the Drush yesterday, so yes. What about having mixed will starts with three and nine will tournaments? Really test how well-rounded players to handle both. It's the same. Do you, who do you think is significantly worse or significantly better in three or nine will to start? I think you won't change the world ranking at all. I would, it would really surprise me. How does Chinese work with the difference? Uh, three villagers start, obviously. Oh, they start uh, with not six villagers, right? And less food. And you start with 12 villagers in this tournament, but even less food. So you start with negative 140 food. For example, in MEMS tournament, that's what not, was not adjusted. And that's why 
Chinese were by far the best um, by far the best civilization but in those settings we, they will have pretty much the same balance as with the three villager starter that's a nice fight for dragon star Whew. we wouldn't ruin the future of AU to make it less esports starting with three villages? yeah we wouldn't at all I think it has a minimal impact yeah yeah like the future of Age of Empires will not rely if we do three or nine villager start. I agree. Chinese were so amazing in Warlord settings. Yeah, yeah, they were completely broken. Hmm. Uh, stick with one number w everywhere, whatever you choose. Let our esports. Yeah, I heavily disagree with that statement. Why? Like. <laughs> Ladder should be allowed to play Black Forest and Michi team games as well. That's not what I want for esports. Don't certain openings take a big hit then? Um, who's winning? Well, Dragonstar has the way better population and has the civilization that probably scales better with the better camels. So my money is on Dragonstar here. All the very best for the tournament. I hope you make it big as it's your last tournament and becomes the best land tournament ever. Thank you. So that we feel we are playing the same game as the pros? Yeah, but you don't. And that's fine. You can have the option to play the same game. But casuals should not be forced. I think the beauty of Age of Empires is that it can be esports but also super far away from esports. Like so many people say, wow, Age of Empires, I love it. Like one hand on my ball sack, other hand a beer. And from time to time I move some villagers. And oh boy, did I enjoy to boom. They don't want to use the word boom, but to get to 600 longbows and really smash the AI. Or I build 500 war elephants, right? And that should never change. And people should be allowed to do that and continue to enjoy their time how they want. And have the super casual experience. So thinking, okay, this is best for eSport and now we force casuals to play the same feels very wrong. Yeah. So this live for Rex, information on the screen, you will find it. Yeah. Yeah, imagine only playing football 11, 11, 90 minutes. Like, there have to be adjustments, right? Would be absolutely weird if everyone played exactly the same standards. Hmm. I talk about the ladder, not campaign. Yeah, same goes for ladder. Why force, like, 500 that just want to build up for two hours? And then see who build up the better army and end the game after 30 seconds, after the big fight. Why would we force them to play Crater or Land Madness as the map, which they don't feel comfortable with? Hmm. Changing the game for the high rated and leaving the old, the low rated makes no sense either. Correct, correct. It is, it is extremely complex, right? And I don't think the ladder should be touched too much. Awesome. Ah, now we're switching into quite some pikemen. But it is Imperial Age against no Imperial Age. Kingston quite far behind here. Camels waiting for their upgrades. What up? Oh, how many HP do we have after this? 145. Let's take a look what have a camel can produce. We're seeing 170 HP. That's really solid. In my opinion, it's just weird to practice 9 will start at night and go back to playing 3 will start the day after on stream. It's just pointless. We have to choose one. Yeah, then choose to practice more and play 9 will just starts. Like, why? Like, I see you queue up against Hart six times in a row. Why don't you play him Arabia six times in a row with 9 will just start? Like, you want to. 
face him in the ladder anyways. Like, that's what I did, right? Whenever I feel like, okay, I want to have practice, but not a real practice set. I took Andrew and said, okay, let's do 11 Arabia games in a row. Why not? You are well connected in the community. To organize something like that. When I queue, I don't always find hard. Yeah, but, like, have you tried to talk to him? Like, I'm ob obviously over simplifying things here, right? But I think this, this could be, like, nice casual streaming content for you and not too far away from w what you want to play for practice. That's not the future you want, though. Yeah, well... That's the, the question now, right? How many people are we thinking about? How many people are actively like streaming on the ladder and practicing for nine virtual tournaments? Right now, maybe 25, 20. Like that are active, actively playing ladder and actively playing nine virtual tournaments. I think it's like tw 25, 30 maybe. Obviously those are the most vocal and the, yeah, less than 2%. No, 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 it's uh, way, way, way lower, right? Like 30 people out of all that are playing Age of Empires. Um, early GG? I don't think so. We are in Castle Age versus Imperial Age. We are losing our starting base. This is another castle. We are getting trapped down here. It's 25, 170 HP camels against 15 pikemen and some CA scattered around. He doesn't have any control at the top. All I'm saying is jumping between two different settings is not good. If you want to get the best of the player, host normal settings. Uh, yes, 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 yes. I 100% agree. But my goal is not to get the best out of the player. My goal is to give, you the, give the viewers the best show. I agree with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I want the best out of you, MBL, I will host Arabia Random Civ. And four and a half hours arena... One we wants. I, I I agree with you. Like you will play worse on those settings or uncomfortable or something, but that's not the goal of the tournament. The goal of the tournament is to be entertaining and get viewers interested in the game. Yeah. And this is that well, we discussed that in the game before, right? That's a bit. Players versus tournament hosts. And I'm trying to connect as good as possible there, but it's not easy. Wasn't there a way to donate like 10k to change the tournament setting? Um, if you want to donate 20k, I will, instead of the added map, I will make it three villages start for you. Yeah. Like we, we can replace the top one. Decide on a map. You can decide on the amount of villagers we start. If we, if you want to make it three villagers. Yeah. Neil is assuming that nine villages is better than three villages. Why? Um, analytics on Twitch and YouTube. Like watch our times for different tournaments. When are people tuning in? When are people tuning out? It is, it is a lot of stuff to talk about, right? <laughs> Wouldn't it be really weird to have qualifier 9 but tournament on 3? Yeah, it would be weird, but for 20k, players would understand. I'm not playing this tourney for anything, don't get me wrong. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I take this as a emotional, constructive discussion. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be synchronized for the future. I don't think so. It's only about 30 people. Yeah. I think we only care about 30 people out of the whole Age of Empires universe. And that's including viewers and players. And obviously, like, you are one of those 30 players, right? So I think, I, I see why it's hard for you. But I think we're giving most people the best data experience, most people the best viewing experience. And you are the one that is squeezed between both worlds. But that's one of the very few people. 
Will Lemming be allowed in NSC5? Yes. What about for players trying to make it as a pro? I don't think you are limited in qualifying if you play three villagers on the ladder. Yeah. Why do you think hybrid is so unpopular, relatively speaking? It tends to bet be the map type with most strategy and most difficult involved, yet people seem to hate it. I, I wouldn't know that people hate it. Yeah. So, so you know something I don't. Mm. At the last NAC, yeah, Toby. Uh, watch my YouTube video. Uh, it's time to see why. I think some playing as much as NBL does should appreciate different settings as a lot. Isn't always same boring for players or not? Why, 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 why? I've played this game for 28,000 hours. I'm not bored at all. I uh, like... I, I'm, I watched Age of Empires. I looked, like, I watched this. This. I've seen for 40,000 times, maybe. And I'm looking forward to this game. I'm looking forward to this game. And, like, I'm really enjoying, because Portuguese Italians on this map, I want to see what's happening. And I'm really excited for it. Yeah. Hmm. You've definitely watched this more than 40,000 times? Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe. Is the 9 will start change the game in the direction that you have less time from seeing the matchup to make your the first decision? So on 3 will start you have 130 and this more making the first decision? Um, for the player slightly, yes. But I'm not really sure how many decisions you make that you change between Villager 3 and 9. Like, if you think about the matchup, that's you have plenty of time. If you think about the map, you have the same amount of scouting. If you want to change your build order, you didn't yet. It's the same. So let's quickly talk about the map because some people might not know it. We have two basically big areas of border, the one at the top and the one at the bottom. We are walled in and have a castle spawning always relatively speaking at the bottom here. We have reasonable amount of gold inside. There are two golds to fight in the center as well as two relics. We have an extra gold and an extra relic as well as stone and deer in the corners. And we can get three relics here at the bottom. Hmm. Is Nine Visual Start going to make the game harder for newcomers? I don't think so. Nine Visual Start is for 30 people in the world right now as players. Nearly, what? With all this discussion, don't take this criticism. Remember, if nobody cares, we wouldn't be having a discussion. We care, are invested, which is why we're having these discussions. I, I, I have zero bad emotions towards MBL here. It's all good. It's all good. Maybe take away two sheep? Yeah, we're starting with six sheep in nine villager start compared to eight sheep. Six will start would be more casual friendly than nine will, I feel. Just send all straight will some food and go from there. Yeah, but it's it's not superior to 9 will. They did forget regicide. Oh yes, they did. They did forget to put regicide in there. Oh baby, baby, baby. Um, let me see if I can message the admin here. Uh, can we get Copenhagen to go for regicide automatically? Um, Kingston versus Dragon Star forgot to put it. Yeah, this is interesting. Didn't this guy play yesterday? Oh boy, another guy that can't read. Are you supposed to have registered resources as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is unfortunate. Um, yeah. Uh, but obviously the game will count. Uh, okay, so what will happen now is for the future, 
This map will not generate a castle if you don't have regicide selected. So people therefore should realize, damn, I don't have a castle. Maybe we have the ga wrong game mode. Hopefully that solves it. What date to qualifiers finish? First qualifier finishes this Sunday. Second qualifier finishes this Sunday afterwards. Mr. Honor, welcome, welcome. An old RTS enjoyer. Over from Bondra. Will you make them play again? Those are wrecks that already happened. The game will count. It's a bit of their responsibility. Second dog now for Kingston at the top. And Dragonstar with a nice opening here at the bottom. And should get three fishing ships killed. Also thinking about getting the will. No loom. Delayed loom. Got some damage done and there will be four economic u economic units killed. And also gets the house. Not a bad opening, but Kingston's cast edge timing should obviously be slightly ahead then. Is it possible to play nine will start against AI? If so, how? Yes, I think you can just select those maps. Yeah, just use the NAC map pack and it should be nine will. Maybe Honor can German cast NAC? Oh, I wouldn't hate that. Obviously, a very enthusiastic Age of Empires lover, or RTS lovers specifically. But not sure if he's that much into the new civilizations. But I wouldn't be surprised if he gives it a good look from time to time. We are Barrow here in Feudal Age, something we don't see too often. Water also won by Dragonstar at the top. Hmm. I will watch, but my casting career is long, long, uh, gone long ago. Too bad. Isn't Honor busy with Stormgate now? Maybe, maybe. Also programming his own game, from what I heard. Uh-oh. Small hiccup here, while clicking to Castle Age. Uh-oh. Villager. Ooh, saved. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. He can qualify if he doesn't want to cast. Yeah, maybe. Okay, and cast edge timing by Dragonstar. Really reasonable behind this as well. Goes four dogs. Two at the top, two at the bottom. This should guarantee a lot of map control for him. Hmm. Yeah, Maxime casted... Or cast the... Red Bull Legacy Finals together with Maurice Weber in German. If you want to watch that, I'm pretty sure there are still VODs. Maxim, obviously, a great caster there. But yeah, that would be an interesting team. Maxim and Honor together. Okay, so what we now have as changes is that people can build two extra town centers compared to only one extra town center with the regicide typically. So booms will be slightly faster. No fishing ships for Kingston though. But we see seven fishing ships for Dragonstar. Has to be happy with that. Hmm. Have nine villages start as a random severe option where both agree to play it. I wouldn't hate it. What do you think should be improved in AO2 seem to make it viable for new people to go full time into AO2? What, 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 what? What do you think should be improved in AO2 scene to make it viable for new people to go full-time into AO2? Well, they would need more money in there. So tournaments have to be bigger. More sponsors have to join. Those are the two biggest factors. Yeah, more people. More people watching. Like, the game doesn't need to improve itself to have more people full-time. Like, you naturally grow more people full-time if you grow the scene. The question is, so how do we get more players, right? But that's a very different question from the one you asked. More players, but won't happen. Okay, you heard it here first, MBL. Oh, you heard it here first from MBL. Ooh, look at that. Organ landing. Can you explain how Red Set exactly works? I don't see kings in this map. Sorry, this is a noob question. The question is absolutely educated and correct. 
This map was hosted incorrectly. Typically, there should be a king here. And if you lose the king, you lose the game. But the players did a mistake hosting the game and didn't collect, uh, select the correct format. So this should have been played as regicide, but wasn't. Oh, this could be a quadruple kill. Maybe a triple kill? Boink! Only two. And now the... Oh, but look at that. That's a really fortunate map spawn here for a dragon star. With the gold and the wood at the bottom. And those organs, they could have come in. Just imagine the map's reversed. And he could have picked off maybe two, three builds. But here, nice walls against it. Hmm. It's an admin loss for both. Yeah, let's disqualify them. Hmm. Magnol will deal with this quite nicely. Kingston gets water control at the top for now. Some more production here. Fish could go down and a redog at this end. Hmm. Need to attract more IT sponsors in game. Well, I obviously did a lot of lot of work to try to attract sponsors, right? And maybe I'm just really bad at it. Or people are not that interested in the old game slash in myself or my tournament. I think we contacted in total like I would think like 120 sponsors, potential sponsors. And I think I heard back from like 30, 40. The majority didn't even answer. And yeah, I think I got in talks with like 10 to 15 and likely deals in the end maybe two maybe three as actually money giving for nac which is kind of crazy but yeah india should have some sponsors well if you have any contacts give them to me who didn't answer so we know who to boycott <laughs> yeah we're not getting going that direction i actually did that the other day uh, on on a German stream where I mentioned like someone like that I was interested sponsoring me but they didn't and I mentioned it and people like actually had a lot of negative um, emotions towards them which I kind of regret now hmm. problem is unfortunately your product does not really matter only who you know and who knows you yeah yeah yeah, exactly. Like, Niklas, when I was at yours and I talked about the book sponsorship that I wanted, right? I kind of feel b felt bad after it because people might have had, like, negative emotions towards the company now. But, like, it's completely out of their hands. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a proper pitch deck, so the if they read the pitch deck, they should know that we have a really good audience for sponsors. Yeah, Jordan is not getting his new employer to sponsor a tournament. But yeah, if anyone feels like they have some contacts or they have some ideas, I'm still open to it. Well, there, that was a big investment here by Kingston and Dragonstar. Without extra investment, clears this up quite easily. And this is not the biggest fish. Yeah, Dragonstar with a nice lead. 3TC. Play pretty soon for him. Hmm. Was AoE even involved with ESL ever? Uh, I don't think so. There was basically a counter company to the ESL called ESGL. Esports um, Gaming League? Something like that? Hmm. But that was not ESL. Hmm. Spot Gamer Legion, yeah, that's not it. Hmm. Hmm. You want more players? Play some big influencers, money, play the game, then the younglings will come. Really? Do you think a 16 year old is starting Age of Empires 2 because if their favorite Fortnite streamer did a paid promotion for two hours? I think that's questionable. For sure? Okay. Well, then, then I'm, I'm 
apparently having different views on this. I think paying someone like Grubby to play it would make sense, or Artosis. Like people that already have viewers that are in the RTS world, and you can open some more eyes for them. Yeah, only if it's free to play. I think that's a very relevant factor as well. Yeah. Yeah, for example, Ninja, I don't see that at all. People like Ninja Watchers, I would be really surprised. Mm. Grubby played AoE 2 and AoE 4 both. Yeah. We need to keep day 9 around. Yeah, that would be a great addition for sure. I don't think he had a great experience, though, streaming it. From what I've seen. That is pure speculation on my end, though. Because of all the backseat gaming. Right? He was so methodical trying to learn everything. And people just stopped by and basically told him what to do. I think if he had, like, chat off, his experience might have been better. What is this house world by Dragonstar? How do you build those houses to get vision on the full map? And then not have town watch. <laughs> like, he wants to see everything. But limits himself because he wants to save 70 of food. Hmm. To be honest, 1v1 seems to be better for tournaments. But 1v1 team game is so much fun, more fun. Yeah, 1v1 is more popular. And attracts more viewers. Uh, you might find team games more enjoyable because you are deeper into the game. For casual team games in Age of Empires are really confusing from what I heard. Yeah. It's easier to organize as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, are these cannon guys in there all the time? Well, he's landing them. He has a transporter around at the top here somewhere. And he's basically landing them, building them from here. And then sends them around the walls to raid a bit. They're really good under Town Center Fire, but really bad against Mangonauts. Uh, does AO2 have more general visibility in the gaming world than it does today? Ah, well, when it came out, it was one of the biggest things, right? It is big now because more eyes on esports, relatively speaking. Like, they have less percent of the overall pie. But I think since so many people are watching esports and, like, Twitch is big, YouTube is big, I don't think Age of Empires is missing eyes on it necessarily. Dreamhack Hanover in Melbourne, where technically is L tournaments for AO2, as Dreamhack is owned by ESL. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, we're getting into really deep discussions here. Love the activity, guys. Absolutely love it. I came out, I don't know if there was a big thing or how could you measure that, Lloyd. Well, how many people talked about it, right? Like, there were German gaming magazines. And when Age of Empires 2 came out, it was, like, the biggest thing. And, like, they put it on the cover, like... Don't think adding more organ guns is really the right choice for uh, Kingston here anymore. Like Dragonstar has so many mangonauts and can go into condos. I think Arbalest switch is the way to go. Hmm. So it was like really big. Obviously Microsoft supported as well. Didn't people start playing old as games like chess because Netflix series and Twitch tournaments? Maybe something like that would help. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously. If you if you get a Netflix documentary about Age of Empires, that would help the player growth, yeah. But how do you get there? That's a big question. Netflix AO2, let's go. Yeah. Maybe even Disney might be better than Netflix. I think Disney like might have more people that are actually interested in Age of Empires over Netflix. But Netflix wouldn't hurt, don't get me wrong. Um, maybe a, a Netflix series about MBL. Grind to survive. <laughs> yeah, I think that's... Grind to, grind to survive would actually be pretty solid. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Uh, but would eight units be allowed to kill each other in Disney in the question? Well, without blood, right? You're still looking at Mulan, for example. Is it that far off? Like, they, they have to disappear in the snow if they don't have any HP anymore. Yeah, but Netflix, it's easier to get. Uh, yeah, the higher, the older viewer base. Mm. Yeah, it's it's the question, like, would it be... What would be better for Age of Empires? A TV series that is... Like, real-life documentary about Age of Empires tournament slash Age of Empires scene... Which I think would be really boring compared to the other content that Netflix can produce. So I would advise against this. What I think would make sense and would increase brand recognition is something in that like Vikings Game of Thrones style. Age of Empires. Like medieval Joan uh, of Orleans um, style. Yeah, John Dark. I think that could could be Pog. And he will cast out Seth's life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how long till that one? Still now at 12 minutes, right? Something based on the old AoE intro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not bad, not bad. Hmm. Could just do the campaigns. Yeah, I have no idea about the campaigns, but maybe, yeah. Okay, we're getting into a stable game here. Castle under a lot of danger, though. Hmm. Compare Dota's free to play and true side documentaries to League Arcane, World Apart Invisibility. Okay. Don't really know what. what, what. Yeah, okay. I will trust you. Why are we going that many organ guns? Against condos and mangonels. The, we needed an Arbalest switch like yesterday. Ay, 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 ay. Hmm. How many archer ranges do we have? Three only. Ah, Kingston's castle age timing obviously was really long. Or castle age was really long. Hmm. Would love a, a needy documentary in my Age of Empires and poker career. Well, maybe ask Tyramis to do one. Hmm. Did he do Pavis? Yes, he did. Why aren't you participating in the qualifier? I want to give them a chance as well. Hmm. Main character, yeah, yeah. Love to see a documentary of my area 2 career. Well, I would take those eight seconds. Hmm. Can someone light me what Dota means? Dota is one of the biggest computer games there is right now. With a really big esports scene. My, surely a, a top five game. Chat, just accept top five. Don't go into discussion if it's one, two, three, or five. Calm down. It is a big eSport game. And most famous for like their yearly world championship where the prize pools are the biggest. Um, because they put some of their in-game sell sales, they put that into the prize pool. And it was the first ever tournament that had a million dollar prize pool for the first pl player. And it was pretty pork. And I think... The World Championship called the Invitational there like three years ago at like 46 million prize pool. Something in that ballpark. Hmm. Never heard of it yet? Yeah, no, no worries. Hmm. Dragonstar leading 2-0 in this one. Kingston with a fast castle. 
I think he got a bit unfortunate, but he simply built too many organ guns. S yeah, just too stuck on them, although we had so many manuals there for the defense. Hmm. So is it the doubt waiting room now? Okay, let me quickly check. Did we... When is Doubt playing? Didn't we have this here? Doubt is playing 18 UTC. That is in one hour. So yeah, this is the Doubt waiting room. And we'll continue with this set. Is Kingston an overrated player? Depends on how high you want to rate him. He got seed 24-25. Like those, this seed to seat 24 25 so you give him the world ranking of number 28 29 i think that's very reasonable yeah I really like the random bands. Not sure where I saw it first, but super glad to see it picked up on the grand stage too. Uh, first one to introduce was Last Master of Arena, I believe. Mm. Tenancy letter can't be compared. Just because someone gets wiped 3 0 doesn't mean he's not excellent. Who's the best African player? Maybe Timo. I would think so. No. Okay, okay. Then let's take a look at Langanati here. Hmm. What about making each player choose one sieve of their opponents? Well, we had that in tournaments before. Not going to happen here. Best American player? Um, probably Hera. Yeah, yeah. Where's Rio these days? In Brazil. Yeah, yeah. Isn't Hera Canadian? Yes, he is. But Canada is part of America. Nidia, have you ever played FIFA? Yes. Hmm. Hard is American too. Yeah. Hard's better than Daniel right now. Uh, Dogao is better than Daniel. So I don't think Daniel is even top 5 in America. Hmm. Nikov is better. No. Capot will be interesting. Give Danny Boy his title? Okay, Danny Boy. I will give you the title of 8th best American player that we have right now. Yeah. Yeah, I will, I will allow that. Other than Leary, maybe which top 10 player will be worst affected by random bans? I don't even know if Leary will be that affected. Ah, well, he might, he might, he might, yeah. 
other than him, I think Jordan will suffer a bit. Mm, I think Doubt and Tato will suffer. Yeah. Why would Leary be more affected? Well, Leary is kind of known to be a very heavy meta player. And someone that, for example, is not really keeping up to date with meta changes or like Sif changes and doesn't really play the weak Sifs too much, right? If I ask him what is the unique tech of Kels right now, he probably wouldn't know. I, w I wouldn't be wouldn't be too surprised, yeah. Mm. So uh, that's why that's why Livery was mentioned, yeah. Mm. America, adjective relating to the continent of America, a leading American industrial company, noun. A Native American grown on the continent of America. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not only the USA. How can someone be talented as Lyria and not use this full potential? Uh, it's his judgment. How much does he need to play? And where would he be in the world ranking, right? He didn't need to train a lot to be number two in the world. And now he doesn't need to train a lot and prepare a lot to be top four, top five in the world. If he would go really try hard... Where would he end? Maybe number two, maybe number three, maybe number one. It's a lot of question marks, but he knows very little investment, still top five. That's totally fine for him. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, we didn't really explain the map, right? You see a lot of water here in the center. Three deep fish, some shore fish around this. And we have very limited gold here. And we need to chop our way, way through to those golds here at the side. Also some deer around it. And as we can see, some harassment here with the scout early on. Mongols, Dragonstar has the better start. Kingston here with Byzantines can maybe win the Fire Galley War. Hmm. One lumber camp versus lum one lumber camp, someone we see a lot. Stone, very limited in the sense that it's not clumped up, but we don't have too little stone on this map, I believe. Let me see if I can get the double click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stone count is not bad at all. Just need to work a lot for it. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Georgians and Armenians on this map. Quite a bit as well. Can go for the hunt, can go for the wood, can go for the gold later as well. Maybe not enough early advantages though. And we see the water won by Kingston here. Can now go for some fish, but archers will be out. Let's see how he will be able to react to that. Goes for the barracks. Hmm... I prefer the approach from Dragonstar. More builds to shorefish, making some fish, but not going too hard on water. Uh, how much gold is there left? 491. So yeah, I think two fishing ships is already the absolute maximum you should go for now. Four on gold. What's the exact percentage chance the Dragonstar qualifies for NSC5? Okay, let's see. Hmm, let's assume he wins against Kingston. Hmm, calculator. Then, let's say that's the given right now, right? Then we have him play against Tato. I will say in a best of five against Tato, we have to go for 10%. Then he plays against Dogao. If he beats Tato, he is in a good, good spot here. So, let's say he is having... 60% with the momentum that's coming. And then he is playing against Nikov, which I don't think will be too easy for him. Plus a day break. And Nikov will be prepared. So I will rate Kingston down to a 30%er there. Uh, yeah, 30%. So it's 1.8%, Dave. Thanks for your question. Does Nikov have to play Bals? Um, Nikov has to play Bals slash Capot first and Mihai. Yeah, that's just my rough prediction. Yeah. Dave, by the way, I got asked a lot about 
some form of a giveaway of a blender or something. I actually have no idea what they're talking about, but a lot of people are asking for the meetup if that's going to happen there. And it's apparently a meme that I wasn't around for. Ain't Terra in this tourney? He is one of the invited four players for being semi-finalist of NSC4. Maybe, maybe you can enlighten me on what that meme is all about. You don't know anything about it either? Okay, okay. Then it won't happen, people. Hmm. Signed Blender would raise a lot of cash for NAC. Not sure if that's important for Dave, though. Although Dave could, did really good sellout the other day. Like, I got... I think two hoodies? Plus... An 800 euro donation or something? And three other donations saying, like, Dave told me to come by and support the tournament. So Dave with a casual, like... $1,200 sellout or something like that. It's really sweet. Yeah, maybe fifteen hundred dollar even. Okay, why do we have three archers here? One scout there. Now expanding a bit to the bottom. Okay. Oh, Dave. Can I add? I I know I shouldn't ask this question on stream, but well, we are already here, right? Um, can I add a donation goal of $3,000 to have you cast a full day with while wearing a wig? Or do we have to go higher there? Okay, you say sure. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, well then we will add that in there. Let's wait for a small moment when people disengage here. Spearman a bit out of position. Not really helping out too much, but Skirms did some reasonable damage against the archers. Now even armor for the scouts. Okay, and has fletching. Kingston obviously with Byzantines. Doesn't hate to go for mass Spearman, mass Skirm. Fields out micro tier right now though. Okay. It's a bit of a surprise to me. Oh, Spearman still not getting a lot of hits. Look at how much HP those scouts have. Pretty sick. And Spearman now down. Only one new one spawned here. Skirms are diving in, but Skirms are getting some kills against those archers. And both kind of players kind of resetting their armies. Quite intense here. And Spearman constantly spawning on the wrong side. Like the waypoint has to be here instead of here, I believe. From what it looks like. Okay, let's quickly add this. So, um, 3000 dollars can choose a t-shirt any caster has to wear for a day. Let's say a t-shirt slash wig. Right? So you can choose Dave's wig he has to wear for a day. Hmm. This map should be removed from the main event. Okay, tell me why. And here we go. Hmm. Wig for Dave only? Well, technically it's for anyone, right? But if people want to go for Dave, that makes lots of sense. Hmm. Where are you from in Germany, Italy? Uh, I grew up in Berlin and live in Hamburg. Uh... Only 6k for a t-shirt and a wig. Yeah. Hmm. We could make T90 wear a bald cap to match Dave. Ooh. Then we put Dave on a small pedestal. And then we don't know who is who. Hmm. Nearly, why did you leave Berlin? I became a professional poker player. And Hamburg has the best casino and the best infrastructure for professional poker playing. And two of my then future roommates were living in Hamburg. So it was a relatively easy choice. OK, 
Okay, this should be cleared up though pretty soon. Not a lot of damage output from this. Hmm. Hamburg is a really great city too. Yeah, but I didn't know that at that time. That's why I'm living here, but why I moved there um, was a different reason. Jolly place tonight? Yes. Not sure if we will cover that though. We will make a poll. Obviously, there are three matches happening at the same time. We might cover some sets live and some, yeah. Yeah, casinos. There's like two big casinos in Hamburg that have really good games. Yeah. Berlin is also a really ugly city. I disagree. I don't mind too much. But yeah, not my not my definition of beautiful, but I wouldn't go as far as just calling it ugly. Oh, that could be a big clear up. Oh, this is looking good for a dragon star. Although, archers are all dying. And soon it will be only cavalry. And oh, that's a lot of crossbows dying. Look at that crossbow upgrade. But down to two. And now the camels are being added. Hmm. Hmm. Berlin is so filthy, it might just be my least favorite city. Well, I grew up in eastern Germany, right? So... A filthy city is no no negative criteria for me. It's just standard. <laughs> yeah. What's my preferred style of architecture? Uh, I think the Malian one. Yeah. Parties are, are crazy in Berlin as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, those could be deleted, could build two traps. That's weird, he just moved them a bit and didn't really know what to do with them. Now full camel siege monk and pressuring this gold area. When are we running out of gold? 1300 here. I don't mind this push in the direction. Hmm. Hmm. Presto. Hmm. I think I've, I'm pretty sure I've been to every state in, in Germany, yeah. Hmm. Do you have any memory before the wall fell? Well, I was born in 88. The wall fell in 89. So, how many memories do you think I might have? Do you know who Tony G is? If so, who do you think? what do you think about him? Well, he's a great entertainer. I obviously played quite a bit with him. Small story about Tony G. Um, we are playing a $10,000 tournament in Roswadov. 10,000 euro tournament in Roswadov. And Tony G, um, he is um, a poker player from Lithuania and actually went into politics there. And is a pretty crazy dude. Not the most fundamentally like solid when it comes to knowledge about how to play poker, but has a nice table presence and can be can get people to play poorly against him that's probably his best skill and it was a two-day 10,000 euro tournament and he was chip leading after day one so he had the most chips out of all remaining players and because it was valentine's day he actually didn't go and played the second day he just had dinner with his girlfriend at that time so yeah, money is not such a big, such a big uh, concern for him. Yeah. Hmm. That's a smart man. Yeah, 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 yeah. He he has his priorities, um, very much figured out. Yeah. Thanks for sharing the story, pretty cool. Now that you see for Kingston here, that's some nice aggression. And Dragonstar got punished for being on the wood in the back. And he might be out of gold pretty soon. Look at that, 350 gold. And then all the pressure is still here. Hmm. Hmm. This is looking rough. Yeah, this is looking rough for Dragonstar here. Lots of aggression. How do you break this? Like technically, what is the unit good against Mong, Camel, Mangonel? Like long swords, pikemen, 
But you always run into ground attacks and it's Mongols. So do you really want to go for it? Oh, counter attack might be something. Okay, I don't mind this too much. But now lots of camels are coming over and they can deal with those crossbows. They don't even have a single arm upgrade and only one attack. So that will be a nice move here. Hmm. What about fast inventory on his cut for the gold? I would suggest that strategy in the GL bootcamp. Oh, conversion of the mangonel and doesn't even lose his own one. Oh, that is sick. And gets the kill. Oh, that was such a big swing. Crazy conversion. Nice micro here by Kingston. He's not dead yet. Yeah, that's a really valuable outpost. Especially with Byzantine bonus. Look at what he sees. And he forces the DG. That's a nice move by Kingston. Ooh. Ooh. What do you think about Martin Cabriel? Uh, not a ni per nice person. Played quite a bit with him, and it's always ugly to have him at your table. Um, yeah. I think he's really, really bad for poker. Mm. Mm. Yeah. He makes it less enjoyable. And, yeah. Don't like him. Kingston? Actually, resource collected pretty close together but just the army composition was really sweet there and Kingston also lower HP uh, lower um, lower gold investment early on right we had archer scout and therefore Dra dragon stars gold ran out quicker well we still have a tiny bit of gold left yeah real tiny bit 560 550 and that's why Kingston could still afford all those units. Skirm Spear might actually be a good option here. We've seen Magia play uh, full scouts to save on gold. I think we might see a lot of like thinking around that gold. The cast on the gold could have been good. Yeah, we have both players here with not even 200 um, stone. Yeah. Dragonstar messed up on the manganol trade. Well, how do you... Like, I don't think... The game, I think, was already over there, right? Opponent has three manganols plus two monks with redemption and sanctity. How how do you trade that off if you are Mongols? Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, that was at Red Bull... F no, it was not at Red Bull 4. I think it was at Red Bull 6, actually. Or, or we, we talk about something different, right? Viper against Kingston opening matches. Kingston's Knight's movements. That's kind of what made him very famous. A lot of people talked about him then. Yeah. Are Byzantines the most balanced civ of all time? It's crazy how... What balance changes did they have over the years? They had... I think Town Patrol added... What else? Ah, now now their projectiles do a bit more damage, right? But Byzantines feel like they never have, or like they have two, three good matchups and not a single bad matchup. Yeah, Drummond was added, yeah, but that's not for balance. Co uh, kind of like cost reduction. True, 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 yeah. Splash damage for bomber towers, yeah. Why are siege towers almost never seen? We have seen a game won today by siege towers. It's because you're not watching enough Age of Empires. That's the reason. Nino. Where have you been? What have you done three hours ago? When Winchester won a game with Siege Towers. Shame. Shame, shame, shame. Uh, African read beds. Game four will happen pretty soon. Uh, I will quickly take a piss. And be right back in two minutes.
People, stop what you're doing. I made a funny tweet. Um, oh, <laughs> good old times. Good old times. Hmm. Okay, what color are those ships? A professional poker player asking, trying to settle the discussion. Green? I don't see any green, right? I just said color five. Is, isn't that isn't that obvious? <laughs> That's the brilliancy of nearly on the toilet. Not at all. It doesn't matter. It, uh, you don't have to question the joke. You're probably the guy, I, I'm like preparing my joke. Okay, Hitler, a pregnant lady, and a black person walks into a saloon. And you're like, hmm, that's an, that's an unlikely scenario that those three people are all working on at the same time. And a saloon in this time of age, unlikely. Right, and that's why I'm not finishing the joke. Can we get a new joke now? Well, we can get the game four of Dragonstar versus Kingston here. Uh, and it will be African Reed Bad. Dragonstar playing Japanese, Kingston playing Dravidians. Nearly, and drag uh, nearly saying Dragonstar and Kingston are a joke. Tristan, you better behave. Taking stuff out of context? Do we really want to go that far? No. Oh. That makes me feel so good because I hate Koreans so much. Do we really want to do that, Tristan? Let's continue. It's my starting page on Chrome. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> even even the penguin enjoying it. Um. Hmm. Ay ay ay. It was a penguin? Really? Okay. Weird penguin noises. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Guys, give me one in the chat. If you think this clip was out of context and T90 is not really racist. If you think people deserve a second chance. Okay. <laughs> this is not where I wanted to go. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh. <laughs> okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, I tried to set up my next joke, but it, 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 we didn't have the chat reaction that I expected. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Oof, oof, oof. Uh. Mm. Okie dokie. Uh. And Kingston does not play a lot of uh, scouting here. Five on wood for him. And you tell me that was a penguin. By the way, no dog play by Dragonstar. So that's going to be man at arm aggression here, most likely. And meanwhile, he is taking all the shawfish in the center. Don't hate it. You said I was a pe it was a penguin. Ah, I meant dolphin. And I was so confused why so many people said penguin. Ah, I said penguin. Okay, 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 okay. That doesn't make sense. Haven't you watched Flipper? I watched Flipper a lot as a kid. No. Oh, some harassment here. But not really. Flipper. Flipper. Uh oh. Uh, militia. Eating some town center. Not too healthy. By the way, still no barracks from Kingston. I think that's a bit late. Needs to rush it with lots of villagers. A lumber camp! Okay, now the barracks. Thought better of it. Felt like a lumber camp here might have been a bit inefficient. And men at arms have to wall in this one. Oh! Full disaster. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And those villagers have to run. Uh, can he save this one? Should be able to. Maybe some blockage here. Oh, that's a nice move. Drinks are that solid. That's solid. Hmm. Oh, that's that's underwhelming. Now the archery range obviously gets a lot of extra wood. Uh now goes for the gold. Uh oh oh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. No, but they're splitting up. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, they're coming back together again. Ah! Ah! Oh! The perfect defense! Oh, that was good. <laughs> and now the men at arms are shut down. We can transition into skirmishes ourselves. I think Kingston is fine here. I think Kingston is fine. Oh, that was sweet. The poor penguins, yeah. Ooh, that was lovely. Okay, well now the game is kind of even, no? He has some more food. That villager is a bit on the late side, not even the greatest dog spot. That is a weird wall. What men at arms? Yeah, it's a tale of the past. But Kingston, what is his scouting still? Look at this! Like, what is he doing? Where is he? Oh, he's patrolling with some skirmishes here. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Go Dravidians? Yeah, oh, yeah, why not? Oh, Arch is at the right side. Mm. If you play Dravidians, your man at arms gotta do some damage. That's why the Dravidian player didn't even do man at arms. Mm. Oh, oh, uh. Okay, dives in deep, gets one villager here, maybe. Archers trading off. Three down, one villager killed. Okay, okay. Hmm. Saw you playing poker on Instagram while having a dump today. Really? I didn't think that video of me having a dump and playing poker at the same time made it to the internet. But okay. Hmm. Oh, you mean you were having a dump. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, glad you enjoyed it. Um... What was more shitty? In front of your or behind your body? Sorry. Ah, now I'm stretching it. I'm stretching it. Nearly calm down a bit. Hmm. So now men at arms are still being added. And the spearman. That's a bit weird. Skirms. 
Should be fighting this one off quite easily. Wall behind, but this one is still open. Yeah, one minute I'm alone won't do much. All this cleared up, or all this is walled up now. But still, not enough pressure in the center, okay. where Drengs are still happily taking away resources. And as you can see, collected resources so much better for the player with the center control. Hmm. So we go play poker more? No, 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 no. I will never go back to playing professional poker. Just didn't make me happy. Hmm. Question is who took the video of you in the first place? Uh, there are some videos of me playing poker on the internet. Quite some, actually. I made I made some some TV appear appearances. Stressful? Not stressful at all. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm not a guy that gets easily stressed and didn't really get stressed from poker. Uh, gambling as a nightmare sounds uh, uh, horrible. Yeah. Well, it it's, wasn't a nightmare. It's just like I think I can do better th stuff. Oh, this, the hold is used. Uh oh, four archers in the woodland now. How many villagers are dying? Instant reaction by Kingston, though. One villager low HP. Second one getting focused down, maybe. And this looks like one dead only. Now the gates. Love that those are stone gates. 160 HP already on those. Now the skirms to follow this one up. Pulls the villagers away. And losing only one villager feels kind of reasonable here. That's, he is pulling a lot of skirms though for those archer numbers. And now clear, cleans up the gates. Only loses 8 stone. And is using the market. So could only sell 100 stone here. Hmm. Yeah, my favorite clip. For everyone who doesn't know it, like... A very big tournament, like a very, very big, like life changing money. And we got it all in. And I was heavily ahead, and I said, could be great television. And the opponent won. And it was great television. Might be one of the most watched poker hands of all time. Certainly top five. And it was great television. Mm. That's the Barcelona hand, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely the most watched Nili video, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it has at least 30 million views, M most likely way more. Yeah, yeah. Most watched, really? I, I think, like, I've seen multiple, like, I've seen it twice with 5 million clicks, two videos. On YouTube, it has multiple million as well. Um, yeah. Like, more people might know me via, <laughs> via poker, yeah. Mm. Can we get a link for it? We can, we can watch it after, after the game here. Hmm, going for some fish traps now. What is that village up to? Hmm. Didn't know about Nilly and poker? Well, then you didn't know about Nilly. Five men at arms? Ooh, Dragonstar's playing long swords. Are we having double barrack? Long sword Gamsesant. And the forward siege workshop. Oh, this will be ugly for Kingston. Ooh, ooh. Hmm. Now I know where your poker face comes from. Oh, that comes from having no feelings. It, it just came in handy. Uh, for poker. Mm. Infantry play. Yeah, we have not seen it a lot. Mm. Yeah. Like Dave, actually the D uh, Nilly D uh, Dave Ari Nilly screenshot is me laughing. I get a word photo shoot and Dave asked me, smile, make a laugh, and I burst out laughing and Dave shot this for the screenshot. Hmm. Do you have any specific feelings towards AE zone? Uh, sadness. Okay, longsword not really getting in though. I 
think Kingston needs to switch into something. Only seven on gold, though. Only now on stone. Hmm. And why did you switch to AoE? Oh, I played AoE when it came out. I started playing poker in 2006. He's trying to add fish? He has 11 fishing ships? Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. He needs a siege workshop ASAP. Oh, he will be broken. Oh, that's ugly. Skirm defense here. Oh, that's broken as well. Closes the door behind though. Hmm. Can he hold this? Uh, long swords are really annoying. Jumps with the army. Spearman out. Okay, that's a nice move. Skirm's behind it. Village account or work account will be better for Kingston. I think a rewall here could make a lot of sense. I like the elephant archer edition. Hmm. Oh, that's some dead wills. Why can't I follow you? I don't know. Maybe refresh. Oh my god, that clip was insane actually. Now you spoiled it for everyone. I thought we all watched it together. No, I don't think I want to watch it again. Hmm. African Reapers is one of my favorite new maps. And we're not even using the big features here, right? Feature, go at the site. It's some aggression. And if that one runs out, we actually have neutral markets as well to go for. Elephant Archers, can they make the holds happen? We have 18 long swords. Holy moly. Look at how he's spreading his longswords all around. Some at the fish here at the bottom. Skirm's coming over for the defense. Raiding from the right side, still swarming through the center. Some coming from the left. Oh man, Kingston is getting completely overwhelmed. Not taking into crossbows, but skirmishes only. But they do one damage against longsword. Ooh, can you build castles on those gold patches? Yeah, here at the side. You can, you can, yeah. Hmm... Have you seen some actual trade here? No. Oh wait, maybe Viper's game? Viper's game, wasn't the 69 on this map? Can you attack neutral markets? No, you can't. Oh! Oh! Okay. Skirmisher takes the high ground on the market. Skirm on the roof. Sounds like a song from the idle villagers. <laughs> Skirm on the roof. <laughs> uh, Dave's favorite band, in case you didn't know. GG, well played. Good luck next. Dragon Star will advance to the round of 24, where he will face the winner of Tedos match. So, will be a toughie. Game obviously happened yesterday. Um, but we wanted to give you the coverage of it. And therefore the next set that will be Doubt against Beery will be live. Oh yeah, poker clip coming. So this is a tournament where you have to buy in for 50,000 euros. So uh, obviously this is lots of lots of money. I didn't buy in myself. I qualified um, via basically a live qualification tournament where everyone pays 5,000 euro and every 10th person gets a ticket. And I somehow made it to the final table of this one. And there are only eight players left. In this tournament, the first gets like 1.1 million. Eighth person gets at this point like 150,000, 125,000, 150,000, something in that ballpark. Right, yeah. And I have Pocket Kings. That's me in 2014. And the opponent has Ace, Deuce of Spades. Did he go out really early in the last final table too? 
He's a dog here. He went out in exactly eighth place, didn't he? He did indeed. Yeah, top comments on the video is all Nilly Fields, man. Stacks failed to go out. And, history and we have a full house. To repeat itself. Kings, full of eights. Flops him dead. Our win probability is 99.6 plus percent. Equity. And the pot is worth roughly $450,000. Oh, 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 boy. But he got an ace. This guy now has Could be great television. If it's another race, he... <laughs> Oh boy. Busquet now has two outs. If it's another race, <laughs> he doubles up. Oh, it is another wow. race! Less Those are my friends in the background. You see them cheering as well? It is another race! He doubles up. Look at that. Like how they're happy that nearly now becomes a millionaire. And gets everything, and you see them how happy they are. It is another race. Wow. Not that happy anymore. Less than one percent on the flop. Runner, runner to make a better full house and double up through Reichardt. So you're saying there's a chance? <laughs> what a ridiculous hand! <laughs> and I was not out Gets at that point. I lost two more lands in the final table. Gets called by Kings. Guy flops a full house. King 8-8. Eight, eight, and then ace on the turn. Ace on the river. Busquet survives. Ironically, he was wearing a free Palestine shirt uh, at that point. I mean, Busquet. after you see that, you're thinking, I'm heading for the exit. I'm out yeah. in eighth again in back-to-back -back super high rollers. And then, mm. boom. Yeah. I finished six in that's the tournament. That's going to draw some very wild comparisons, I think, from the audience coming back from for two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, which was like three hundred dollars, three hundred thousand dollars at the point. But I didn't have one hundred percent on myself. I even sold pieces for the qualifier. Did you have LASIK? Yeah, yeah. That was after this video. I had two uh, surgeries for my teeth and for my eyes. Could play poker against fans to raise money for NAC. And what if I lose it? NAC won't happen. Yeah. What a business, selling pieces of the risk. That's very, very common for poker players. <laughs> Why would you lose? It's a game of variance. It's not like guaranteed that I win, as you just saw. Right. Doubt versus Beery at. Let's just. Doubt versus Beery will start in 20 minutes. Could get your buy in fundraised by fans. Yeah, yeah. But like, uh, people actually contacted me in the past. Like, for my Las Vegas trip, I sold pieces to people that I know through Age of Empires. Oh yeah, professional poker day is obviously over. What's the link for NAC5 tickets? Exclamation mark meetup. Just in the title. Uh, how many tickets do we have left there? Let's take a look. If you want to watch NAC with all your friends and even other new friends that you can make. 450 people out there. You watch the semifinals and finals together. Flat rate of pizza, soft drinks and beer. And Saturday evening, the casters and players are joining the party as well. Go to the link I just posted and you uh, might have one of the best weekends of your life. NAC is a LAN event indeed. In what world does that poker clip have 50 million views? Well, it got like retweeted by poker on Facebook, for example. There I saw it with like 6 million views. Um, like one Halloween retweet. Um, so yeah, in, in this world. Plus there's like con um, compilations as well. 
There was like a Poker Stars compilation, like most unlucky hands of all time. And there this got like number two or number three. Um, yeah. Like I, I'm getting recognized on the street for this hand. When will the Sunday event end? At 18 local time, a best of nine is starting. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, no, what did I just do? Sixty nine tickets left. <laughs> 231 tickets sold. Uh, how often do you recognize? Well, not losing my, uh, leaving my home that much, but before pandemic, um, quite a bit. I think you had recognized like 50 times on the street. tickets you think could be sold for the event well we have 420 i think we will sell them yeah uh, maybe silly question but isn't it possible to have watch parties in other cities such as paris and barcelona sure some people are organizing them yeah mm. if account meeting my friends then i've been recognized hundreds of times in the streets your favorite joke i'm not allowed to tell that one on stream What are your thoughts about Elon Musk? Well, obviously lots of facts to have about him. Um, I think... He... Like, he would be a guy that wouldn't surprise me if he commits suicide with the, within the next 10 years. Because I think he really suffers how the world is. Like, I've seen him at Joe Rogan. I've even watched, rewatched one of the episodes. And I think he has a very special brain. And I think he's extremely smart. He's extremely creative. And I think that he truly believes something and is standing up for it, which I respect a lot. 
I don't think he is like the god that the fans, like some fans, are making him. And I don't think he's as altruistic as most people want to make him. Uh, one can hope he'll be gone in 10 years. I, I personally believe, like, I, I, I won't be, a f like, a fan of him. I would never, like, like obviously, he like, I would never meet him. He would never, like, like me. He's literally dumb. I think he's highly, highly intelligent. I'm, I'm very convinced that he is highly intelligent. Uh, like, he, he makes some questionable life choices, for sure. And he has a lot of stuff that I don't agree with. But I'm very sure he's highly intelligent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Would he be a good AOE player? He said that he was one of the best Quake players once. Which doesn't sound right. But I think he has like a lot of dedication. Like, he, he would have the skills for it. He would never do it, yeah. Um, uh, but I truly believe that he is making the world a better place overall. May maybe not with the best intentions. Like, not, not necessarily. And, like, he has weird ways about it. And, like, his moral compass is off compared to mine. But I think a lot of good is coming from his work. That's what I believe. Hmm. No offense, nearly, but that's going to be an offense. A better place by squashing unions? Okay. That, then um, I, I obviously, like, I, I, I have not read a biography. I have not, like, uh, my ba my knowledge is all based on Joe Rogan interviews and some clips. Do you know what he does? Very limited, apparently. If you... Are you strongly disagree? Okay, okay, okay. Uh. Hmm. Um, like, I, I think if you, like, believe that Elon Musk is the savior, you're delusional. I think if you... Yeah, like I I don't know enough about him. Like may, maybe enlighten me. What what's um uh what's so bad? Uh, when he started to make the U.S. a fascist country and start a nuclear war, what nuclear war did he start? I didn't even know the nuclear war. Apparently, I'm really underinformed. Hmm. Hmm. He's enabling and even funding Nazi Nazis and racists on Twitter. He's funding that? Like he's enabling it? That's what I would assume from him, yeah. But in like funding it? Do you have a source for that? Yeah. Mm. Squashing public transport initiatives for worse alternatives is not good in my opinion. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Yeah. I, I think he's do as I said, like he has obviously a lot of his own companies I in his mind, right? Um yeah, yeah. Like as I said, he's he's no saint. Clearly. Like, really love or really hate him? Yeah, I don't think that's how you have to view him. Hmm. Yeah. I think he's trying to solve big picture problems. That's what I view as, as well. Hmm. Talking about Musk, Rogan, etc. is a mistake. Too many people know them and every one of them have an opinion about them. Okay. Hmm. 
Eden is a clown? I don't think he works as a clown. I think he's too busy doing other things. He hardly ever founded a company. Didn't he found PayPal? Didn't he found... Sp I thought he founded like three, four companies that went bankrupt before he invented PayPal. Only clown is Joe Rogan? I don't think so. He's a clown. He's a comedian, yes. He's a talk show host and a sports commentator. Hmm. He bought into PayPal? Okay. Well, achieving more doesn't mean like you're a good person or like he achieved a lot, obviously. But is it good for the world? Does he have the right intentions? That's different things, right? Hmm. Founded companies with money from his dad. Well, yeah, so. Hmm. He's a son of South African segregators. So? Saved 160,000 tons of carbon this year. I've done more. Okay. Drogen is also high level Taekwondo. <laughs> That's not the, not the fact that I thought we would get here. Elon Musk less than a month ago endorsed the Jews are trying to replace white German man. He's very smart and trying to make the world better place. Good luck. Uh, I don't know what my nationality has to do with this at all. Uh, do, do you have a source for that? Mm. He read the post from an ex account accusing Jewish communities of pursuing hatred against whites that they claim to want people to stop using against them. Coming to the disturbing realization that those hordes of minorities that support flooding their country don't exactly like them too much. Count added, you have said the actual truth, Mr. Musk replied to the post. Hatred against whites that they claim to want people to stop using against them. Okay, I think this is too complex for me. Hmm. New York Times. Well, I think it makes more sense. Um, just send me it as a Discord message, and I think then I can read up and give it the proper time. Yeah. Can highly recommend to read his biography. Not enough interest, no. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I will give you two more minutes of. Um, Elon Musk talk and then we will we will end it here mm. Uh. Mm. Mm. just bought a watch party tickets you all there see ya mm. Mm. what about Mark Zuckerberg no way less about him um, yeah, yeah. Is Needy Biography coming? Probably never. Do we have the draft for the Lord? I don't think that they started yet. Mm. Mm. I think there's two different discussions. Elon's the businessman and Elon the political pundit. Per president in America politics is generally harmful. In business, he's generally been a fine businessman, but he's had a lot of advantages given to him in life, so it was much easier for him to succeed. Okay. Uh, w send me a link on why he's so harmful for politics. I would really like to know. Hmm. Hmm. It's 
possible to buy only a ticket for the Sunday in Berlin? Not right now. Do you see chances of Beery taking a game from doubt? Chances. Yeah. Uh, we will start, like the draft should start in 2-3 minutes. The schedule is at the side here. Yeah. Mm. I'm in the USA and he puts his opinion in a lot of here. Well, that's the best thing about the internet, that everyone can have an opinion. And the worst thing about the internet is that everyone can have an opinion. So I don't think this makes him a horrible person only because he has an opinion about a lot. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, do all the NAC games happen at your place except the qualifiers? The whole main event is played in an apartment, yeah. Mm. It sounds like Leary after Ego 4 when he plays drinking in a few beers. Okay, last 10 seconds of typing something about Elon Musk. After that, we will let it go. Mm. Have a hard time, you would not like him if you read more about him. Nothing more to say. Yeah, but I don't have uh, enough free time to read or up on Elon Musk. I think I, like, my personal growth could be made somewhere else. Okay, let's move away from this. Nearly have any comments on Gaza situation? Obviously, let's go. So, I think how this could easily be solved. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay, what do we have? Another person. New York Times article. Nice. Okay, okay. I will read up on it. Uh, yeah. I think I once saw like an examine where where like a school kid like uh, my assumption like 11th grade was asked like what do you think about this world like how could this political thing be solved and the answer was simply like if like top politicians can't figure it out like why is this a question in my test yeah so like um me without a political degree and me not being there talking about stuff from sources that are influenced from both sides oh man i think having a strong opinion there is also pretty dangerous hmm. support options for nsc again sure exclamation marks support uh, we have more than this by the way i just did an update today yet Hmm. How could this complex political uh, issue be solved when we won Han War? Yeah. Has Doubt played already? Is it past seven, uh, 18 GMT already? What is your opinion about electricity? Good invention. Hmm. It's past 18 GMT? Not for doubt. Hmm. Let's talk about the American uh, the, the American medical system next. Oh, baby. Hmm. Hmm. Doubt has his own time zone. Nearly, what is your opinion about vanilla and chocolate? I'm actually a vanilla guy. I also prefer white chocolate over dark chocolate. 
Is running still top 20? I don't think top 20. Like number 30 maybe. How many tickets are left? Do, 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 do. Uh, it was 69 uh, 10 minutes ago. And now it's 66 tickets left for the meetup. Is white chocolate even chocolate? Yes. When to travel to the moon, given the opportunity to do what? A hot dogs in buns, a sandwich? Should that be pasta? I think it's a ravioli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty sure. Is weed legal in Germany yet? I think it always has been. Like, you're allowed to have weed in the amount that you are willing to consume. Like, the consumption is fine, and you can own, like, let's say, two and a half gram. And you're not allowed to buy it, though. You're not allowed to give it to someone else. You're not allowed to sell it. So, like, the acquisition is the illegal part, kind of. But consuming it is fine. Owning is not allowed. Owning is allowed in the amount that you can consume for yourself. At least where I live in the state. Like, it's totally fine to own two grams of gra uh, grass. But how did you get it? You're not allowed to grow it yourself. You're not allowed to buy it. So if you find it, it's fine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we're just falling from the sky. Yeah. Hmm. Beery is having internet issues. The match might not happen. Ooh. What's the size of the t-shirt and hoodie? You can choose it yourself. No, it's not allowed. It will just not go to the court if you have below a certain amount. The police will still t take it away from you, though. How sure are you about that? Hmm. 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 Why not cheaper hoodie with shining? The hoodie is really cheap. Isn't it like like thirty dollars? Yeah. I think we might make it fair trade. And it's maybe like forty dollars. Yeah. Roman? Sounds like AU2. That's an easy choice. That's cheap for you to get a full hoodie? Yeah, yeah. Would it be possible to say maybe 50 NEC 5 hoodies without signature for maybe like 60 years so people can still support a little and have souvenir? Well, my my, I would generate like 10 euros from that, right? 60 euros, PayPal fees, we are at 55 euros. It costs 40 euros and we ship it for 5 to 10 euros. So I make 5 to 10 euros of profit. Doesn't sound that exciting to me. Make it 80. And I still have all the work of like getting them, printing, shipping for 20 euros per. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not my cup of tea. Mm. Mm. Uh. Okay, so apparently it is 
illegal, but it's not getting persecuted. Yeah. Hmm. It's being regulated within a year though, right? It's being discussed, I don't really know. Um... Yeah, so we now have another hour. It seems like Dalvin's beer is not happening. Um, maybe NAC5 emote so people can contribute like $20 and you don't have an extra cost. For many people, $1 is a good amount of money. I don't know what... what, what what do you mean? Back to Elon, yeah. Mm. Well, I got some tickets. Eating pizza with Nilly will be awesome. See you there. Um, yeah. Hmm. Will be delayed. Information right now is Biri is having internet issues unfortunately the match won't happen whatever that means Okay, 235 tickets sold now. I can update. Uh, Meetup info. No doubt game today. Um, I don't know yet. I'm waiting for info. It's Batman. Mm. I mean, adding another item to your list, which is a Twitch emote, and only people contributing to NEC would get it. What kind of emote, and how would I regulate it? And only some people are getting it. Wouldn't know how that works. Okay, casting the second set with T90 on Sunday. Interest in moving to the United States and becoming a Texan? No. I think Texas would be one of these states. Like, I, growing up in Europe, like, Carrying weapons is really unnatural to me. I, I would not feel at ease being in Texas. Um, we are mem cast together in the main event for sure. Yeah. Uh, you don't like US or Texas? I think Texas is that might be the worst for me. Um, I had good times in the US. Yeah. Mm. Your flat rate? Well, I pay a flat rate to the hotel, right? So if someone goes broke, it's them. Would there be a QA where you can dono questions? But doesn't Switzerland allow carry weapon weapon carry? No, everyone owns one, but everyone has it like in a locked locker, basically. But everyone has one at home. Yeah. Uh Every state has weapons everywhere, not just Texas, honestly. Yeah, yeah, might be the case. Like, I, I, I just feel uneasy around them. And what happened the most there, depending on my stereotypes. Yeah. 
like do do what you want, right? If that's that's part of your identity, like Germany drives cars fast for their freedom. Hmm. Hmm. So less than one percent of people carry guns in Texas. If it's half a percent, it's every two hundred people. So if I'm in a restaurant with 200 people, it's one person at average. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like otherwise, I wouldn't wouldn't mind Texas too much. Yeah. Poker games are good there. <laughs> When you think of Texas, is there like a movie show you think of and say that's what Texas is like? Well, it's only stereotypes, right? I've never been there before. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Crazy that many guns in Texas and it's such a low murder rate state. My spirit can now conceal and carry with no permit. Super great idea. Texas too hot though. Hmm. Have bunch of firearms. I hunt a lot. Never harmed anyone. Most gun owners never harm anyone. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I truly believe that. Obviously, obviously. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so will likely be a reschedule. Hmm. Why would you need a gun if you don't hunt? That's very easy for you to find out. You you can come to, to the conclusion as well. Any pl plans to have a replay system implemented for an AC? What kind of a replay you mean? Instant replay, sports style? Uh, yeah, we have a dedicated person that only is there for this job. That's basically very knowledgeable Age of Empires person. And they will watch the game and basically tell production, okay, this was a great highlight scene. Show it from the overall POV that we just saw for eight seconds and then show the POV of player one for 15 seconds. Because I know now there will be one minute of booming. And they will basically direct the replays for the production crew. And... We had that in some form at NAC4, but it was bad because production didn't have the Age of Empires understanding. It's not vodka, no. No, vodka is observing. Yeah. Uh, this sounds awesome. I think it could be the greatest edition we we upgrade from 4 to 5. Uh, I don't know about Doubtberry match. Uh, like, it's not happening now. It might happen later today. I've automated replay maker that might help a bit. I, I I think like you can you can send me your info, but I think like their equipment is really solid. Like I have basically four people working in production now. Yeah. Uh, I'm planning on doing another apartment cup. Yes. Next one is coming in January. We are looking at qualifiers today. Are you allowed to sign up to the qualifiers yourself? Yeah, but I, I won't. I'm happy to be in Berlin and watch NAC. Thanks, Lili. See you there. Nice, nice, nice. Reading this right, that one or more tickets will be sold on Saturday. That's correct, yeah. But we still have tickets in the first wave. Yeah. Who's Jordan playing? Timo? Yeah. Will there be the meme guy again? That's the same person, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Has anyone yet received a replay by the hotel? Uh, nah, I don't know. No. Fire injury death rate is 15.8 per Texan per year, I would assume, right? How many zeros are this? Per 100,000. Homicide 8.2. Yeah, yeah, it's very few, but compared to Germany, it's a lot. <laughs> 
What, what about the mentioned Wednesday tickets? What are Wednesday tickets? Hmm. The watch party is directly at the hotel? Yeah, in their conference room. On the site? Do you have a link? Or a screenshot? I don't know what, what Wednesday tickets there are. Wednesday. That's when the sale is starting. Yeah. <laughs> That was yesterday. Where's the other reschedule? Uh, as you can see in the Discord information, Beery has internet problems. How many matches will each game be? Finals will be best of 11, best of 9. Semi-finals, best of 9. Playoffs, best of 7. It will be the same system as NAC4. It is 5 days of Swiss stage. As you can see, five days of Swiss stage. All the information, as always, on Wikipedia. And then we have a bracket here. Ninth and tenths are out. First and second are seeded into semifinals. Third, fourth into the quarterfinals, kind of round of six. And fifth to eighth are fighting it out in the first round. Best of seven, best of seven, best of nine, best of nine. Is Vodka's AU competitive career over since your observer is not like the Microsoft employee deal? Or is it not? No, no, no. He is not employed by Microsoft. He is employed by the tournament organizers. So you push a button, whatever something interesting happens, and arrange it into a highlight reel. You can also run it with a single button press at the end of the match. That's, that's their job. <laughs> I, I'm paying people good money. They will figure it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they have, like, they are professional TV crew, right? Um, they will have proper equipment, yeah. Hmm. How did Vodka end up being the go-to observer guy? I think he did one random show match once, then I approached him, and I referred him to EGC TV. And there was no one, there was no demand for someone better. Who gets to play in the second qualifier? Everyone who's not in the main event and who signs up. But on the top 48 out of those. Who is the one sponsored by? You people. As you can see here. And Microsoft. Does Mapu do AOE anymore? He does. He's just too expensive. What, what guy was awesome in NAC4? Yes, he was. Love to see a walkthrough of the setup. There was a small one last year, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very similar. Just one more person now. I get back to work. I'm still trying to s trying for sponsors. Two of the 40 client and two are supposed to get back to me this week. I'm trying it. I'll lurk more later. Have a great one, Nilly. Thank you. See ya. Are you biased and want all the GL players to make it to NAC or are you taking a neutral position? I like the people that provide best games and are most entertaining with the camera to be there. Uh, doesn't matter what team they belong to. All the stuff you do. I work in broadcast doing audio in the US. Ever think about trying it to add a telestrator type feature like we see in American football? Think it would be helpful to highlight action on the screen. Just a thought. I don't know what that is. A telestrator. Well, how expensive is that? Is that? I'm Colombian. I understand 90% that you language, but I love your work. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a nation goal? Uh, yeah, it's at 76k right now. Mm -hmm. 
What less active or retired pros do you wish were still playing? Uh, Clan Bander? <laughs> Russo? Shine? Riot? Do you know how much Microsoft will sponsor? 100k. The place where you guys are going to play is your actual apartment. For NSC 1 till 3, that was the case. For NSC 4 and 5, no. Who was Dreams? Um, Finnish good Age of Empires player who was shortly part of Tyrant, I believe. Yeah. Hmm. Will Vodka be with there again? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, but we have the, the replay guy can be the backup observer as well. Hmm. What is the process for getting Microsoft to sponsor? Is there an inside guy because it's their game? Uh, I obviously have contact. There's basically one person that was my job in the past. Tournament coordinator. That coordinates one when which tournament is happening and how much money they are getting and basically you apply there they obviously know the big guys already and then you get funding through them yeah sleet sponsoring again i sent seven emails and no response sadly uh the tyrant sponsor is not actively involved in the age of first community anymore if the de desk ball is coming back it won't be on a lead, lead desk <laughs> i don't know what more i could have done it, it's really sad you guys have to tax on the money being raised that's actually a lot of lot of discussion i have to do with my tax person right obviously all the money that i profit i'm taxing but here we found a way that it's basically me just like i'm never owning this money i'm just handing it over it's it's very complex and basically the money here is not towards me it's towards the tournament right so i'm moving it forward but obviously like most of the other stuff i'm taxing as well just make it non-profit easy it's not that easy <laughs> yeah Have you reached out to any beer sponsor? Would be in conflict with Microsoft. Is the tournament an NGO? No. Are there real-life minigames planned? Let's see. Bounce, not in that form. We can do Connect 4 again. So winnings get taxed? Obviously, yeah. You're acting as a trustee for the tournament, so money that comes to you will be passed through by basis, basically. Why not have a donation for asking a player to specific civ in their draft? How much would you donate for that? What do you think is a fair price? I think that would horribly influence with the tournament, and I think it would be at least $10,000 for me. It's all in USD, yeah, as shown on the screen. Microsoft will be a sponsor? Yes. You think there will be a Red Bull Wololo again and would you cast if they would ask you? No official information on that. Also conflict with Bench etc. would have to be first pick. But there's no entry fees it could get new players and much money could pull in the game because there's too little variance in the game right if you know vipers in the tournament and you pay an entry fee it's basically burning money um, like you you're never getting into the price pool like it's so little variance we know who is coming out at the end and then the tournaments would have way fewer players let's say a tournament is paying top four if you're the 10th best player in the world, 
you probably shouldn't even pay the entry fee. Yeah. I appreciate you and all the other tournament organizers keeping betting companies, gambling sponsors out of AOE tournaments. Uh, well, we had betting and gambling sp uh, companies, right? It's Microsoft policy. If you want to take money from Microsoft, you can't have those. Please do we know anything about the set? Yes, as mentioned six times. Too many spots to play for fans could be an idea, but in the end, will people pay for that? And it will sadly be poor games. What work? Too many spots to play fans could be an idea? Yeah, those would be like completely dead games. Obviously, if you want to play in the tournament and want to give 50k, I would add you as an 11th player. Yeah, and we would make something happen. Yeah, but you would always have the first match of the day. $1,000 before one game is played. Play three wolves on the map wherever you want. I think Microsoft should do more to promote the streaming competitive scene. Yes. By that I mean advertise in-game client or something like this. Yes. Hey, Otilzy. Have you ever considered hosting those tournaments in Euro? Or is it not possible for Microsoft side? It saves a lot of money, no? Why does it save a lot of money? $100,000 is less than 100,000 euro, so it's way cheaper for me. No. Dollar is way better. You could bring back one former castle of NAC, would you bring back? Killer. Killer B. Do you have anything big planned for the end of the tournament? Announce my goodbye week. And mm. review mm. tournaments doesn't make sense when I see, but I think there is a place for it. People tried it in the past, it was not picked up well. Is there something you're most looking forward to with NAC? Breaking 50k viewers. Hmm. 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 Is there an amount of donations you would continue your AOE career? Yeah. Well, you get the money via PayPal, they have a really bad exchange rate. Well, my account is in dollar and euro. And I get the Microsoft money on my bank account. Don't know if you have already been asked this, but specific reason behind having MEM this time versus not the last time? Mm. Next question. If you have entry fees, it should only be for fans to play. The real players should still be free to have. Where do you draw the line? Am I a real player in Warlords or am I a fan? Hmm. 15 total, your channel total. Yeah. Uh, old said 44k. I really wish NSC5 to be what you wish to be. You absolutely deserve it. We can already see the quality of the organization. All the best. Thank you. Mm. 
med Pernille Cast og Electric. I think this will be the opening cast for Sunday of the main event. I think Gamers Aid in Saudi Arabia would ever include AU2. Why not? Your numbers are good. I think it would make sense for them in some ways. Mm. Neil plus Dave, always my favorite. Going to happen for sure in the first playoff day or semifinals. I wish there were like a rage forest land where people are on cam and expect to rage a bit when they lose. Okay. Dave is a great caster. Hey Nelly, do you think you could reach the 100,000 follower milestone in NSC5 before you retire? If I make it follower chat only, yes, but I have don't care about it at all. It's no milestone for me at, at all. It's just a random number. Can you recall your biggest tilt caused by AOE? Oh, that's a good question. Mm, let me think about it. Biggest tilt caused by AOE. I'm not really the tilting guy. Sadness, obviously, but not really tilt, no. Hmm. No, no, can't, can't remember one. Uh, ask me again in some days, maybe I have an answer for you. Not not impossible that I'll, I will f think of something though. No. Not impossible. Uh, the schedule for today. One viper to cast a Norwegian and Terra to translate us. Okay. Saw the poker I had before, that would be bigger than any of your thingy, right? I didn't tilt at all. What result, even the single match, are you most proud on, on your AOE career? What clan league? That's, that's a great question. WCL4. We are deep. In what territory are we? 2005 territory. $20,000 tournament. The biggest tournament of the year. A team of friends. Good friends in real life. Tsunami. Tsunili, Shine, Cortez, and Tsuji facing the biggest in the world, the best in the world of all times KCAP, Coven, Grant, Halen, Yancy. Buying in some new talents like Yori, the best Yama Jitpa, Elklan, the Dream Team. Formed around Chris, buying in some DMs as well there. CSI, a pay team built around Doubt together with Deke and Rami. And Tsunami beating CSI 3-2 in a great, great semi-final in the winner brackets. My biggest success against, I think, I think Geek, Doubt and Rami played this one. Yeah. Hmm. What happened to Grant? Just stopped playing? Well, he won another WCG, right? And he still played some years ago as well. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Really, what do you think about World War II? Great question. Hmm. Pathing tilting? A little bit, yeah. How would you rank casters? Oh, this is not a great question for me. How good was Grant back in the day, like compared to player now? Well, he was the best in the world at one point. Nowadays, it is tough to compare, right? Because it is a different game and it plays differently. Let's say with what he could do back then, he would lose against an 1100 now. 
but it is way easier for an 1100 to play right now. By the way, does Deathmatch still exist? I played a Deathmatch tournament yesterday on stream against Andy. Or two days ago. Two days ago. I was in the quarterfinals there. Will you have donation goal in the main event? Yeah. I, I, I still hoping to not lose 40,000, right? When did get crawling become so prominent? Wubli user patch second edition or something like that. So 2016-ish? Obviously, like with 6,000 ping, you can't quick wall. Hmm. Where's Desmond? If I played every again, I would be able to find DM games. Yeah, yeah, there's a DM Discord. That you probably want to join. They can organize game. Did your poker skills translate to AOE? Some of them. Yeah. Like not being result oriented. Able to grind. But I was like. Good in Age of Empires. Then good in poker. And then switched back to Age of Empires a bit. Right. Were you involved with any of the planning of any of the Red Bull events? I was the main organizer. And the main advisor on all of the events. After NAC3. Basically Red Bull contacted me. And I was responsible for. Tournament format, I gave them recommendations on casters. I basically am responsible that it's Empire Wars. Yeah. Who do you think or is the best gamer since the beginning of time? Uh, I would recommend you to go to YouTube and put in GOAT nearly AOE2. And there I have the list of the greatest players of all time. And I say like why people are good, what's what their achievements. That he didn't win. People uh, got sad. And that edge of so basically ignore the left row. That is my ranking. They. Uh, but the other like this one to this one is like the ranking from like different people over time. But this is also three years ago. I will make a new list probably in April. And then people that are active will get higher. So like Doubt Viper, Chris, Leary, Jordan, Tato, Hera, MBL, Capwatch will all increase in that ranking. Yeah. Did you see the video from Terrorist? I didn't see the final version, but I gave feedback on an earlier version. So I know the one from like two weeks ago. Yeah, obviously like others like um, Nikov, the Max, like everyone who's still active will increase in that world ranking. Yeah. Do you think the game in general benefits from better pings and good tier micro? Yeah, it makes it more interesting. More highlight scenes for sure. Before it was more strategic. Now it's more highlight scenes. If you could go anywhere on vacation after NSC, where would you go? I'm going to the Philippines for three weeks. Yeah, crazy how I had Dogao as number 14 and he wasn't even in the top 50. What? Am I confused? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, we aren't going Borokai now. It's a bit too touristy. Going with my girlfriend. Um, it's more like deserted beach house. True mentioned? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jitba mentioned as well. Your ranking is the second column? Oh, that's my ranking? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so I forgot to go. That makes more sense. Okay, okay. Bender's in there twice. Well, this is my ranking, right? That makes more sense then, yeah. And this one is the the ranking. Uh, okay, okay. Well, then this is the better. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's correct, yeah. Hmm. KCAP? He is number nine. Why is Hera lower than Leary? Fewer years active and le way less success. Yeah. 
What did I give him? I gave her a 13 or 11? I gave her a 13, yeah. Yeah, like, he, he, Hera was never top 5 at that moment, right? Oh, no, that was after NAC 3, right? He had a top 2 performance, so he was freshly gotten top 4. Hmm. Nice, Milky. Hmm. It's just not even top 50 greatest players of all time. Bit of a surprise to me as well. But never was a top 8 player, really, right? No. Hmm. Hmm. There's anyone you would add to that list with recent years? MBL feels low. MBL, 19th best of all time. Well, he was never top two in the world, right? Makes it tricky. Let's see, what are his achievements? Like this are his achievements at that time. It has never won a tournament, right? It's really tough to be really high in the all-time greatest list if you have never won a tournament. Like he has won a team game tournament and one show match. Zito hmm. is probably the best French player ever. Probably, yeah. Hmm. So how, how high can you set him? Remember, this is two years ago. Two and three. Okay, Jordan gets admin win. Timo can't play. So we have to decide between Andy El Nero or Ganji Miguel. I'm in favor of Ganji Miguel. Sorry, a top five now. Not on the GOAT list, but he's obviously the best right now, right? So he will make a reasonable jump. Uh, Hera. Mm, might be number five? Maybe number six. I think it's Viper Doubt, Chris. Yo slash Leary. And then Hera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Hera is number six on my goat list right now. Hmm. MFO, Mr. Fix It Online. That's where we learned Age of Empires at the, in the beginning. Yeah. Hey, I thought they scattered at the same time. Now I'm confused. Do you want a poll? Uh, let's do a poll in 10 minutes. Did you learn a lot about event planning, organizing from the Red Bull event? No. Stout top two, he hasn't won in a while. Maybe number four or five? He can't go down unless he gets overtaken, but by whom? Not by Chris, not by Yo. He since then has won a Red Bull, has performed well in tournaments. Like, yeah, that was, that was clear number two in my opinion. Halen, Coven, Grant not more playing. Halen played some years ago. Yeah. Hmm. Is fight not in your all-time top twenty list? What's his other nicknames? Fight isn't fight, Chris. Oh, no. Uh, no, he's not in my... No. He's not. Why are there no big Korean players in 2 now? What's happened? Military. And a dead game. For many, many years. 2009, the total price pool was like less than 10k. Why would someone stick there? Um, 
prossimo couldn't make it admin went for job Is there anyone in the top 50 list that only started playing after the E? Not really, no, 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 no. By the Svanjita? Yeah, he won't make it in the top 50. Hmm. Disappointing when these players don't make the games. Stuff can happen. Internet is out of your control. If you are sick, you can't play. Where's Gabi? In Brazil. Magugu? Well, he's not top 50. Like, he's top 50 right now, but not top 50 goat. Uh, Cap, I think, lives in... Dubai? Uh, I don't know about the rest. Who's Gabi? The best female player. I don't know, Kaklash. As a 1200 player, how do I get better by training on the ladder as I somehow always face a wall of very good players able to push me down again under 1200? Watch the recorded game. What do they make better than you? Understand it. Like, what? Why am I losing to them? What was the key point why I lost the game? If it was something good by them, do it in the next game. If it was something of a mistake by you, don't do that mistake again. And you will win them next time. What about Loiser? Was he top 20? Um, he's not in the top 50 list. He was obviously top 15 in the world at some point, but not for a long time. Yeah. Why well, Stout said rescheduled? Why Jordan get Edmund win? Both of their opponents couldn't make it. I don't know. Edmund has information behind the scenes there. Maybe Timo simply said, I can't make it the next two days because he's so sick. What is the best way to practice build orders for a very basic player to get better? Is there a custom scenario trainer? Play against the AI. Do two games of a build order every day before you practice your game. It will take 15 minutes. Just the first eight minutes of your build order, right? Till you have your first three scouts or you have your first six archers or whatever write down the time put on a list and see if you improve hmm. yeah Fletcher might be Norwegian not American yeah yeah not the US American are players ever penalized for admin win uh, yeah I've not invited them to to other things and like if they just don't show up and don't communicate for example, a really, really good player. <laughs> How is he called? Oh, I'm forgetting his name. But a top eight deathmatch player. Basically was really bad at scheduling and we did not invite him back for future tournaments. Was there qualification here? Uh, group stage probably. Tempo, tempo, yeah. Where is he? Tempo here. Uh, he won 3 1, but it was painful for him to schedule with them. I think he might have had an admin loss here. Tempo. Yeah. Oh no, he won against Grimm by admin loss and had a 3-0 against 2. That might have been an admin loss against him. Uh, and in DM World Cup 2, that was the one I organized mainly. 
he... Yeah, it's Mr. Tempo, yeah. He was not even invited yet, again, yeah. 4-1 against Clemenzo. Ay, ay, ay. A lot of times when there were... Um, mirror matches. And that match was fair. Good old days. Look at that. $2,000 price pool spawned up by Microsoft. The good old days. Hmm. Did you ever beat Hera and Leda? Yeah, yeah, multiple times. Uh, now that I've been playing for quite some time, right? Don't think that Hera right now was as good over the last five years. Hmm. Good old days. Does Roomstock still play? Did he play? He played the, the last team game tournaments, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I saw him queuing some days ago. Yeah. Hera was top 100 four years ago. So was I. <laughs> okay, uh, if an admin could make a poll, what are we covering? Freaking Andy, Elno Nero or Ganji Miguel? I personally believe that... Ganji Miguel will be the more interesting set. But if you're a heavy Andy fan, I can see why you're voting for him as well. Should start in four minutes. It's not unlikely that we will cover the wrecks of the match afterwards anyways. Yeah. Okay, it seems like we're lacking some mods here. I will make the pull myself. Uh, what are we covering? Uh, Ganji versus Miguel? Or... Freak? Andy versus El No Nero? Let's go! Huh? The polls are reactive! Okay. This is more one-sided than I thought. Uh, who has the better seat here? Is it Ganji? It's a bit surprising to me. Hmm. PG Lance was such a great guy. Would be interesting to see him play with today today's game. That was the Elklan Bender guy. And yeah, he was considered to be the best team game player in the world. Best deathmatch player in the world. Not that great in 1v1s, but maybe top 15, top 20 in 1v1s as well, yeah. Okay, and we have the draft starting. I will set everything up. Mm, map draft. And sift draft. So we had some random bands of the civilizations, as you know. Now we have one ban of let's see oh miguel dragon star uh let's see if that is ganji yeah that is correct i need to fix this at some point but that's something for offline nearly hmm. you always put higher rank play on the top yes higher rank play on the top and here on the left and now we have home maps and now we go two bands each, and then another home map. Fortified clearing for Ganji. Arena taken away, so makes lots of sense. Which is our band? You can see them at the top. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
you guys are already casting Miguel Ganji, well, then you can enjoy this one and I will cover the Andy Rex after it. Sorry, I would think lots of people ask this, but will you cast any qualifier with the co-caster? I will cast with co-casters on Sunday. Yes. Okay, now Miguel with the choice. Could be something like Dry Graveyards. No, that's banned already. Something very aggressive could make sense for him. There's more typo in the, the title. Migek. Golden Lakes, okay. And Beach Fight for Ganji. Okay, 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 okay. We just got another donation of five dollars. Fistos, thank you, Aria. Would you ever want to have tournament show matches played on older versions patches for AOE? Wouldn't really know why. Is this the first time random Sith bands are used? Think never seen it before. There was one tournament that used it before. And I liked it. I didn't like the tournament, but I liked the random Sith bands. Yeah. But it's the first one for a mixed map tournament. And people advised me against it. So far, viewer feedback has been good. But we are really fresh in it as well. And put some new sugar water. No, I have enough. Mm. Theoretically, I like it. I will take it. Now we have lots of bands. And then we get to game one. How many liters of soda do you drink a week? Uh, it depends on what I do the, in the week. Um, if I'm active, if I'm outside, if I'm eating in restaurants, none till a liter. If I'm at home and have to be energetic and quick for 11 hours every day, 10 liters, like a bottle a day, not unlikely. Yeah. What a show match with the sieves at their most OP stage be fun like for top humans after D or old students more range to see for 10 historians yes for people that weren't there in the old days no you go with your guts even if it's against mainstream opinions I love that about your approach thank you it's not the guts so much right I, I am actively thinking it through like my thought process is I'm reading mass amount of feedback. Players have to fill out feedback files after the event. I will read every single YouTube comment people ever make. I will watch, I will read every AOE zone post, every Reddit post about my tournaments, and I will put down notes after the tournament. And one of the main thing was group stage matches felt repetitive. And then I'm thinking towards that, right? And what can we do? What can we change? That's why we have more maps, we have massive amount of bands, we have randomly generated stuff. And so it's not only going with my gut, it's mainly like trusting my brain. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah. But is random Sif band all the way to finals or only group stage? I think also playoffs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doubtless Beery is rescheduled. Maybe I can add... Uh, which one was this text? Uh, <laughs> why why is this not smaller? Jesus Christ. Mm, where do we put this? I think here makes sense, right? Mm. 
That's good. Uh, AW is admin win. Should be interesting to see. I think the only risk is losing out on potentially spectacular matchups that type matches for viewership. Band system is also used for the main event main status. That's the main purpose of it. Would another band pick system lead to more different matchups? Like for example, everyone has to choose his sieve into pots of two or three and has to choose a different pot each time. Yeah, but that's not great for tournament integrity because Let's say you are the best, you can pick a weak pool against a weaker opponent and then have a stronger pool against a stronger opponent, while people in the middle have to split them equally. So this is this like people had ideas like this before, like you're not allowed to pick a civilization again in, in the tournament and it got horrible results. Are the three series listed? Acres of acres. Yeah. You, you, you will get there. Uh, Georgians are banned for the first qualifier. We will see more in the future. Do you think the letter in the definitive definitive helped all the these BFDM players come up with their shells? Like many of them pop up in good spots in RM tournaments nowadays. What DM player popped up? I don't know a single one. I don't know a single Black Forest player. And arena players, they they don't make it to, the they only made it to TTL. Um, because of the map pool. Why don't you stick the pools within a specific match, not over a tournament? Or does that have problem with there being just the best choice? I I don't really see the value too much. But maybe I'm not fully understanding it. Our AOE forefathers were smart, hunts only, no pick problems. Mayans, that's a high prioritization. Portuguese and ad stacks. Someone wants to have sieves for fortified clearing and beach fight. No reversing live on Twitch. You can you can click back if you go and uh, click the VOD. No. On some rider, welcome. Khmer Persians. This looks like Mayans for outcrops. Khmer for Arabia. Persians for Golden Lakes. Has Beachfight 1 1 been played before? Can't remember other than Boa 3 3. Yeah, we tested the map. I love you, but I don't get what you said. How do you go back and live stream? Uh, go click on the VOD. That's basically the recording of the stream. And then you can watch what just happened. I said it's going to happen live right before the sets in NSC 5. For the group stage, no. For the playoffs, yes. Celeris, thank you. Slavs could be beach fight. He's running out of sifts for fortified clearing. Kocharas. Is that fortified clearing against Portuguese? 
for a slabs fortified clearing? Kutara's beach fight? We have a lot of sheep. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. How exactly will the qualifiers on Saturday work? Pretend to two rounds as a player and three waves of starting times. Basically, Asians and Europeans start 12 GMT and they will play their round of 24. And whenever their opponent is ready, they will start their round of 12. We will have like three or four hours, the next wave starting, right? So it's like constant round of 24 into round of 12. Then the next one, round of 24, round of 12. And it will all overlap and the third wave will basically end with their round of 12 games. But what wave one does not have to wait for wave two. It's basically, you just show up at one time and play two best of fives in a row, and if you win. Okay, Vietnamese. I'm not liking the choice for fortified clearing for Miguel. Humans might be beach fight as well. Could be outcrop. Hmm. So it's like a sick matchup for round of 48. Yeah, maybe Siesta can give us the seedings. Have to be close together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have to be close together. Twenty-three and twenty-six. Okay, so the second closest matchup we can have. Doubt played. Info on screen, my friend. Able to allow me a link so you can find your VOD. Um, you have sixty seconds starting now. Two hundred. 38 tickets sold for the meetup. 62 tickets left to buy. If you want to watch Age of Empires semifinals and finals together with all the nerds, all your friends, tune in for it. Okay, Doubt and Beery rescheduled for tomorrow. 18 UTC. Uh... Doubt versus Beery moved to Friday, 18 UTC. Sorry, just got here. Doubt Biri are not playing then. Read, I just edited it. Do you think that drafting one day in advance, as Tedder proposed in GL Talk, would be a good idea and how would it affect strategies? Uh, it's a horrible idea because it doesn't work with the main event. You don't know the matches one day before. So it's not practical. I think if it's a bracket stage tournament, then it would work. But with the Swiss system, it doesn't work. We'll be there. So see you at the meetup. See you, Yolinda. In general? Yeah, in general, I don't mind it. Yeah. Creating every two themed Stratego for games in between matches during NAC? I don't know what that is. Getting hungry. Yep, Ganji not even hosting? 
What's happening? Stratego is an awesome board game. Yeah, impossible to follow. No, not going to happen. Do you have enough Pepsi for this match? I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Do you, do you see how much I'm cooking with? No, you don't. I knew that I would spend 14 days glued at this table, so I prepared. Hmm. So nearly sorry, I don't support you by any means, but man, is your hosting the most insightful. That was a supportive message. So you just lied to me. I don't appreciate liars. You just sharing the law of being here, actively contributing, is supporting. And if we have 30,000 people like you here during the finals, uh, that's, that's what made me really happy. So just spread the love in, in any shape you know. That's, that's all I need. And I need a game. Miguel vs. Ganji. <laughs> they host it. Rage Forest is selected as a map right now. Hmm. Sir, have earned my prime. You're just gonna figure out how to access it on mobile. I think that doesn't work. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah, Tilsi, would be nice if you com could communicate like when we get to the final moments of the final or the final moments of the second semi-final that everyone takes out their phone does not use the Wi-Fi and open the stream so that we jump another 300 400 viewers to maybe break whatever number we need to break 35k maybe um, it's new for every game that's correct yeah I will take care of that good boy thank you 69k is very unrealistic but I think we will break 25 and maybe we break 30. That would be nice. That would be nice. Ooh, pretty sure they did not host with a spec delay. I don't appreciate that, but it happens. <laughs> view, uh, view account manipulation. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's jump into game one. Ganji versus Miguel. Round of 48 over here. And we see Miguel with the Mayans. One extra villager here. And obviously cheaper archers can go for plumes, can go for eagles. Would love to expand on outcrop. You can wall yourself quite easily, but you have limited resources. I need to expand to the side for extra gold and extra stones. You have one path to your opponent. And because you can wall so easily, as I just said, humans are picked quite often. Because you feel like, okay, you can get your defensive town center up somewhere and can boom away from your opponent. This one is a really unfortunate generation for Genji, though. How open this side is here to the, towards the left. Barry's at the front. It's not pretty in case Miguel goes for some aggression if you compare the maps the wall of for Miguel just way way easier yeah who's the higher seat I think it was seat 23 against 26 so you can kind of consider them at the same level when is doubt versus Berry tomorrow 18 UTC what is seat basically the ranking going into the tournament So, like, how they would perceive to, to be performing. Kind of, yeah. The, the 
their world ranking out of only the players that are playing. Yeah. And so basically we perceive Ganji to be the 23rd best player and Miguel the 26th best player in this tournament. I think seed 1 was Tado, seed 2 Jordan, seed 3 Doubt. Yeah. Great walls for Sweden. <laughs> it's not pretty. Not pretty at all. And it will be pop 20 Archer opening. Or maybe with that early barracks. Might be the Drush. Hmm. This is an FC map. Well, not with Cumans, right? You want to have that CC earlier. What seed was Viper? Viper was directly invited to the tournament. So he does not play the qualification system. Top 4 of NAC4 were invited. Those were the Viper, Hera, Leary, and Mr. Yo. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Those walls aren't pretty. Ay, ay, ay. He could have had such an easy wall here. Hmm. And we see indeed two militia, but only now with three on gold. Hmm. Those will be skinny cows when they finally get there. <laughs> Charlottenburg is kind of far from me, is someone saying for the meetup. There are people traveling more than 10,000 kilometers for that meetup. Last time we had people from Japan, from Taiwan, from Brazil, from Australia, from... Yeah, multiple people from Australia coming. So, um, I think you, you knowing the borough of the city kind of implies that you are way, way, way closer than you should be justified for having an excuse. Is Dash invited for NSC5? As always, Wikipedia, Wikipedia, a great website that has all the info, such as that the caster lineup is T90 official, Dave AoE, Fob Membrio, and Dash. Okay, even men at arm opening here. But humans, more HP on their walls. Typically it would be 250. But now we have 333, so he buys himself a bit more time. Those T90 unofficial? I'm not officially allowed to answer that question. I'm not too much invested into AoE. Still go, uh, considering going. Okay, okay. There are like 60 tickets left. So, enjoy. Who must Mora be on the site? I was really sad he wasn't there last time. Was he not? We did record the podcast at NAC. That's interesting. I don't know, you can ask him. I think he will be around in some capacity, yeah. We react to Viper's reaction with of Tim Ramos falling gold with? No. Mm. Yeah, Fop Mario and Vicious Marauder will be there. Indeed. Okay, Ganji buying himself some reasonable time here. Needs another house behind this though. Oh, this will be a hole. If this house goes down, yeah, okay. He needs a third house now. Could you answer a question about Mesmero again, please? The ads kicked in right after I asked that one. Mao. Perhaps. Best is to ask him. Little Mao. Is Dash still playing AoE? More watching than playing. Hmm. Do you know why Mem wasn't at NAC4? I know. Ah, the, the Cow's obviously helping out, not forcing too many farms. Still could afford both eco upgrades. This thing about three hours behind now regarding the impact of AO2 on release. Just remember the feeling seeing it for the first time in a maid's house. Was the most amazing look game. Still best to play. It was crazy, right? I couldn't believe it. I loved Anno and then suddenly Age of Empires came out and I was like blown away. 
It's interesting how Europeans have completely different perception of what's far Australian like just 15 hour flight I'm here like yeah three hours drive I don't know if I come yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Europeans are very different Along with you and Mem, who are some old timers that are still around. Also, you know where Zero Empires is these days? He lives in Canada working for Age of Empires 4. Community manager there, I believe, or something in that ballpark. And. Well, Dowd is an old school legend that's still around. Chris is still around. Like, the list is long. Force Man at Arms forcing quite some houses. Yeah, look at that. Resource damage already 200 and increasing. Hmm. Capwatch, OG, that is still around. Yeah. And there will be another house that will be gone. Carsage timing, obviously, will be better by Miguel. Quite some nice aggression. Why no range with skirms? Well, cost quite a bit, right? Barracks cost 175 wood, range cost 100 wood, the skirm. One alone won't do much. You have to go for five. The houses are also adding some value. And a tower. Something you can't really afford because before you have a market. Because there's no stone around in your starting base. And you already invested 100 of your 200 stone into the town center. It's not about Australia, but I love the sentence. In Europe, 100 kilometers is fine. In the US, 100 years is old. Oh boy. I think the tower had been worth early on, but yeah, well, you need the market first, right? And then still need to build the tower. It's not that easy on this map. I would have. I'm. I'm team skirmisher in this, for sure. Shot it. But it is four skirmishes that you have to build to properly defend. Let's take a look at IWC time. Ganji at 12 seconds. That's really solid. What does NEC stand for? Nilly's Apartment Cup. It's always hard as humans. Plan never goes as you want. Well, the single goal if you play against humans is to not let them play like they want, right? Because if humans can do what they want, in the sense like getting a 20, 30 villager lead and just boom, then they kill you. So the sole goal of Mayans and Miguel is to distract the opponent and go aggressively and deny them some resources. Hmm. Outcrop is a reverse Acropolis, changed my mind. Hmm. Amount of cows. Bam! What is the origin story of the first NAC? We had a meetup in Brighton together with lots of Age of Empires personalities. And we were sitting together with like T90, Tato, Viper, Doubt, Overlay Guy, Jordan. And had such a great time. And I said like, oh wow, people would love, absolutely love to witness this. I think I want to share this, those beautiful moments uh, with the world. What do you guys think about me hosting a tournament in my apartment? And people were critical of it. And I said, I will do it. What year was that? Early 2018. I believe. Yeah. Why is everything so white? Oh, let me let me change that again. Um Better now? Do you go to the gym or running or something? I bought a rowing machine, like two months ago. No. More stables here. Okay, goes for knights. What is the price pool? Fifty-five thousand dollars, and could increase. Concept two, maybe I don't know. Thanks for sharing. I'm just getting into a 2 scene. This is NEC. Will be my first year anniversary of watching pro games. Well, well, well. Enjoy. There are some... Like, there are basically four major tournaments in Age of Empires. And NEC is one of them. And, yeah. Considered to be one of the most fun tournaments. If you want to learn more about the personalities of the top players and the casters, this is a great tournament to get into it. 
How do you like the rowing? I like it a lot. Like burning 400 calories in 20 minutes without leave leaving my house. Great. Absolutely great. Mm. What's the other three major tournaments? King of the Desert, Hidden Cup, and the Red Bull Vololo series. I would consider those the four major tournament series we have in Age of Empires. Yeah. Is the Red Bull series coming back? The only information we have is that there's nothing happening this year. Wallots may be getting there as well. Not yet, but maybe in the future, yeah. Great spot by Miguel. Yeah, that's nice positioning. Village account relatively even. More resources collected by Ganji, but obviously he had to invest quite a lot into those houses as well. Gets a nice clean up against some of the eagles, some of the infantry there. Pikeman tech, but patrolling at home, which is quite a surprise to me. Love to see them at the front, so this is going to be a guaranteed clean up at one point. Hmm. Also, we don't have that many online tournaments in Age of Empires. Uh, offline tournaments in Age of Empires. So that's why people giving this one quite a lot of love as well. Hmm. Okay, knights seeking some damage. Forward castle incoming. Hmm, I think it's more likely that it's a defensive castle. Something like here, controlling the golds and stone. Feels more natural to me. Doesn't eagle work in late also like a help against knights? Uh, not really, no. Against knights, you kind of want to play a help, help, a help eagle mix. Like, yeah, you have some attack bonus with Eagle Warriors against Cavalry, but it's like plus three, while a Harbardia is like top, tw top 24, something like that. Would there be a show match at NAC5? Yes! And you can decide which one. Exclamation mark NAC5 support. Or exclamation mark donation. Plus four. Okay, Harp has 32. Well, time in the ballpark. Okay, more and more relics being picked off. Obviously, we have one in the center, two on each side. This one already both well, picked off. And yeah, defensive castle here. Miguel wants to play the stable game. Kind of interesting that he will opt for plumed archers. Hmm. But Eldorado Eagles can win with generic cavaliers, though. Shot it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, Harbardier. Eagle mid mix will be better than full eagle if you face mass cavalier. But humans obviously will either play Hussar, Kipchak, or Paladins. So generic cavalier is something we don't really will see. Now some outposts, getting some more vision here. Ganji. Atypical amount of monks by him. But obviously Cumans not really the monk civilization. Hmm. Unlikely that he will find a good spot here. Really, even when it comes to villagers, population virtually identical. Team T90 versus Team Nilly show match, uh, rematch. Uh, very unlikely. That was a crazy amount of quick walls, but not in time. Knights are coming in. And we'll find some villager kills. KD overall, way better for Ganji. Resources destroyed. Now with a nice lead for him. And forced quite some reaction. Some more idols as well. He's diving for some more villager kills. Gets another one. Gets another two maybe. No. We'll get out of there. Runs away with the knights. Mm -hmm. It's kind of mind-boggling how Halps have so much bonus damage and still lose 1v1 to Cavalier. Well. They are way cheaper, right? They cost half. Less than half of a knight. So it makes lots of sense. Two Harbardiers completely wreck Cavalier though. Interesting that Ganji is staying in there. Oh, okay. It's two conversions. Yeah. Stays in there for way too long. Had to be distracted with some other raid, some other movement, apparently. Hmm. hmm. 
crazy that they instantly have the same amount as humans. Well, this is where it's nice and early. That's a lot of exposed farms here. Crazy. That's surprising. Could have built some more in the back. And another castle. That's not controlling a lot. I'm a bit surprised by this. Might be a bit scared of the potential Ramgo. It's actually a Mangano though. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this one, I don't think it will den deny the castle. Might delay it though. Maybe get a good shot into those villagers. That's a shot towards the castle, not the vills. Has to go back in there and yeah, Miguel maybe loses two builds, but that's it. And the Mangano won't find too much. Actually gets a good shot, shot against the plumes, but two night conversions now will push the Mangano away. And Castle will go up. Miguel can't be too unhappy with this. Needs to okay. retouch those villagers though. Lily, would you be for adding more Ella and Eagle and Lancer, maybe even new unit civs? I think more variety, good, less up, night civ, good. I'm heavily against adding more civilizations. I'd rather see 10 erased from the game than one added. Miguel has more knights now. Miguel had four knights, but we see three knights <laughs> for a Cuban player. That's funny. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, early aim timing for Ganji. Kind of interesting that Miguel split his attention. Going for two different areas. Hmm. Okay, and builds a third castle over here. We still don't have a castle for Ganji. Needs to get one ASAP. I'm a bit surprised that he's not focusing on that. Shot. Now goes for more knights, so likely going to be the paladin direction from him. Doubt hasn't played yet, has he? He's rescheduled for tomorrow 18 UTC. Hmm. More stables. Stuck at 11 knights for now. Buys himself the castle. Wants to go into the trap war here. Can't really protect the castle too well, though. Knights are running away. Oh, this could be... Ah, okay. More knights arriving at the top. Okay, that was desperately needed. And he will get rid of those plumes. Hmm. And really solid timing, rush out the castle so that he can instantly build the trap once reaching Imperial Age. Now we see more Harbadiers added potentially. Second pike upgrade coming for the defense. And trap is being started. How good are Cuban Paladin? All the upgrades. As you can see, three attack, three defense upgrades have bloodlines. So all the upgrades for them. Generic perfect Paladins. Hmm. And a bit faster. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not using the trap instantly. Interesting. Push over here. Kind of stopped now. Cavalier, 90 seconds away. Last armor upgrade, 50 seconds away. Only at 15 knights, though. Is he thinking about paladin upgrades? Q's another trap. Q's another group of knights 51 on gold but still not the numbers there did you just move to it or is he missing some gold upgrades hmm. trap lots of danger likely to go down and yeah those converted knights now biting ganji a bit and only now the next trap out can pressure this castle a, g a bit more again does 5% speed matter? Not a lot. But it doesn't hurt, certainly. Okay. 
Okay, now 25 Cavaliers on the map already. They're all spread around the map, though. Take a look at this. Like Some move into the left. We have some chasing this area here. Some could potentially get a raid in there. And Miguel now heavily focusing on Halberdiers. What is Ganji's next unit behind this, though? Oh, he's not producing. He's going for Paladin. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Squeezes and forging, though. And this is going to be an overboom with 164 villagers. Economy will be crazy good, though. Paladin, 245 away. Does not have conscription yet. So it will take quite some time. And that castle won't get conscription for him either. Full harbardier play. Against the full paladin, potentially. Count 10 cavaliers again. Those villagers are in danger. Plumed archers, non-elite, but still doing proper damage against wilts, obviously, that are protected right now. Still full focus on this area. Goes for fletching now. Interesting that he's so desperately trying to hold this. Against two traps, you can repair it. So there are options. Hmm. Mm, fun fact. I think you and I use the term very differently. Miguel getting proper harbadiers out here. One minute to go to Paladin. Only 19 on the field though. Only 17 on gold. Raids are continuing here. And those are a lot of dead villagers. That group of plumes got 33 villager kills. Wow. Both heavily repairing into those castles. And that trap might survive. Did he not have enough gold for the repair here? I'm a bit surprised what's happening. And now gets the repair in time though. Okay. That halberd here can't be attacked because of lacking murder holds. And now we see attack into elite eager warriors. Normal eager warriors for now though. And paladin finished. Ganji had pop 160 and paladin upgrade in there. And now he should start raiding quite a bit. Still active on the left hand side. Love that. Love that control. Might be pushing this away. Question is though still if he faces full harbardiers. That's the main production that Miguel is going for now. What is he going for next? Tries to snipe that trap. Not going to happen. Ganji out of stone. Buys himself some more stone to go for more repair. Oh, this feels so desperate. Hmm. How many plumes to up to one shot a fully upgraded paladin? Well, Paladin has seven armor. A plume test, I think. What does Elite have? I think Elite only has five plus four, right? So nine. So 90 plumes to one shot. Castle got quite some kills. Trap is running away now. 14 Paladins on the field. Has a solid economy. Handcut would obviously help him quite a bit. More than adding more villagers. Lost all the momentum. Yeah, but now he's raiding. And this will be tough for Miguel to deal with. El Dorado. Extra HP for those eager warriors. One of the strongest upgrades in the game. For a civilization that otherwise would lack a bit of oomph in late Imperial Age. Hmm. And Miguel, he will drop in villager numbers guaranteed. Question is how much damage can he inflict towards Ganji and it feels like a lot. Elite Plum Darts is now being tagged. Lots of villagers idled. We can take a look at work efficiency going down for both players quite heavily. Ooh. Moon, no I don't. And now a CA being added to counter all the harbardiers. Okay. People are getting desperate here apparently. Hmm. Seems difficult to play with a single unit. If the single unit is getting countered, yes it is. And right now, the mass halberdiers are being the answer. Chasing down those paladins over and over again. 
40 population lead now, and that's going to be a, a deadly castle. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So much food eco here. I think if this castle goes up, the game might be over. It's tricky though, because the farm under the castle right now. Hmm. Maybe need to overtake the farm to then build the castle there. So, so much blinking everywhere, but the paladins are not finding the kills like they wanted to. And the GG is called Ganji. The one composition army is not the answer to what Ganji, uh, what Miga was throwing at him. It just felt we needed Kipchak or maybe skirmishes, but skirmishes are not pretty. And that's a big problem with humans, right? You have to get onto Kip checks, otherwise you're so vulnerable to mass halberdiers. And Miguel did a really solid job. Only five barrack production, but just constantly produced, and especially lots of fights from the right hand side. And got to enough pikemen, got into enough halberdiers. And as you can see, most produced unit halberdier against 107 knights, cavaliers, and paladins. But not enough. Hmm. Oh, see, A are not an option for humans. They're absolutely horrible. You need to go cap check. And halves are not a good option against mains either. So yeah, I think Ganji, I in his shoes would have tacked into Hassar plus cap check. Instead of going for Paladin. Someone just asked me if I can play a show match on the 12th of January. That's the Friday of NAC. I, 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 I said no. Yeah. Okay, outcrop gone. Civilizations, we have humans losing and we have Mayans, the first pick on outcrop winning. Maybe on the 13th then, yeah. Hmm. No passion. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, hmm. they rehost it. Miguel having problems apparently joining and rejoining the lobby. Okay, we should be. Can we fix this? Player two, player one, two. Hmm. That's something for later. Hmm. Hmm. Is there any player still haven't won against? No. Like, out of the top 100, I would say no. Obviously, there are a lot of players I've never played against. No. Do these players tend to play aggressive on average? It depends on the map, and it depends on how you define aggressive. They might, like, all of them are playing more aggressively than the average 1,000 ELO player. 
because they have army out earlier. Yeah. Have you beaten all seven MBLs? Mm. MBL was the one making giving me a 2.2k. <sighs> Which of the need is WTF overlay is the best? You can start a poll next time. Great for interaction. Oh, that looks like Brood War. Right. Any beginner's tips for getting into AO2? Enjoy. Oh, Beach Fight is actually the map. Yeah. What happened with Jordan game? Um, any beginner tips? Uh, keep your town center working. Try to spend your resources. Yeah. Will you still contribute your personality to tournaments after full-time retirement? Let's see. Unfortunately for Timo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you enjoy, you're not doing AO2, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. 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 I suppose the main eagle and help beat Kipchak Hasa. Well, Kipchak Hasa has to micro a lot, right? They technically shouldn't lose a lot of units. It is e way easier to play for the Mayans, though. Yeah. Are you going back to teaching? Let's see. Is it worth to wall in post him, or is it waste of stone and APM? It's worth it, for sure. Yeah. How about a future map with no gold at all on the map? Sounds absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. How do you kill a castle? How do you go to Castle Age? Go play Forest Nothing. What would you rate your mascots? 1 to 10. 10 being Harvard Professor. Um, 9.5. Like in the grand scale of all math people in the world? I'm, I'm the 1 percentile probably. No. Like I can flawlessly count till 12. Forward ends on good days backwards. Yeah. What about a map with barely any wood and a lot of gold? Barely any wood is like a horrible game as well. Like how how do you build a base? Idea, builds nothing map. You start with trying builds and get resources as you lead them. Kidoki Beach Fight, our map for game two here. And it will be in the blue trunks, Genji picking ad stacks for himself. And we start with a lot of farms on our town center. And there are extra sheep. That's why I would have thought we could have seen Gojaras or maybe Britons here. And well, Genji. Relatively short distance towards the opponent. Feels like monks can be really nice. And Miguel thinks, okay, we are having lots of farms around. Let's use that slav farm bonus. That's why he picked slavs. We also always have in the north and in the south lots and lots of food. Something that Miguel is already thinking of here. Is he thinking about getting that elephant? Oh boy. Something we have not seen too often. And tries to block this. Oh baby. Okay, so not a lot of sheep that he's taking for himself. And yeah, that will be a lot of work. Lots of work. I think Berbers makes it way easier. And gold is not visible. We have in the west and in the east some extra gold spots as well. Mm. Goth should be OP here. Um, not sure about OP, but should be really solid. Yeah, going for the food at the side. We've also seen Mongols. We have seen Cumans here. I think Mezzo have to be strong. 
I think Britons have to be strong. There are a lot of options. Yeah. Will be interesting. Okay. Check men too good. Yeah, eagles will be really solid. Hmm. Okay, the person's still asking if I have time, more time in January. Uh, do you know what I I am doing and what's happening? I uh, no, let's stay respectful. Uh, need to do it this year or I can't commit. Happy smiley. I think that's more respectful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, pe people have different priorities in life. Obviously, my head is so consumed by NSC for month and month. Oh, what is happening here? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. That's how Ganji apparently tries to lure his elephants here. Oh boy. Yeah, he's cooking. He's cooking. Okay, so people are doing this more than we initially thought. Hmm. Hmm. What's that well up to? Maybe walling? Maybe walling. But the back looks really open. Yeah. But nay. Oh. Two on gold. So will be a fast castle from Ganji from what it looks like. Right? Okay. No, it's a barracks. Maybe archer defense? Those palisades are coming in quite handy time. Hmm. Why not put the farm builds on the elephant as well? He's that doing name. that right now. And here. Gazania. Oh yes, five on sheep. And you see it? Nice. Another house maybe. Okay, okay. Can't complain about this. Now it's a wall in the bill. Oh, that's nice. Nice crisis management. Oh, actually, can shoot one of the militia. Uh oh, Palisade down though. Oh, he will need to rewall. Trades off some HP. This is intentional by Ganji. He wants to trade off the HP and is already preparing the wall behind it. That was really clever. That was a prime example on how to waste time of the opponent. Could wall those in. I don't think it's adding too much value though. Because, like, they will fight out anyways. And he doesn't have anything to kill them. Archer range is a bit late. Mm. Farm count down to four, three on gold. Goes for archers. More houses, and that archer range is really late. Hmm. Four minutes arms still around. Why are players not milling the south and north? It's too exposed. But players sometimes do. If you are Mongols, you do it. If you are humans, sometimes people build the GC there. We've seen it multiple times. Um, here it just feels like it might be too exposed. Just imagine like Ganji. If Miguel plays scout opening, all will dash. If Miguel is playing men at arms through the center and Ganji sends his first three archers, will it just dash? But yeah, obviously he needs to defend first, so... Now Miguel feels like he has the timing for it. Plus you simply have so much food on your town center that you don't have to expend yet. Are east, west golds always visible for players? No. Oh. <laughs> Eagle trade of some HP. Gets a kill. Does not get away though. Man at arm helped out. And now the blacksmith. I'm surprised that he had another man at arm. 
He did not do so. Oh, he has supplies for free, right? So it is relatively cheap. Cheap. Goes for quite a lot of aggression again. Kind of a reminder of game one. Hmm. Is this special for NSC5? I haven't seen it before. Crazy map? Oh, well, it was not programmed for this one. I think we only have one map that has never been seen before. But this was, was never played in 1v1s, I believe, yeah. If you enjoy those crazy maps, I have two show maps on YouTube. Oh, no, only one on YouTube. Where we're testing a lot of the new wild maps. Oh, you just watch it over here and eventually you will, you will see all of them. What map has never been used before? Brood War. I have not... I don't remember Langanati played. No Hippo Head map. Uh, we have Hippopotamus in there. That's not Hippo Arena. Need to send a villager soon to get some repair in. I'm a bit surprised. It's a bit careless. Now sends 3, 180 HP. Oh, gives the barracks up. Oh, that's a surprise to me. Did not expect that. I think especially with that stack, he would try to save it. Hmm. Scum still dancing. Many go scums now. I think a market would be the next step with all the gold that he is having. Does a good job of out microing those scums. Archer still annoying. Miguel with quite a nice aggression and his castle timing behind this won't be too bad, right? Farmer's still working. All the extra food here. Not too bad, not too bad. Hmm. Has he gotten enough value out of those men at arms? Well, he killed a house, I believe. Killed the barracks. Forced a lot of reaction. Forced a lot of walls. I think Miguel did a good job. Remember that the fifth men at arm was cheaper. <laughs> Only 45 foot. And he's still no market. Goes for the second lumber camp here. Hmm. Uh, there are no wolves over in this area. And there are a reasonable amount of lions over in those corners. And archers are now going for the sneaky raid. That's what I said earlier. Alright, skirms now for the defense. And Ganji, if he was like super sharp and if he played this map like three, four more times, he might have thought about this earlier. But those archers, they can find a lot of value now. They can, not sure if they can kill all five builds, but two very likely. Yeah, this, this map was introduced at Battle of Africa, yeah. But only for 3v3. Three, three. And you see, Miguel, he is trying to do the same. Those villagers are exposed. And Miguel does not see any archers. So he should be scared here, I believe. Kind of interesting that he's still not moving. His villagers from the top. Those archers are now scouting for the gold. Trying to find something. But Genji is still happy with what he has here. And now adds double barracks. And that's why I was so surprised that he lets the, barra the barracks die. I thought after the barracks dies, Ganji was thinking about um, committing to monks. And honestly, going eagles against a civilization that already has supplies and already has men at arms tagged, I think is a mistake. Yeah, the raid is about to happen. Not the best raid for Ganji. I think he will likely get two villagers instead of five. And Gambesons for free? Well, that doesn't matter too much against the Eagles, right? And Archers and Skirms won't be produced more. So yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of this. Now moves out to the gold. But yeah, he obviously has to open with some units. More houses now at the frontier. Might open this a bit later. And I think we might see like a siege workshop, monasteries being dropped, and he has to pressure this area. 
Constant downhill skirm war. Yeah, it's really unfortunate how this woodland is designed for him. Did all his skirm die? Yeah, 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 he lost them. Miguel continue producing. Now goes for Botkin and queues up some more men at arms. Love it. Absolutely love it how he is realizing the situation. It's just house, otherwise he would already be at reasonable numbers. <laughs> now he's expanding for the gold at the side. Might lose the villager. Kicked in a bit too deep and yeah, one dead. Massive amount of houses again. I'm sure if you can squeeze through here, it feels like it's open, but I don't think people will really commit to this. Double barracks, triple barracks, eagles. Just imagine now eagles showing up here. Could be really good for Ganji. Is he splitting his eagles? Oh yeah, this looks like he's sending them around. This could be really good for Ganji. He's four workers ahead. How is that a thing? No wheelbarrow? Idle to see, even? Two builds killed? Huh. That's surprising to me. Four long swords or four men at arms, soon long swords. Runs away here. Oh uh, yeah, that's a fight I don't think Ganji can take. He needs to raid now. Builds a siege workshop. Had to delete some houses, but that siege workshop is really vulnerable. He needs to wall behind it again. Not pretty. Archers are running away and those eagles, they love to fight, take the fight against all those ranged units. Can eat a mangano shot? No, won't happen. And eagles likely to be sent in into Miguel's base here. This is still tough to play for Miguel. Must not underproduce long swords and I think he even needs to send some to defend at home. It's a bit like a pikeman against the night raids. And yeah, look at that. Miguel knows he can't hold this and sends his units away or his villagers away. But the eagles now arrive. This will be ugly for... Oh, it loses the mangonel. This is big for Ganji. What a big pickoff. Oh, and now the mangonel can defend so easily. Oh, this is so good for him. And Ganji can run away. Now can raid with those eagles as well. While one mangonel alone defends this. Could maybe go for another scorpion, I believe. No, goes for double mangonel. But he will be fine. Takes the fight here. Not pretty for the Eagles, but with those numbers, he will just take it. Oh, big shot. Quite some damage. Deletes all the houses. Longsword could still dive and get a lot of kills here. Still believe that a scorpion could have been nice. <laughs> Change the goats around. Some skirmishes patrolling here, not the most important thing. This is a messy game. Love it. Hmm. Miguel could have walled in the gold wills. Yeah, I thought about this as well. Nice long sword cleaning this now. We really just need to move. Eagles don't want to take the fight. Maybe ground attack, but would attack his own villagers. So doesn't really want to take it. Mainly attacks his villagers here, but forces the long swords to go back. Army not really, really moving in. And now adding some more monks as well. So his villagers and eagles will be healed up. Eagles back at the wood line. One villager heard from earlier. Nice quick wall against it. No wheelbarrow gaming from both. Well, at sex have wheelbarrow at home. Hmm. Is there a reason other than cost and production rate that no one goes for boyars? Well, this map doesn't have stone. So... Tough to get to castle to build boyas. That's probably the main reason for it. Eagle around here. Hmm. Should Ganji at expo? No. I think just a scorpion. Like two scorpions and this army can never engage. I think that's the way. Boyas are underwhelming. Hmm. Not sure about that. Is there a unique unit that if you could make it into stone would be worth spamming? I don't know what that means. Expanding now and... Oh, the lion aiming for the weak villager. Oh, learned on the open field to always go for the weakest prey. Nice clear up here. All the eagles falling. Hmm. 
Market. Okay. Then let me let me get let's read again. Is there a unique unit that if you could mark it into stone would be worth it? Ah Well Spanish ma uh, Kongs maybe. Kind of the strongest. Um strong and unique unit. Oh, that could be a nice spot. Is he seeing it? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Oh, that's so fortunate for Miguel. Goes through there. Oi, 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 oi. Oh, just imagine those four eagles on patrol. This all denied. Could have been the end for Miguel. He goes mass long shots now. Maybe crossbow need to be added, yeah. Some repair now. Mangano shot. That was important for him. Now needs to repair and long shots have to run. That was so important for Ganty to hold this. Some more houses, buys himself some more time. Long shot defense is solid though. <laughs> Lion still shooting. Not impossible that they find another kill here, honestly. Another monastery. Sami could easily die. 3 TC versus 2 TC. Soonish. Longsword confirms the extra town center at the site. Just wanted to see. Maybe, just maybe. The opponent only is on gold without a mining camp there. Could have sold the stone, for example. And he sold 100 stone from looking at it. Ooh, Ganji wants to chase this down now. Have you seen players buy a castle? Yes. Multiple times. Especially like Spanish. I've seen it a lot. Hmm. Did this map used to have all visible corners? The gold corner was visible at times, yeah. Oh, god, ground attacks. Strong sword are so weak now. And the Eagle's actually winning the fight. Yeah, Magnots might still die. But still, this was relatively efficient. For Ganji. Gets away. Oh, gets another good shot. Honestly, that was a crazy good fight for Ganji. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. That he wins this one against that amount of longswords? That was really well, well played. <laughs> Longsword dealing with the alliance here at the side. And crossbow attack now. Interesting. Now Gambesons could make sense. Look at that. We already have four pierce armor. So a longsword only uh, an arbalest. A crossbow. Ah! That's only three damage. Is it hard for players outside the EU to enter Germany for NSC? Not really. ACCM has his visa and US has visa. Those are the two biggest prospects that needed one. Yeah. Just have to take care of it early on. Since we're talking about cars and unigans, would you give a technology like Anarchy to other ships too? I, I wanted that for Teutons for a very long time. Teutonic Knights out of um, barracks. Maybe just for style points. What about unique units out of TCs? Hmm. Why not? Oh, Ganji bought himself a castle. Sick. Didn't think that would be an option. Bought himself 700. That has to be an expensive AF. But that's the perfect counter to the long shots then. And it is for long shots. Double mangonel. One over here. The other one at the bottom here for some reason. Trying to go for a raid. Oh, this will be interesting. I'm not sure if we have redemption. And conversions on this long sword would be so good. Killing. Oh, that that's so massive. Now he has five long swords. He can easily kill the mangonel. And can then go back at it again. Oh, that was so good for Ganji. Just played those ad stacks so well. Running away here. And now can go for Jaguars. 
And that could be really tough to stop for Miguel now. Now he kind of sw needs to switch into Cavaliers. But Ganji looks up to him pretty soon as well. What an impressive game by him. Hmm. Why buy castle and not go long towards your own? Well, castle, just look at what it controls. Like, all the wood in the map is in here, right? How is Miguel now really getting wood properly? He can go for Jaguars, which are way, 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 way better than Longswords. He would need to tag into Longsword as well. Something he really doesn't want to do. What is that, Lumber Camp? Yeah, needs to be one tile closer. Generally, if you think, like, if you build a Lumber Camp late Castle Age or Imp, it should always be one tile away. Here's the two tiles away, though. Uh, but one tile away is actually better. Because if you have 12 villagers working, you want to have a space. It's just more efficient. Hmm. What do you think about putting the relics in the food corners instead of spread around? Mm, no. Why? Just give you another advantage for like humans getting more control of this. Ooh, that's a nice find. And Miguel will have to tap this one out. Ganji wins beach fight in quite an interesting fashion. Miguel, kind of with the same play with the men at arm and archer aggression. I liked it quite a bit, but then probably overinvested into the longsword and Ganji with his mangonels found so many good traits, killed the mangonels of Miguel quite nicely and could defend. This was a really good game. Loved it a lot. Ganji got the gold control, Miguel didn't. And then lots of pressure. Lovely game. Hmm. Hmm. Nice extra resources. This was a good game. Really liked it. I fear that on this map, um, we might not see a lot of games go to Imp. That's what I'm fearing, yeah. Which is okay. Not every map has to go to Imp. But... I think it doesn't hurt to have that option. Yeah. Slavs lost. Hmm. Up next will be Arabia. We got some map. Nothing wrong with that. Well, it is in the sense that if a game never goes to Imp, it's unlikely to create a great game. It's not unlikely to create a good game, but a great game is diverse, has different openings, has different strategies, and results into longer games as well. That's why Arabia is so good, right? We have different openings, we can have diverse mid-games, and it go, can go to Imp. Hmm. Like, let's... Can anyone tell... Like, if you if you think back... Like, obviously it's inflated because you have seen way more of Arabia games. But it's very easy for you to reimagine a great Arabia game. And think what happened. Now think about a great Sukhotra game. And not a good one, and not an entertaining one, a great one. Will be tougher, I believe. I will leave you with that thought. I'm back in a minute.
Also, Kotra games are great. Okay, so you didn't properly think about it. <clears throat> One minute to go. Hey thank you for streaming this. Makes it so much easier for me to navigate because I always arrive late. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I think Angie, at sex are Ganji's best sieve? Maybe. Something like Bohemians mixed in there as well. Mm. Games on Beach Ride might go longer if you have a few very little tree patches spread around through the sand dunes. Maybe. Okay, someone just asked me a rule question and lucky the doubt answered the rule question already. Let's go! Arabia, we will have Miguel playing Vietnamese here in the red trunks and we have Ganji playing Franks in the blue. Do you have any favorite NAC matchup from previous events? Uh, the final, <laughs> Liri against Terra. The best of nine was really, really good. MBL versus Viper NAC 1 and NAC 2 was really good as well. Mm. The second half of the finals, Viper versus Tero, NAC 2 finals was really good. Actually, NAC 3 finals I enjoyed a lot as well. Viper Yo NAC 3 was a great semi final. Yeah. Mm. Doubt an can't answer the rule question. Doubt never knows the rules. He said, read the handbook, my man. That was great. Did Nambia made a reverse sweep once? Or was it Red Bull? Red Bull against Terra. Final? Red Bull 5? Something like that? I would think so. And then got 3-0 by Viper. Leary or something in the semis? That's what I think. Yeah, that was one of the best sets of all time. No. What is reverse? What is reverse of the reverse sweep? Uh, I don't think such a thing exists. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really play campaigns. If that was an earlier question. Played William Wallace campaign when the game came out on the beta, and that's it. I think I might have traded once. Once. Hmm. So we learned everything through PvP. Kind of, yeah. I've been playing this game for 28,000 hours, so it kind of makes sense that I learned something along the way. I know we've made NAC specific highlight recaps, but it would be awesome to have a video that showcases NAC highlights across all events. Uh, that's kind of the trailers. <laughs> well, just take the time and watch the NAC highlights of each and every one of them. And then you get all the highlights. I don't think we have an NAC4 highlight reel though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, waltz and small. Okay, just quick waltz. So, scout opening by Ganji. Miguel goes for one himself. Not on gold yet. Mm. 
I recently got rid of a lot of games sold, given away, and I found my original AO2 music CD in the attic earlier this month. Properly excited. Oh, nice. I think I sold... M oh, no, maybe I still have the original Age of Empires ones. Why is he not moving the sheep? What, Kanji? I think he could have killed two, three of them. What, was something happening here? Was he quick walling on the other side? I think something could have happened. Well, well, well. Stable now. There was an AOE music CD. I think he he meant the normal CD. Or do you actually mean a music CD? Then I don't know that one. Okay, Miguel gets it in. Nice. Hmm. There was an AOE 2 music CD. Oh, what? Okay, then I don't know that one. Uh, What? Okay. What hits did it feature? Something like Shamburger? That's a lot of walls here by Ganji. Oh man, oh man, oh man. I'm not really the fight Miguel wants to take. Yeah, gets away. All the tracks from the original game. Yeah, yeah, that's what I expect. Okay, includes the gold. Might just wall like this here. So Ganji will work on being fully walled. Not really using his Frank's advantage. Of having an upgrade for free. And therefore having a scout earlier. Actually walls with three builds. Not the greatest development here for my taste. Hmm. What I think is the most broken sieve on land maps right now? There is none, I would think. Otherwise, like, <laughs> in some sense, obviously Georgians. But if there was one, we would constantly see it banned in tournaments. And that's not the case. So this arena, if it was up to Ganji, yes. And Miguel will be fully walled. Wouldn't be surprised to see an archer range and a switch on to gold pretty soon. Stays on two scouts, only produced one single one of them. And Ganji. Interesting play. Plays it this one very defensively. Hmm. Hera considers Mongols OP? Well, not on Arabia. <laughs> like, uh, otherwise he would be really confused. Why would Mongols be OP? Like, maybe on some maps, yes. But generally saying on land maps, Mongols RP would really surprise me. Okay, both players fully walled. This game might go to Castle Age with 0 0 KD. Hmm. You said Lancers made them OP? Well, why aren't we seeing them every single time on Arabia then, if they are OP? Every single time on Land Madness. Every single time on Outcrop. Is the bug unit from the new Civ fixed by now? Nope. That's why it's banned in the first qualifier here. So yeah, I would be really confused if he like generally said it about all land maps and actually meant that. Or he just uses the term OP very differently to how I use it. This looks like a CA play by Miguel. No archery range yet, but working towards Castle Age. Hmm. Has anyone noticed difference to the ranked team game matchmaking? I feel like I'm getting teamed up with Elos much higher than mine. Uh, not that I've known or ever heard of. Might just be variants. A plume still trash? <laughs> hmm. OP strong probably. Well, not really what OP stands for. Can she get wheelbarrow before going up to Castle Age? Kind of seeing the trend of that more and more. Mm. 
and now we see is he building an archer i think with the how priority with how low priority he's building this one feels like yeah ca is the way to go scouts annoying a bit and yeah this will be oh it won't be zero zero kd reaching cast age will be one zero kd not too much on gold likely to be a three tc play reasonably early siege workshop as well needs to deal with those ca is it needed to get the farm upgrade if you try to get an economy slow running and feel late nope you see, for example, AM players delay the farm upgrade quite a lot. Obviously, in this case, Franks get it for free and Vietnamese get it cheaper. So both civilizations inclined to have it early, relatively speaking. So if, for example, we had Mayans here, like not that Mayans would open scouts, <laughs> but let's say maybe something like Vikings, you technically wouldn't need to go for the farm upgrade that quickly. I'm used to seeing light cap monk in castles usually on Arabia of course. Yeah that's what the meta has been shifting towards. Might obviously change next patch when monks get nerfed quite a bit and we will see more knights for example and therefore fewer monks and therefore fewer light calf. at the front oh that's a risky tc okay probably goes for one night market behind this that's a bit of a surprising thing to me hmm that's surprising monastery no that doesn't surprise me at all siege workshop will be needed goes for the wood upgrade knight around will have to throw himself in there does not have an armor upgrade Scouts around as well. Doesn't want to take the fight here. He really doesn't want to lose those three scouts with low HP. He wants to heal them up. Bit surprised that he chases like this. Will the next patch be before the main event? I obviously can't discuss that publicly. Yeah, I'm playing a local league with my friends and our next map is to Kratra. Any tips on Sif pick strats? Don't build a second town center. Good civilizations are Malay and Mezzo. Build monks, build towers, build castles. Would you include it if it's out? Uh, let's see what it brings. Now he heals the scouts. I like it. Goes for the scorpions. And should be a better economy for Ganji. Only the second town center now for Miguel. Knight sees it. Confirms everything. And no 30 C. Those are some exposed wood villagers though. Expands to some of the farms. And CA are moving around that area as well. One villager down. Those CA with 80 HP compared to 70 for a generic civilization. Repair on this one. Yep, coming in. We just want to run. Get some damage done. Second Scorpion not really participating. Third Scorpion joining the party now. Will it just to move in a bit? Lose some HP, but I think he will get away. Actually, gets a villager kill. A second one. Not too bad by Miguel. Gets away. Some reaction by Ganji. But 3 TC again. Still 2 TC. I'm a bit surprised that Miguel still didn't add a 3rd TC. Adds more farms before it. That's surprising to me. Should know he has all the map control. Oh, wants to go for Mangalore first. Okay, then I understand. Hmm. Could Miguel mit participate in Microsoft Sponsored events because he's employed by them? No. Maybe you confuse him with Bra, another Brazilian player. And VH, another Brazilian player. Those two are employed by Microsoft. Miguel is not. Ooh, active eyes here. 
by Ganji. Uh, we lose both of the scorpions though. And it feels like Ganji needs to add knights now. Bit of a blind boom here. 3 TC. Those scorpions won't do too much. Maybe a second stable could be added. And goes for Sanctity. Okay, okay, okay. I think we need to add some stables now. Need to add some knights. Otherwise, this will get really ugly for him. Hmm. Ninho, the official map pool, can be found in the handbook, in the Discord, and on Liquipedia. We will have arena, but not hippo arena. And there was never an arena with a panda face. Okay, now another stable. You already have caster combos on your mind? Yeah, yeah, obviously. But we will switch around a lot. some conversions villager advantage at 13 night count underwhelming for my taste hmm. dash going to co-cast any qualifiers he's doing the th third set with me on the next sunday and maybe this sunday hera lyric cast let's see if they're up to it i will obviously ask them they're a great combination That's a good Magno shot. A really good Magno shot. Gets the kill there. 11 villager advantage. Conversion against one of the... CA. That's it. Hmm. <laughs> Scorpion still patrolling here to defend against the... Oh, with a Magno! Oh, that's really nice. Hmm. That's really nice. No more stables. Getting on to very reasonable numbers now. Conversion towards the scout. I'm a bit surprised that he goes for that. Manganol, we Manganol here. Gets the kill. Another shot will finish it for sure. Good job and kills the own scout. <laughs> that was really good for Ganji. And this one has to be given up because Manganol CA is something he won't be able to answer. Now the knights are clearing this one up. Oh, actually, those knights will be able to clean this one quite easily as well. And Ganji is fine. He's stabilized. And now one, two knights with the extra HP on them. I think we'll be able to deal with this one quite easily. Low HP CA and should get a lot of map control. Just not enough numbers there on the stables, I believe. Oh, that could be four conversions against Ganji. Do you really want to dive there? He's one of the best in the game when it comes to monk play. That is really ambitious and yeah. Three monsters surviving. CA converted. Continues with the conversions here. That is really, really well played by Ganji and Miguel might be diving in a bit too deep here on Arabia. A map that we think has to be going towards Miguel. Otherwise, he will struggle a lot with this one. And not really sure what happened with the army here. Feels like a Mangano was killed by the knights and the CA are running. Commitment here, not going to happen and Ganji 17 builds ahead and now transitioning into quite a nice army. The full knights squeezes in some light calf. Gold control is not pretty for him. Some over here, some over there and this one, not a lot of control. A bit surprised that light calf is the unit choice that he's going for. But this could be a nice block with the knights going for the right hand side though. But army's combining more towards the left. How's Miguel fighting this one off? Oh, just has to actively continue micring. Hmm. How many players out of the 48 will qualify? Three this week, three next week. Did you watch Serum's video? If no, make a reaction video. Uh, I looked at it before it came out. I gave feedback on one of the earlier versions. So it wouldn't really be a reaction video anymore. How much dollar to film the late night drunken Dave Nilly co-op games? Oh, not, not too much. If you have a serious interest, message me. 
would obviously not be to be made public. Are we going for Rajans? He's going for the two cars. I think full CA makes lots of sense against Franks. Now the castle here and Ganji can click up to him pretty soon. We'll continue with his villager kills at the side. No, we won't. Just pretend like you're watching for the first time and share your thoughts. Mm. Knight's going for the raid at the right hand side, but we have another castle there. Will be a nice defensive setup here for Miguel. And he will reach him most likely as well. That seems like a very exposed area though by Ganji. Bit of a surprise thing to me. Hmm. Not a lot of production. What's happening here? More stables. Okay. Also wouldn't mind chivalry. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure if, like, reaction is actual content. Like, I, I, I don't fully understand it. But, yeah, may maybe, maybe I haven't seen the right people yet. But watching a video, like, watching how someone else watches a video. Maybe I don't value people's opinions <laughs> enough. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's, it's weird to me. Hmm. Uh, I haven't fully understood the, the value in it. Hmm. Asmund Gold made a career out of it. I somehow value Asmund Gold's opinion quite a bit. And I find him... Like, I've never play, played World of Warcraft, but I kind of feel like he has to add something. Um, that's like... I, I don't find true for more than 99%. Uh. Yeah, we don't have to go through all the people that are doing it right now. It sells well. Yeah, maybe I have to do it then. What is this? My what? What is happening here? Oh boy. Okay, armor upgrade for Ganji. Surprised that we don't have cavalier. Oh, that's an ambitious castle. We'll have to build it a bit later. Monk's going for the conversions. Nice splits away there. Lose them into the light cave and knights. Those are some ambitious villagers. Might need to go the diff a different way. But he has a nice overboom, so not the worst thing ever. And this feels like a repeat of game one. Where Ganji is going full cavalry and Miguel can go full harps, but is not doing it. Which is a bit of a surprise to me as of right now. another cast up by the way this is i believe not till the edge of the map obviously sometimes tricky to see with the hill i think this might be a hole siege workshops this looks like we are, might be going toward bombard cannons and i'm shocked that we still don't have cavalry attack the t i think he thinks he has it yeah and that miguel is not preparing any pikemen is surprising to me as well now goes for the barracks at absolute no man's land Kind of weird. Now Cavalier and the last attack upgrade. First traps out as well. This could be Rams. University. Okay, this will be Bombard Cannons then. Wanted, yeah, Ganji. Looks like he might be overbooming this. I've seen a lot of games from Ganji played like this. Fully walled, multi, multi castle, mass farm. And mass light cap franks. He's really good at this. In the past, he didn't pick up the relics. Now he has three, which is nice. And this is ugly to play for Miguel. He needs to keep those two side castles alive. Like, those are so important. Because those villagers are constantly being raided. So, like, add 10 farms here, add 10 farms here. Kind of important. And obviously, how the attack is an absolute must. Oh, Paladins can be afforded by Ganji. That's sick. But the chaos in the center falls. 
I like the spot for the sweet. Quite a bit. Heavy CA tech, 92 HP on them. Looks like chemistry is still missing though. Some armor upgrades as well. And yet another castle. So Genji won't get raided. Genji's in a sweet spot. Oh baby, I like that. This is a great series. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Okay, now we'll build a better mining camp. Ganji pop limit. 154 villagers again. And now she's the halberdiers. And that's why he's switching into hand cannoneers, I believe. Treble takes some HP losses, but can obviously be repaired. Miguel is getting chemistry. Splits away from this. Yeah, Vietnamese castle is so weak, not even having masonry. Three traps will do quite some damage against those. Now even siege engineers. Harbour the account only at 19. Cavaliers don't want to commit till they are paladins. Now going for some attack through the center here. Wants to go for some raids maybe in this area. I wouldn't mind seeing like a big, big ball of 40 paladins through the center. Now as eight stables working, producing cavaliers. Lovely stuff. Ram now being added in as well. Con conversion towards one of the CA. Could maybe focus down the monk. He's ready to go for a conversion himself. But now this is tricky for Miguel. Not getting onto the halberdier numbers. Barracks very much out of position as well. And that castle will be a tough thing to hold. Villagers can die as well here. 26 villagers repairing. Paladins now surrounding this one. Three hitting the builds quite easily. Some jumping into the castle. Others are continuing with the repair. Trap goes down. Three traps still shooting. Hmm. Why is hoarding such a rare tech? People don't know better. It will be seen more in the future. You're absolutely right. Hoarding adds, I think, two more shots from a trap to a castle. Makes repair so much cheaper. Obviously not every Sith has hoardings. For example, Vietnamese don't. But it's something we should see way more often. No attack upgrades on the halves. It's not the most important thing. G to the G. For Miguel. Ganji takes a 2-1 lead here. Really nice play by the Franks. And Miguel CA couldn't really find the answer. Whew, what a good game. Uh, back to that forging upgrade or the attack upgrades for the Halberdiers. A Halberdier does 32 extra damage against cavalry. So it does 38. If you do forging, it does 39. Just think about how small of an effect that is. So armor upgrades are way more important if you have this than the attack upgrades for halberdiers. Right, we can calculate. The paladin has 192. If we oh, uh, divide it by 38, that's five hits. And 100, oh no, six hits. And if we divide 192, by 39. It actually changes. It actually changes. Oh no, we have, ar we have armor. Armor. We have armor. I forgot armor. Uh, we have six armor from Paladin. Five armor. Okay, okay, okay. So it's 38 minus 5. Right? So 192 divided by 33. So it's six hits. And 192 divided by 34 is still 6 hits. Bonus damage ignores armor though. That is incorrect. Bonus damage is added after we had the armor neglected. It is basically, let's say, a spearman does 3 damage. Right, so it's down to one damage, and then we add the extra damage. Like we're adding the armor, uh, the extra damage after the armor calculation. Is 
So, yeah, bonus damage dodges armor. That's kind of correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But irrelevant for this case. Nice economy by Ganji. Interesting. Really interesting set. I like it. Uh, two one for Ganji actually. Ah. Been a maze half hoardings. Oh, I didn't know. Would you say Ganji winning is an upset? No, no. We actually discussed it, and I felt it was pretty uh, close. I would have given the advantage to Miguel, but like 55-45. Uh, I think it's a really close match. I think it's C23 against C26. So there's no real upset. <laughs> An upset would have been like a 3-0 maybe in either direction. But a 3-1 in either direction is not an upset, I believe. Back at three strong? Yeah, the strongest. Yeah, yeah, he is maybe. Like, he certainly is top five favorites to qualify. <sighs> what happened to Jordan? Ooh, GL practice starts after the set is done because people want to watch it. What's up, Hippo Lovers? Where did Jordan meme come from? Jordan? Probably Viper. Mm. Mm. Do you practice with GL boys? I don't think I'm great practice for them. Promise there are more players having what it takes to qualify than their qualification spots. Sadly true. Sadly true. Fortified clearing next. Ooh. Are you leaving GL? No. What's your dream casting duo of two players? NBR Leary was really funny. Yeah, maybe the best. Like entertainment wise, right? If we think about actually good casting. Am I a player? Then me and Hera? Um, if I'm not a player, then... Hera Jordan? Hmm. John Viper, I don't think so. Hmm. Hmm. Only I can decide if I'm a player. Hmm. Viper and I had a good cast at NAC 2 or something, that was right. Oh, yeah, a lot of memes. Oh, why no sound? It's on your end. You have to have it muted. But if that's your question, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear my answer. <laughs> so fortified clearing. What sieves are we expecting? Portuguese versus, I think, a losing sieve for Miguel. Gujara? I don't get it. I don't get it. Hmm. Persians? Persians have to be Golden Lakes. And Khmer are bad. Or not, like not great. On beach fight. On beach fight? On fortified clearing. Chakram? Chakrams aren't great against Portuguese. Chakrams died to organs. They aren't great against Arbalest. We don't have anything that's good against... 
uh, Mongrush. Chakrams still appear in large numbers. Organs appear in great numbers as well. Do they? They have to be massed? Well, both units have to be massed. Yeah. And organs can fight and spread formation. For chakrams, it's way tougher. If that's the unit choice that we are seeing. And it will be Portuguese Khmer, 90 seconds to go. Gojara Elephant Archer with 25% food discount. How do we get there though? Portuguese will have a cast in your face before you reach him. I have tears in my eyes. Ganji has the pen. What? Calm down. Random bands is an interesting idea. Is this something we've had before in a big event? Not an event of this scale. It was used before in Masters of Arena. Do you ever see Viper or Jordan in real life outside of AO events? No. Uh, last time, like preparation for AO events and some GL related content, but um, um, we were at Viper's housewarming party. I think that's it. Yeah. Otherwise, always Age of Empires related. On a side note, I'm also very curious what pros do in all visible match. There was one once. I posted the screenshot on Twitter. How do games play it out? Uh, it's full Monk Rush. Every single game. You can simply dis uh, convert from distance, right? You can always lock in the conversions. They can always chase. It's very easy to play like this. Do you think random bands hurt some players more than others? Some more adaptions than others? Yeah, for sure. Every change will be better or worse for someone. JL beer pong tournament when? Mm, happens every single time. You have to donate to get the videos. Hola. Hola. Okay, so will be Portuguese. How much? If you have a serious offer, Why? you can message me. This map's up so cool. Wouldn't be nice to have more diversity in ranked. Uh, yeah. Khmer for Miguel. Are we seeing feudal age aggression from him? I think we have to. I think we have to. If he just booms, oof, I think he dies. Hmm. Ganji with the shift advantage? In my books, yes. Maybe Mongrush can be stopped by 2TC Light Calf? But what if we face Organ Guns over here? Mm. Don't see it. Don't see it. Hmm. This map would be perfect for rank. The Arena Seption version even works for all settings when one team game FFA already. Okay. Can you skip early wood as Portuguese because of berries? Well, you delay your wood, but you can't like completely not go for it. Yeah. This looks like prime organ gun territory. Yeah. Just a castle here or here or something like that. You're blocking off the stone of your opponent as well. Then we will need to see an expansion toward th this stone here for Miguel. Doesn't really have any other excess. So this would be ugly. Hmm. Is this draft fold from Miguel so he has no sieve for this map? I, I believe so, yes. Maybe he surprises me. But I, I, when we went through that draft, said, what does Miguel have for fortified clearing? And, well, he has Khmer. 
but is that the choice that he wants to go for? Or is it just what he has to go for? Hmm. Classic 2020 comfort pick from Miguel. Yeah, I'm fearing it. Hmm. Yeah, hideout. Obviously, I can see it way more as a pick. Like hideout, Khmer make lots of sense. But I don't see it over here. Hmm. Yeah, maybe he wants to stall it till Ballista Elephants. But as I said, I think you have too much pressure on you before that. Let them know that Khmer don't have Bombard Cannon anymore then. Well, <laughs> oh, that, that balance change happened quite some time ago. I think if I have Khmer here, I would have played Sneaky Archer range and pressure. Can Portuguese boom better? They don't need to boom. They can just go for aggression. Monk Rush is an option. They could go for Organ Gun Rush. And Khmer don't have good answers to that. Hmm. Why would it work on hideout? Well, the difference is way, uh, the distance is way longer, right? If like imagine hideout, the push from one side, like you can intercept those villages way easier. Like they have to walk further to get to you. You can move around with your resources. But a castle here, like he gets all the relics behind it as well, right? Five relics in the center, four on the outside. So that's five guaranteed relics for Ganji if he gets a castle up here. Plus he gets all the gold, all the stone extra. Miguel taken away from his stone. On hideout, relics are still completely open and up for a cont contest. No. And on hideout, ballistas can chop through the middle into enemies' back. It's only p possible sort of length. Yeah, I don't think that's one of the major things, though. But yeah, that's a good build order. Pop 23 plus 0. Looked fine. I like it. The list elephant versus Organ would be Pog. Well, if monks wouldn't exist, that would be a possible matchup here, yeah. Are we gonna see Flamish Revolution button gifts this year? Uh, unlikely. I don't think Flamish will be played this NAC. Yeah, 23 plus 0, chat move. Sure. A big boom into inferior army raid game is the plan. Yeah, he has to give up a lot of this area maybe. Just accept that he gets pushed. And try to... Like MBL play would be like stable siege workshop. Or the Mr. Yo play. Stable siege workshop here. Then you still give up all the five relics in the center. And Ganji would basically need to take the gold and stone in this area. And would have like a zero farm play. Castle rates at 10-18. Yeah, it looks smooth. It looks smooth. And there would go siege push from behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like stable siege workshop here would be the MBL play. Guard tower at home, something I don't know about though. Hmm. Extra TC number one, extra TC number two, maybe here, maybe there. Okay, goes for the wood, does not control the gold, but has control of the gold here, so not too bad. And barracks now. Do we see a big switch onto stone? Sometimes we see that from people, but not right now. Goes for the house, add some farms, so this will not be a lot of aggression. Hmm. Organ Monk would turn this into a really fun game. I know that you like this, uh, T90. How was Flemish Revolution nerfed? It had a fixed cost in the past, and now it scales with the amount of villages that you are changing. So, if you have a massive economy and you want to change them, you also have to pay more. Plus, people simply realized a bit better how to play against oh, it. Like, I think it had such a bad look at NAC5 because people were just absolutely unknowledgeable about it. Mainly Hera and Leary. <laughs> if you had like Drake and Modri, you would never see the tag because it's just way worse, for example. Yeah. 
I think it would have not been such a big thing. Um, yeah. More important was the reduction in Pierce armor. Okay, the, the flamish thingy also, like the militia got changed as well. Okay, Ganji, 3TC play here apparently. Hmm. How do you defend it against properly? Wall. Get siege. Like, the opponent has zero working villagers. Every single second you're not using it, you win. Um, let me see. YouTube. Nearly versus fire. Uh, isn't this... No, TTL. Neely versus fire TTL. MBL versus Neely. Neely versus Chelogod. Neely versus Kasa. Neely versus Uzi. Did no one cover this? Oh, wow. I'm searching. I'm searching. I won't stop. Mm. Okay, it got not, did not get covered. Mm. I will guess, investigate. Nothing is happening, right? You will see nothing is happening. I'm investigating on the second screen. TTL. What was that? I think season two. Gold League. Nearly. Fire? Oh, was I not in the same group with him? Was that season three? No, no. Was Arena, though? Am I confused? Song Song? No. Nili Dogao? No. Nili Derp? No. Nili Overtaken? No. Was it season one? Season one. Nili and Fire. Nili Fire Arena Game 1. No coverage on Liquipedia. Nili Fields, man. TTL Season 1, Neely vs. Fire. It was beautiful. Maybe John Slow. Uh, Does John Slow have a YouTube? I don't think so, right? I know that he cast that set as well. John Slow. AoE 2, Neely. Uh, no, he doesn't have a YouTube channel. Nilly Fields, man. Hmm. That's ambitious. And yeah, he gets punished for it. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Well, Ganji obviously gets the conversion here. He is sitting 12 villagers behind. Collected resources better for Miguel. No surprise. Go for the fourth town center here. Why does Miguel have 12 villagers more? Well, Khmer bonus, right? He simply was up to Castle Age two minutes earlier. So, Ganji will be at the same amount of villagers in two minutes. Oh, really? Did you find it? But I don't care about the channel. I want to know if Nilly had an appearance there. Masters of Arena. Nilly. No. Master of Socotra. God, we're wasting our time here. First game with Bohemians. Okay, no, it doesn't look like it. Does not look like it. 
Hmm. Remember best OP Sif? No, they're not. <laughs> Look at those spearmen around. Rally count, five for Ganji. Nine on total on this map, five in the center, four on the outside. Yeah, and I couldn't, couldn't show off with my master defense here, apparently. Hmm. Couldn't brag with it. That is an interesting map vision here by Ganji. I have a good idea of what's happening. See some scouts out now. And yeah, 10 villager difference now, but 5 villager advantage. So actually the income is very even for both of them. That has to be a dead villager. Pikeman upgrade. There's quite a lot of pikemen already out on the field. Gets more and more vision. Really does not want to get housed too soon. <laughs> Ten volts behind, gets the castle up. And what is Khmer going to go for? Seems like now archery ranges are being dropped, so it will be the Arbalest opening. But Khmer siege is really underwhelming. If Ganji just goes Oranger, Halberdier. Khmer are actually not having a good answer to that. Hmm. Pikemen without squires? Nikov sad about that. Didn't even know that. I don't even know which Sif has squires and which doesn't. I know they all have tracking. And Ganji. Competitive time towards Imp. 13 villagers behind university now and yeah Arbalest opening the question is will Ganji figure that out he's building more outposts ah, but that one is stopped could maybe send another villager could get to a seventh relic could be seven versus two relics in total and goes just organs okay Nearly are you familiar with crossroads at all? No, don't know what that is. Celts don't have squires. Oh, okay. Knowledge bomb dropped. So Pike Organ. I think should completely wreck Miguel. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think Ganji should go for Vittoria here. Like there's so much gold and stone still on the map. It would be a big mistake to go for Toria with that economy. I think Victoria is something that we shouldn't see in the first 45 minutes of this game. Now another castle. And mass organs. I don't think Mur has a good answer to that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Looking forward to it. Hmm. You can't really wall to the edge of the map. So Ganji, that's a bit of an opti optimistic play. Hmm. Those archers won't be contributing too much and you can see now the tech switch for Miguel. And is that really the, the dream for Miguel? Like archer light calf? <laughs> like this could be the fate of all the units that Miguel is throwing in there. Now the market. Bliss elephants, maybe? Don't think so. Early chemistry, lots of villages on gold. Kind of common thing to see from Ganji. Hmm. How to counter organs? Onagers, bombard cannons, paladins. In small numbers, monks. Certainly not Arbalest, not Light Calf if enough pikemen are around as well. Do we have Archivus here? No. I was a bit surprised where all the resources went. KD 15 to 10. I don't think it will get much better here. Hmm. Siege workshops. Don't like that those two are next to each other. I'd always like to keep a one tile gap there. Receiving lots of farms. Block printing now as well. Those pikemen guarding the back. 
Yeah, and Onagers are a horrible choice for Khmer against Bombard Cannons that Portuguese can easily go for, especially with Archivist. Basically ballistics for Bombard Cannons. And Ganji's playing his dream game, right? Just completely booming, no aggression at all. And we questioned the shift choice and I I'm not getting the answers that I wanted to see. Not at all even. Some rams. If you want to play against this army comp, it should be a siege work here, a siege workshop, another siege workshop here, and make life hell for the opponent. Like five arbalest plus two siege ram goes from both sides. I could see I could see some options there. Now the bombard cannons, three shot to kill a trap. Those for four to make sure that he gets the kill against the repair. And those Arbalists, they, they can't find engagements now. Hassa count, not that exciting. Another trap falls. Oh, Bombard Cannon a bit out of position though. Loses one. Organs jumping for the light cap instead of those Arbalists. Now you see how they're mowed down. And this is even without the elite organ attack. Just the extra damage is so good against a low HP unit. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now the light cap arriving though. More bombard cannons around as well. And Ganji just needs to make sure to keep producing. He will pressure, he will kill gold units non-stop. And he's developing into a stronger and stronger army. While Miguel, that is basically as good as it gets. Can still get the Hussar upgrade, can get some more blacksmith upgrades for his arbalists. And this is even right now. And this is not Ganji's final form yet. Another castle could be in. Some gold away from... What did you just buy? Food? Ah, for lead organ gun. Okay, okay. Lead organ gun over Archibus. I can see that. You think Miguel is fine for now? How? He's developing himself into an army that can't compete at all. And that's a lot of farms that he's building. Oh, wow. Check production queue. Let's, let's check the production queue in three minutes. Oh, wait. Miguel is playing his very best here. Ganji could put another castle in there, and yes, he does. Tough to contest this one. This was the extra stone that he needed to get. I think he doesn't have a castle, right? Miguel does not have a castle, and there's only one trap out on the map. Oh boy, and no side attacks from him. Hmm. We don't have it fit or and I like it. How about the attack now as well? Oh god, this is such a good army now. Oh boy, how do you engage against this? I think you don't. I think you don't. Look at how he's running away, how he's taking the damage. This is just absolute madness. Siege Workshop now getting attacked. Five Bombard Cannons out on the field already. Hmm. Now the two Rams. Archibus is coming in. One of my favorite upgrades of the game. And then you will see all the Arbalest disappearing as well. If they aren't disappearing against the organs already. And this could be maybe a good fight for Miguel still. However, the numbers are not pretty. Rams are coming in from the left hand side. Bombard Cannons now shooting from the back. Could maybe shoot for the Rams here at the left hand side. Dealing with the Arbalest first. Villagers are now tasked with this one. And this might have been the final game of Miguel. The final fight for Miguel in the first qualifier here for NAC. He won't make it through into the round of 24. Khmer, just inferior to the Portuguese on this map. GG, good luck next G. Ganji goes into the round of 24 and will face Jordan. A matchup that could be our opener on Saturday in the round of 24. Certainly a really interesting thing to follow. Remember Ganji beat Jordan in one of the qualifications for Red Bull. Very oh, famous set that 
May Jordan take qualifications and Ganji especially way more serious. Yeah, we have to go back to the draft and think about what happened there. But let's go for the statistics first. Hmm. Up next, we will cover the freaking ending in Elno Nero set as recorded games. So we'll edit this to Ricks, and we will get those. Sebastian, thank you for the rate. Good luck with your run of 24 games on Saturday. And yeah, look, let's look at the draft. There was no good arena sieve or fortified clearing sieve. Like Bohemians, Turks banned away from him. Then Portuguese, such an easy choice for Ganji. And what were the answers against it? I didn't see them. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Black China, not funny. So Vava Zongan, how good is it? So Vava should be a good unit against Zongan. Crazy Pierce armor. Yeah, yeah. Can spread around, can close the distance. Should be a really good answer. But Persians was clearly for Golden Lakes. Burgundians and Poles no longer strong on this map? Well, it is tricky, right? Because... They were banned. Poles and Burgundians at the top, as you can see. As well as Malay. Britons. Lots of good answers. <laughs> Two Portuguese. Okay. So, freaking... Andy versus El no Nero. I will prepare the drafts. And the score. Our Ballista Elephant Scorps with Organ Guns Bombard Cannon Pike. Good, but he would go for Onagers. And then not good. And you don't get there. Because he only had one castle. Uh, let me quickly see. Let's quickly confirm that this is Andy's site. It is. How was Eleanor Nero? Is that with an underscore? I didn't edit the freaking Andy there. Hmm. Outcrop the opener, right? Yep. Mm 
AW means admin win. Okay, okay, let's jump into game number one here on Outcrop. And since those are recorded games and you will be respectful to not spoil the result, uh, this is still more of a chill set for me. So we can keep interaction pretty high. If you have any questions, I can explain them at length. Well, nice, more sets. That's awesome. Thanks for hosting the It's been fun so far. My pleasure. Thank you. Tatars for El Non Nero here on Outcrop. Obviously would like to get some more of those cows. 225 food for him. And humans love to wall, love to get to the extra town center and have the great economy. Schultz a good 2v2 map? I have no idea how it would spawn in 2v2. Uh, I don't know. There would be like two players together and two gold spots only. Uh, I think it might turn into two 1v1s. Yeah. How many wins has an admin got to <laughs> do the qualify for NAC4? Uh, if, he, if an admin gets four wins for himself, he qualifies, yeah. Hmm. It is indeed freaking handy. What will be the game plan of El Non Nero trying to punish Cumans? As we said earlier, Cumans love to play the second town center. Preferably as uncontested as possible. And you either play Fast Castle against it or heavy fuel edge pressure. Hmm. Yes, you better start grinding the ladder. Oh yeah, still he is not in the tournament yet. Hmm. Yeah, I have a long days, right? Uh, those are three nine-hour days in a row now. Or oh, I think it was ten hours, nine hours, nine hours, something like that. And Saturday and Sunday will be two eleven-hour plus days as well. So maybe tomorrow I will be go will be going a bit slower. Let me take a look at the qualifier in for tomorrow. Oh no, tomorrow is uh, 8 hours. We will be back at 14 GMT. And we will end around 22 GMT. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That feels very reasonable. Mm. Lucky versus Capoch admin re yesterday. What, what, what? That uh, That's a different tournament. I, I don't know. Yeah, and Saturday we will start 12 GMT, and that's going to be 11 hour session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to rest my voice a bit more, maybe. Uh, not going to be too pretty. Hmm. Is Lucky Rocks in either qualifier? No. I uh, did not sign up. Hmm. There are many playing local tournaments. Okay, goes more towards the opponent. Interesting. Barracks at a weird spot by El Nero. I don't fully understand this build up here. Is it pop 21 archers from home? With delayed loom? Is this kind of one? I think this is the kind of fast castle build I thought, but it's the weird archer range placement. This is this feels so off. Wow. Was the search for sponsors going for NSC? Really poorly. Oh, wow, 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 wow. El Nero plays it so differently to how I would have played it. So differently. So goes for archers now. With archers, you want to pressure as quickly as possible. So you want to have them at the front. Cumin extra town center means they don't have resources to do anything else. Scout should be confirming the town center. And you don't need a single wall against Cumans because they will be on the defense. So El Nero is slowing him down horribly. Oh, this is very different to what I thought would be the typical approach against Cumans. Let's just think back how Miguel played against Ganji. 
at least wins this one. It was man at arm aggression with archer follow up full pressure. And Ganji had to build like 15 houses and was heavily behind. Andy, completely uncontested so far. And can just keep his TCs running. Hmm. Maybe expect scouts into a second TC. But why not scout it then? And even if you expect scouts, having a barracks and archer range here means you can get your spearmen and archers quicker to the opponent and can pressure them more. And if you scout the stable, then you can wall. Those are my thoughts on this matchup, but I am a guy that bans humans a lot because I feel like I don't have the perfect answers to them at all times. Hmm. When is Viper playing? 6th of January. 7th of January. 8th of January. 9th of January. And 10th of January. Maybe even more if he makes it into the top 8 of the tournament. He's part of the main event. Invited because he was top 4 in last NAC. Exclamation mark Vicky. It's a great website that will give you more information about tournaments. Which sift do you understand the best? Britons. <laughs> they are very simple. <laughs> I think Britons are very simple. No. Mm. Yeah, Elon Nero from Singapore. With a strong Polish accent, though. Archer has been stuck this whole time. Yeah, no aggression there. Just feels underwhelming. Vilger needs to be out ASAP. What's your favorite Sif and why? Malay. They play so differently. I like to play around with their timings. Is there no... Oh, I think like the double archery range. That's not enough. Hmm. Which Civ and opening strategy are you most comfortable with on maps like Arabia? Pop 18 archer defense. Pop 19 scout opening. Probably the two easiest strats for me to execute. Yeah, they are pretty simple as well though. A barrel, and what is he doing with this TC? Oh, he actually has the line of sight upgrade queued behind wheelbarrow, and now is idling this town center to click up any moment, and does so. One minute twenty idle TC. Dave, hey yo, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are covering Rex of El Nero versus freaking Andy. We just saw. Ganji versus Miguel in a really entertaining set. Be aware that those are wrecks and please don't spoil any result results. Indeed. Thank you guys. Uh, did you cast Elno Nero Andy or did you cover Ganji versus Miguel Dave? Okay. Yeah, good chat. Not spoiling. Uh, we covered Ganji. Okay, okay, okay. Um, then. Two quick sellout moments here for everyone who wants to join. We will obviously have a massive $50,000 plus tournament, including Dave, one of your beloved casters. And that will happen in January. We will have that event going on over nine days and we will have a massive, massive viewing party. If you want to join that one, 450 people around. You can watch the semifinals, you can watch the finals. And Saturday evening, the players and casters will stop by. It is in Berlin, Germany, exactly the same city where we will host this event, Nilis Apartment Cup. Dave and I will show up, especially Dave is a guy that also likes to not cast the second semi-final, just to be with you guys a bit earlier. 
And yeah. Also, we have a donation file right now where you can support the event. And I've prepared some thank yous. One of the thank yous is you can get Dave to wear a wig. So if you feel like donating for that one, Dave will have to wear a wig of your choice for the whole day. As one of the ways to support the tournament and still enjoy the thing together. Crossbows are not moving in further! Oh, that is con... That's... That's... Not overly aggressive. Whoo. Imagine a wig on this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hmm. Oh, Manganol. I'm scared. I'm scared. Good ground attack. Gets two kills instantly. Now split away and gets another solid shot off. And that one just spawned and starts his its life with five kills on crossbows. That is a really nice move. Eleven villagers ahead and now the knights might do the end of that story. Overlapping quite a bit here. And yeah, that's not a pretty fight. Tatars tries to micro away. But that is knight with bloodlands and one armor upgrade already. One knight even micro back. The low HP one just gets the clear up. And maybe the monastery now for the healing. Good, good job by Andy. Goes for his third town center. While we have three town centers for Elno Nero as well. But the transition onto the farm eco is not that pretty. As we can see, 23 on farm versus 13 on farms. So idle TC time will go pretty high for our Polish player now. Hmm. Yeah, a clown wig. I think we can get more creative. I think just just a toupee. <laughs> just a small... Just like that, that even looks like a monk. Or the reverse monk, just like a tiny bit of hair at the top. Mm. Could be something. Second wood upgrade, still missing for Elno Nero. Upgrades in general, pretty tough for him. Two versus four upgrades there. And now we see... Oh yeah, oh, like a Beatles. Hmm. 76k is the amount that I need to not lose money, yeah. And after we reach that, we will increase the price pool. Oh, nice snipe here. What about a wig that looks like Frank Reynolds from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? For example, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I just watched the first two episodes of the new season uh, this night or last night. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Monastery at home now. Now the switch into CA for Elno Nero. While freaking Andy plays it really boomy. Really boomy here. Villager kill. Gets it. And knights get away. 15 villager lead now. Collected resources plus 3000 for Andy here. Ooh, quite a nice lead for him. Crossbows. Trying to chase this away. Bit surprised that camels are not added. Could have been a good option. That looks like ballistics. How did all of them hit? That's crazy. <laughs> CA, take it like a man. Making no shots in the face. Mark it now here for Andy. Not really sure what he's trying to balance. Looks very natural to me. Castle could be added here. Maybe he wants a bit more map control. Maybe something like here could also be an option. Adding some more knights might be something for him. Enough mangonels to scare and Nero away for now. Paladin again, maybe. Not impossible. Crazy resource. Not a lot of production. And expands to the left side. Maybe the castle there to get more control. And Renier sold zero food for 65 gold? What? How? That's, that's cheating. How is that? I will have to report this. Admin, we need a disqualification here. Oh, triple mangonel push. On their own, but there's no cavalry. Where's the scout? Completely other side, can't join the party. And three mangonels alone aren't too scary if there's some units to kill them, but mangonel, monk, without redemption, and CA. 
crossbow won't be enough. And now shooting uphill. That's actually quite ambitious that Anonir even thinks about taking this engagement. A single conversion could be really good though. Oh, it chases the one down even further. As I said, a single conversion could mean the three Magnots are in a lot of danger. Not really happening right now. Knights are chasing this one. Hmm. Using hippo points gives something to you? Not really, no. It's more of a fun chat interaction. Killing that knight is actually reasonably important. Because that means the Magnols can survive. Oh, ground attacks missing. On the way to him is Mr. Andy. While Elno Nero sits at 60 food right now. Knights are chasing this one down. More Magnol shots and good ones with that. Hmm. Imagine cheating just to get 65 gold. After 25 minutes of game time. Hmm. Feels bad, man. Okay, stable count doesn't seem to be too high, right? What are we looking at? Three stables as of right now. Has a lot of control at the bottom, though. And another mangonel that's going down. Town center likely falling as well. By the way, we're in the round of 48. On Saturday, we will have the round of 24 and 12 happening for you. And on Sunday, the round of 6, where we will see three players qualify for the NSC main event. Also, we will have another qualifier, exactly like this week, coming up next week. So lots of Age of Empires to come your way. Hip checks now being added. I like it. Squeezes in some more units. Moves the opponent a bit further away from attacking into Harbor Deers. Now the conversion started. Mangonels not really shooting yet. Now the knights are diving, but should be two conversions. Make it one, make it both of them. The Mangonels are surviving. Now the conversions here at the bottom. One gets returned here. And the knight instantly goes for the Mangonels again. Now not a lot of protection on those. While the knights are diving in a bit deeper. Imperial Age reached now. Opponent sits at 70 gold. So super, super far away from... Him himself. Step lenses around to deal with those monks, but won't find the kill. And El Nero has to call the GG. Andy with a pretty uncontested win in game one. And we have to go back and ask ourselves what the opening plan of El Nero was. It just felt like some aggression, but only half hearted aggression with some walls. Not the clear game plan against Andy there. And I understand it a bit. Obviously, Andy will be to fuel age a bit earlier and will have the faster scout, have the stronger scout. But still, just having the scout around here to confirm if it's extra town center or if it's a scout opening makes your play and your life so much easier. KD, really low <laughs> right? for a 30-minute game. One player reached him, 36 to eight, uh, 18. Way more resources, though, for Andy. And quite a convincing performance from him. Tomorrow a long day again. 14 UTC. Till roughly 22 UTC. The coverage. Okay, outcrop in the box. And we are... Humans, the first pick winning. On the other side, Tatars, medium pick priority, not taking the win. Nida, are you a beer enjoyer? Yes, right now I'm counting calories, so drinking calories is something I don't really do, but typically a beer enjoyer. Yes, I've drank my fair share. And he's looking so strong. I don't think this will be the big test for him. But obviously he will play against Ganji. Potentially next. No, no, no. He's in the bracket with Sebastian. So the winner of the set is playing against Sebastian. And that will be a big challenge. Sebastian uh, really, really hot right now. Mm -hmm. 
Best Christmas market food? Uh, I only know the German words, that won't really help you. And as I said, right now, counting calories. So, none for me. Interesting clash of styles with Danny versus Sebastian. If we get to it, it would be really interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the sense that we have the hyper aggressive Sebastian versus Andy who loves to play 40C, six monk defense. But he also can play aggression. Let's see how he is shaping up here on dry graveyards. The most aggressive map that we have. And yeah, Langos is a good one for sure. Adsex for El Nonero tries to get his share of the 11 relics that are on the map. Andy, though, thinks. Well, a map that we can't really wall. What about a civilization that can build one of the key units of Age of Empires, the Scout? Cheaper. And has it stronger. Bratwurst? Well, I'm vegetarian, so not really my go-to food either. Would you rather give up Cherry Pepsi or beer? Beer. And he has amazing micro, especially Monk micro. I, I can't really say too much about his archer and micro. I think I've never seen him play archers. Hmm. Lots of scouting here in the back. Tries to get a good idea about where his hunt is. Pushes that one in quite far away, but still goes for it. Pop 15 and housed right now. Uh oh, maybe the nerves. Have you tried with Raptory Pepsi? Yes, in Poland when I was there. Yeah. Hmm. What has more calories, cherry coke or beer? I always drink the calorie free version. So, beer. Yeah, but beer versus Pepsi. I think both have around 40, uh, 45 calories per 100 milliliter. So it's pretty close. Yeah, for like half a liter, you should be consuming around 200 to 225 of both of them. Okay, so pop 18 ad stacks opening. Something we don't see too often. Might be an archer spear opening against Andy's double lumber camp. Pop 19 opening. Oh, he will be sh spread really thin here. Three on berries, no eight on wood. Ooh. What's your favorite map to play in team games? Golden Hill, Oasis. In Mummy Wants, maybe Land Madness. Um, Land Madness to cast, probably, yeah. yeah. Oh. One number camp here. Okay. Has some on stragglers as well, so doesn't trust this wooden come there. Oh, it just hasn't been forgotten. In one we won it has been forgotten, and rightfully so. Although, let's kind of remind ourselves, what was the last Oasis 1v1 tournament game I played and against whom? Hmm. Oh yeah, right, it was against Terra. Hmm, and who won there? I wonder... Um, oh yeah, it was me! True, true, true. Yeah, so it's a pretty good map. But, yeah, in all honesty, I think um, it should not be a 1v1 map. But in 3, 3, 4, 4, I think it can generate some quite nice games. Okay, Scout chasing down that eagle. And it is indeed the archer range opening. But with an eagle, I think you need to open Spearman, though. I was a bit surprised that he is microing back here with the eagle. Hmm, a bit weird. Stable now. On the late side by Andy, though. And yeah, as I said, he is spread really thin for resources. Walling a lot now, and that will take some time to get into proper numbers. Where is the Ember to show me? was crazy. Don't know how many years ago. That was summer 2019. Before NAC 3. Because that's the weekend where I confirmed my NAC 3 funding. 
And it was also with a DE show match, I believe. That was a complete disaster. Yeah. Eagle Archer went out and is now going back. Now a spearman is being added. Hmm. Why was it a disaster? It wasn't observable. <laughs> you couldn't spectate. So they were casting of the POV of the players. Trying to showcase the new hip game. Yeah, mistakes were made. Kind of interesting how Andy is walling the full base, even behind all his aggression. And that's a really interesting. A blacksmith opening with, or the blacksmith is the second building for Magias. That's really surprising to me. Oh wow. Now another house, fully walled, good job. Because you can only get one upgrade out of the blacksmith, right? You can only get armor for your scouts. You already have the attack upgrade. And if you want to do upgrades for your ranged units, well, then you should open range first. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, over chop. Oh, 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 four scouts can get in. Oh, no, El Nero, he's looking at the other side. He just saw his units move. Oh, and four scouts with forging are just so good here. Oh, that will be bloodbath against the builds. Micro, some of those away quite nicely. Scout can now maybe move in a bit deeper. And that's already two builds down. Scout chilling now, though. What's happening here? Is he rewarding this? No, he isn't. And scouts are back at it again. Now committing again. Three builds down. Four builds down. Absolute disaster. Now commits to the fifth one. Even micros away that scout. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Minus five builds. Make it maybe minus six. Switching this around. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. One single palisade. Giving a massive advantage here to freaking Andy. But, well... You know, why pros never run? They do run. <laughs> it's just tough in here, right? Because they are walled in and it's long distance. So, like, you're losing three vilts without killing anything back. And he thought he could re-wall. But pros never run is simply wrong. Yeah, scouts with forging. Just such a big difference. Important palisade there. But army can come around again. And that's still lots of open villagers. Oh no, that could be a short game, my friends. Villagers now. Look at that. Villagers running. You see? Pros can run. Blacksmith worth it? He didn't even the, do the black. Like, he didn't upgrade anything for the blacksmith. He's only now doing the army upgrade. He's Magias. He gets the upgrade, the attack upgrade for free. Ah, oh, yeah. Yet now I know what you mean. Okay, aggression here. What are we adding? How many scouts do we have? Only one extra. Has one on the outside. Let's reward this area. I'm surprised that he's playing this one completely without... Uh, Nazi range. Okay, now he builds one. Commit against one spearman, I believe. House could block himself off here. Nice micro with that scout. Commits to another will, maybe. Moves around. No, thinks better of it. Takes two builds down. That's why you don't run. Market now for El Nero. And that might not be in time the wall. Now that goes for the market. All good in the hood. Kind of want to waste as much time as possible from the opponent. By yourself some time to get to skirmishers. Well, that one should jump into the town center to heal up. Hmm. And gets another villager kill. That's 6 0 in the villager KD. And we will see resource collected already plus 900 for the civilization. Now plus 1000 for the civilization without an eco upgrade or an eco bonus against a Sith that has one of the strongest economies in the game. Absolutely brutal. 
And it feels like Andy right now a bit on a different level. Committing against the villagers again. Gets another kill. Gets two kills and out of there. 8 0 KD. Hallelujah. And both with similar castle age timings. Oh boy, oh boy. So many scouts out. To baited this away. I think the scouts could even jump and kill those archers. But didn't properly see it. Hmm. So active. Andy here. Sebastian probably looking at this and thinking, oh boy, if I face Andy, how do I play against this? So the opening was slow. Walled in everything and oh no, not again! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And GG is called freaking Andy. Ay, 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 ay. Just feels like a bit better. It's just so clean. He gets the games that he wants, is fully walled, can play against the opponent that is not fully walled. And this was a relatively fortunate map for freaking Andy, but also, no, actually not. Look at what he had to wall. He just made it happen. He got in again. Yeah, the overchop on this spot now. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, let's hope that Anno Nero can still put himself on the scoreboard. I think his full set win will be really unlikely with how the first two games are going. Maybe giving us a fourth game could be an option. The fact that Anno Nero was about to break in maybe should have seen what came from that. Well, if you know you are down 11 villagers, you're hoping that you have to kill like 15 to be even, kind of. Right? And how do you kill 15 villagers? Like, do you expect the opponent to go FK? Hmm. Was doubt set postponed? Common question. Prepared. Okay, ticket sales. Let's take a quick look at that. We have 300 tickets right now. And 241 are sold. So 59 tickets still left. If you want to get yours. Definitely feels like the moment has gotten to El No Nero a bit well in game one. Really? Who would you say is the fast improving player right now? In my opinion, Balz Andy? Don't think so. Uh, at least not Balz. Um, like, Balz was top 16 for a very long time now and he's not top 8. So, like, if he's improving, like, he's not making, like, major jumps. And Andy obviously improved a lot over the last one and a half years, yeah. Yeah. Could see that that seems to be more of a reasonable argument to me. I think Balz is not in my top 10, but he was in my top 16 a year ago. Yeah. Sebastian might be on there. ACCM, no. Surely not. Uh, Hart might be on the list. Hmm. Yeah, obviously, the, the relatively speaking, it's very likely that a 1k jumping to 1500 in the last month might be the correct answer. But we are probably talking about, like, people in the top 15. Why is ACM not top 16? He is, he is. ACM is clearly top 16. Clearly. Like, everyone who doesn't think ACM is not top 16 has not been following tournaments over the last three years. Yeah. Uh, Magugu is a good case for a person that improved heavily over the last two years. Sarah top 16? Yeah. Miles T is number one right now. Let me see. I have my rankings file. Yeah, this is the world ranking from me right now.
like from top to bottom. Hera number one, Viper two. This is before. Um, before Warlords, though. So maybe we put it a bit more on this list. And maybe move someone like this a bit ab around. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Maybe Daniel is now a bit further down on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like two months old, but you get the idea. I think that's kind of the world ranking from top to bottom. Hera top spot, yeah. Jordan greater Villiser. No, Villiser greater Jordan. MBL higher, really? What was his recent performance? Not qualifying for Warlords. Not qualifying for NAC. Not performing too well in Cartographers. Hmm. Nikov way too high. Okay. Don't think way too high. I think you could make an argument for this group. But he's clearly better than this group. And Onir is not on the list, no. <laughs> Wallace Rating Room Top 4. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was his big performance. And the question is, though, how much focus did that tournament have? I feel MBL would beat Hart and. What? what? I feel like MBL would beat Andy and Hart, though. Well, I have good news, news for you. This Saturday, best of five, Hart against MBL. And we will find out who's winning. In a really important set. And then we can have a bit of an idea on where the world ranking is. 13 on Wood here. Malians for Andy on a map called Marsh Madness. We cannot ar wall around those woodlines here on the stony area. That's a really big woodline for Alno Nero, who is playing Persians here. Should have a really solid start. Actually plays double dog while Andy is playing double dog as well. Did not go for his second boar. Hmm. I'm convinced Hart will win super convincingly right now. I'm interested. I think this will be the best set of the round of uh, 24. By the way, neither player really knowing where the opponent is. As you can see, no scouting here by Andy. And on the other side, Elno Nero only now getting an idea where Andy is. So only now the barracks. Quite late. Was that scouted? Yeah, he sees the very late barracks. So he knows no aggression is coming. Still waltz like a madman. <laughs> Look at that! Well, how scared can you be? You see that the opponent is just building the barracks. So there's nothing coming coming for at least three minutes. And he's walling with like four villagers. Oi, 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 oi. Was the max there in your list? No, he wasn't. Stable now. Don't think we can put max in the top 25 right now. Hmm. Yeah, do you listen to the sound of villagers chopping wood to help you fall asleep? <laughs> Not really. I don't sleep. Mill now. That's only three berries? I think that's bugged. It's three berries only. I thought it was four on this map. Oh! Oh! Oh, that was pretty. And it continues to be pretty. Look at this! Look at this! Oh boy! That was pretty. Oh god, that was good. And that is a full fire galley kill without any response. Oh, well played. How can Andy react to this? Two fire galleys at home. Still the fire galleys here, but housed right now, so can't really produce. No, but it's not the greatest house here. We'll block him. Ay, 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 that's an ugly one. Hmm. And now the reblocking here. Oh, Andy trying to return the favor. Hmm. Captain, there's a horse on the water. We have to stop. Sail slower. Go left, right, left, 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 right, 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 right. Oh, okay. The aggressive fishing ship. Intimidation strategy here. I'm a bit surprised by that one, but maybe it works out. Hmm. This is a rerun. This is no rerun, but those are recorded games from earlier. That is correct. It was a hippo, a river horse. Oh yeah, kind of. 
Ja. Okay, demo. Now for Nero potentially. Demo on the other side. Trying to shark over. The wood amount is a bit unfair for the long game. Uh, actually, true. And Nero with the advantage there. It seems like gold advantage for freaking Andy at the same time. Hmm. Tries to defend now. Not a lot of land aggression happening. Because for some scouts, Andy just plays. A late stable now. Mainly for his second building. Lots of spearmen. Oh, this is good for Andy. Oh, three, scout three spearmen there against the scouts. And Nero has to run. And Castle Edge Stabbing will be way later for him. Investing this much into scouts and spearmen. Demo now could be good. Let's take a look how deep the connection is going to be. Okay, nice micro by Elnon Nero. Oh, micro's in again a bit. But only minimal damage on this fire galley. Scouts, they have to find some damage. And it feels like archers on either side would have provided more than the scouts. Hmm. Is water so important here? Well, some people say yes, some people say no. I think we are undervaluing land here. That's for sure. As I said, I think archers could have provided a lot of damage. Just imagine Elon Nero arriving with like four archers. Either here or here. Could pressure this gold as well. Obviously now it's way too late, but earlier. I think people will invest less into water than those two. Will there be map adjustment for the main event if needed? Yeah, obviously. We are adjusting basically daily. We are constantly reading your feedback and adding something. Oh, demo. Ooh, nice kill. And this one forces a lot of damage. Gets some kills. Ooh. And Nero needs to click up to Castle Age eventually. That's still pretty damn late here. 14 on wood, reasonable farm count, but the difference will be a solid 2 minutes 18 seconds or something in that ballpark. Can he maybe move in? Micro's back with the demo. Micro's back with both demos. Good kill. Now goes for this one maybe. And he buys himself some time. Oh, that's a good move. That's a good move. Is that second fire gilly helping out? What is happening here? Somehow the galleys didn't fight. And now a demo to clear this one up. That's a good defense for Andy. And he won't lose his fish. It felt so close. But survived there. And now the knights are arriving. And you can't fully wall this. Uh, get some more palisades out. I think we need more spearmen here to defend the gold. Has one out on the field right now. And this wall I think... Is this actually walling it off? Oh yeah it is, but you can't go through this area still. Uh, what are those builds up to? Okay, thinks better of it. And nice raids here on to the farms. Gets another kill, good job. Now oh, camels being added as well. Oh, this will be tough for Elno Nero to hold. Walls of the gold. But now the amount of villagers on gold is not pretty either. Only six there. Goes for five full camels. Does not click war galley. It's a bit like a hectic move here to me. Like I want camels out so quickly. Oh, yes, triple stable. Okay, okay. Then I can see that a bit more. Hmm. So move those away. Scout gets a good vision of what's coming his way. No monastery being added. There's only one relic per person though. Hmm. Need the, per uh, the question, go to breakfast. I'm doing a mean scrambled eggs. Really good scrambled eggs. And I rarely eat it though, obviously. <laughs> and I rarely eat breakfast in general. My girlfriend is a breakfast type. So I eat breakfast with her on Saturdays and Sundays. But most days I, I skip breakfast. Yeah. I just wake up and work till I get hungry. It's not like 
my routine to start eating. Oh, that's a quick conversion. Hmm. What are the chances for freaking I need to qualify for the main event? I think the other day I gave it like 8%. Some in that ballpark. No. I think he's still a bit behind the top 10. And then, obviously, the round of six match, he's always an underdog. I'd say higher than most people would think. I would say lower than most people would think. I think he is the most hyped player right now. But winning three sets against top competition in a row won't be that easy. Is the aggressor more likely to win or the defender? I think that stat would be very misleading. And I don't know the answer. Lots of aggression here. 25 military units against 11. Water one as well by Andy. And then Nero somehow tries to make a defense happen. Hmm. Can we just tickle buildings? Well, but eventually, if you tickle enough, you'll get something done. Malians have the better monastery compared to Persians. Get some villager conversions. Won't mind this too much. Even double monastery here as the follow up. Place the full 1 TC while Elno Nero plays 2 TC. Even amount of villagers, even after all the conversions. But this is so ugly. Feels like Elo Nero is getting to better numbers, but not really at the same time. Like, what is he producing into? Hmm. Doesn't look like into anything. Okay, now camels are popping. Are we taking the engagement here for Elno Nero? Looks a bit like it. Not the greatest move here by Andy. Camels now need to join the party. But now the conversions have started. Maybe some healing in this one as well. After the monks lose their faith. But look at that. Camel count 13 versus 10. And more conversions coming in. The knight's now going over for the raid, even at the site. And the control still here for our Austrian. Now the over 20 population lead. Camels have to run 10 worker lead in total as well and those knights i think they will be able to slaughter some of the villagers and cont continuous aggression here is just absolutely brutal and it will continue to lose all those villagers on gold and those monks are just so mean hmm. more conversions oh this feels so unfair conversion count nine to four in favor of andy and he still has seven more monks out on the field to continue with this Worker efficiency, better for our Austrian as well. GG, good luck next. And we are confirming freaking Andy against Sebastian in the round of 24. Happening on Saturday, going to be a pretty interesting one. I think the winner might be... No, I'm confusing brackets. We can take a look at it together. I think that makes most sense. And we can get rid of this image. Can set up another one for tomorrow and i have a lot of files open here that can we can get rid of this one okay apparently we can't mm, this one is the bracket we want to take a look at we can refresh and see the matchups every matchup that is not filled out yet will happen tomorrow on friday and all the round of 24 and round of 12 will happen on saturday round of six the deciding qualifying match on Sunday. Jordan Ganji, freaking Andy Sebastian, that's an exciting bracket. Tomorrow, Dark Rappert, ACCMI by Power, Willis of Wallace, the Finnish duo, fighting for their spot here. Then, bracket three, the toughest bracket for sure. Featuring Doubt, Classic Pro Fire, trying to reschedule, NBL Heart, the most exciting match of the round of 24, Sito Slam, I think could be a good one for Sito, Winchester, then facing potentially Sito, maybe the most exciting match of the round of 12. I, it's also 
potentially doubt against the win of NBA Heart, so tough to say. And the bracket where we have the probably most clear favorite in Tato, who will play Ubetnir tomorrow. We obviously have Dragonstar trying to put himself in the way, potentially Dogao, and then Dogao, uh, Nikov, my favorite, to go through in that one. Hmm. People can go LAN event even if they're not qualified. If they add something to the event, I might ask them. For example, I invited Doubt and MBL to NSC4 as well, although both didn't qualify. Yeah. I hope we can see SCM at the main event. There is a second qualifier next week. This week, he would have to go through Valas. Likely Velesse and Jordan. That's a, that's a tough task. Ugh. That's a tough task. Yeah. Hmm. Has Gabi signed up for a second qualifier? I don't know. So the schedule for tomorrow, we will start in 15 and a half hours. So that's 14 UTC with HDMI by power. Balt, Cosmonaut, Vivi, Dark, Rapport. I don't even know which of the three sets we are covering. Maybe I take it slower and sit out the first set. Magugo Uzi, something I really want to see. We are covering Doubt. And then Dogao versus Kazwa has to be interesting as well. So we're certainly covering the end of the day. I think I will squeeze in the start of the day as well. Lots of games tomorrow. Yeah, typically Friday is the busiest day. Just easiest to schedule. schedule. Hmm. Oh, Master, that would be crazy. Yeah. How do you set Liquid Peter to Dark Theme? Pop. Pop. Might have to be logged in, though. What is it with the NBL? He hasn't been good for years now, but people talk like he is a great player. He is a great player, and he has been great for years. He has been great for years. He just has not been great last year. Wallard's waiting room. A full tournament with great, great players. Semi-finalists. Beating hard there. Beating, winning in his group. Then... King of the Desert. Fourth place. I think King of the Desert before that. Third place. Something like that. I think we have too many small tournaments mixed in here. Red Bull Legacy, the biggest Age of Empires tournament of all time. Top 8. Red Bull before that, top 4. Right? King of the Desert, top 12. Red Bull, the second biggest tournament, or like a $100,000 tournament. Top 4 finish, beating Hera 3-0. Like there are so many, so many great performances. Another top 8, another Red Bull. Do we maybe have a better list than this? Hmm. No, that's... Maybe if this condensed results? Yeah, maybe like this makes a bit more sense. Yeah. Strong KOTD performance. Strong performance here. Team game win against GL in the finals. Red Bull 5, semi-finalist. 2v2 World Cup. Finalist, King of the Desert, second place. Bet of Africa won in team games and success in escape. Arguably the best player that has never won an S tier tournament together with Velissa and Jordan. Those three, the best ones to have never won an S tier tournament. Round of 12 and 24 are both happening on Saturday, correct? Has Winch won an SC tournament? Yes, TTL Season 1. Okay, then see you back tomorrow in 15 and a half hours. We will be back 
obviously on this platform and the other platform and now we are hosting someone let's see who we can find for ourselves searching for the smallest channel with a webcam nobody's watching this let's prove them wrong and have a good one we we'll see each other tomorrow for more NAC and obviously Saturday, Sunday, the long days. We will see each other then. Have a good one. And see you all at the meetup as well. In Berlin. If you want to step by. Exclamation mark. Meetup. To join all of us in the great event. Cut a little bit with MBL in case he qualifies. Have a good one.